Audiobook title, The Dragon Warrior Chapter, 01-45, by Miracle Bringer. This work belongs to author Miracle Bringer. Chapter 1 Holy Swordsman. Peach Blossom Mountain was once the location of one of the largest righteous sects in the martial world but a huge battle 50 years ago turned the mountain that was once filled with peach blossom trees into a land of death. Over the past decades, this place has been neglected and even changed its name to Devil's Skeleton Mountain because so many bodies were buried in this place. After being uninhabited for so long, today the mountain is the site of another major battle. Visible under the blue horizon, a middle-aged man was being surrounded by dozens of other people. Senior Zhao, hand over the heavenly dragon god scripture and we will let you live. Senior Holy Sword don't be stubborn, you can't possibly win against all of us in this place. Zhao Chen. You think with the heavenly dragon god scripture you can do as you please? If you don't comply then I will exact revenge on the sects you destroyed. One by one people tried to persuade the middle-aged man in front of them. Everyone realized that even though their numbers were far outnumbered but at least tens of people would lose their lives if a battle really happened. That's why no one was the first attacker knowing they would lose their lives if they did. The middle-aged man only smiled faintly hearing all these words. His name was Zhao Chen who was also known as the Holy Swordsman. Even though he looked like he was in his 50s at first glance and only had some grey hair, Zhao Chen was actually 92 years old. If I had 10, no. Five more years then I would have no problem escaping them all. Zhao Chen thought as he checked his surroundings. Everyone present at this scene were high level warriors from both righteous and heretical sects, not the least of whom were sect heads. All of them gathered because they wanted to seize the heavenly dragon god scripture, which is the most powerful martial art in the martial world. Zhao Chen took a deep breath as he remembered that all of this had started 70 years ago. The martial world was in an uproar due to the reappearance of the four peerless scriptures as well as the seven rulers of the world. All of this was the beginning of what is known as the Age of Chaos. So many humans died in the Age of Chaos and at the same time talents in the martial world emerged, people who were called heroes or great villains but Zhao Chen was not one of them. Zhao Chen closed his eyes, he understood that today it would be impossible to get out of this place alive. Even though everyone could see Zhao Chen closing their eyes but not a single one of them tried to attack him. One memory after another flashed through Zhao Chen's mind, he was actually an ordinary child from a simple family. One day when he was 5 years old his village was attacked by robbers, he was arrested and intended to be sold as a slave but he managed to escape into the forest where he met someone who changed his life. Zhao Chen met someone who became his master and brought him into the world of martial arts. Zhao Chen had good talent in the sword art, but unfortunately due to a childhood trauma, he was reluctant to learn martial arts and chose to spend his time studying like a scholar. His master never forced him and allowed Zhao Chen to act as he wished. When Zhao Chen was 17 years old, the master died from a long illness. It was then that Zhao Chen realized that he should have learned martial arts, but it was too late. Five years later the chaos era occurred and Zhao Chen's sect became one of the perished in the era's early years. When you think about it, everything feels really weird. Zhao Chen thought as he shook his head. Zhao Chen being one of the few who managed to survive the destruction of his sect, with the intention of revenge Zhao Chen spent all his time studying martial arts. In the end Zhao Chen had never gotten something that was actually easy for most people like love. A person's face appeared when he remembered that. Come to think of it, I've never even held a girl's hand. Zhao Chen suddenly felt like shedding tears but he couldn't do it in front of all these warriors. At the age of 72, Zhao Chen felt that he had wasted his life in vain, despite having high attainments in swordsmanship after practicing 50 years but in fact he could not seek revenge. Never did Zhao Chen expect that he would be lucky enough to find the heavenly dragon god scripture. When practicing according to it not only did his profound strength improve greatly but his body also became more youthful. Indeed, in the martial world, Zhao Chen had seen several great warriors with high inner strength being able to look young. He did not expect that he would also be able to experience the same thing. Zhao Chen shut himself in for more than 10 years before reappearing in the martial world to seek revenge. His excellent swordsmanship and internal strength made him famous in a short time and earned him the nickname Holy Swordsman, one of the foremost warriors in the martial world. 
Many wondered because Zhao Chen had appeared so suddenly and was not recognized before but had such great abilities. Because of that, many investigated and finally discovered that Zhao Chen was in possession of the heavenly dragon god's scripture. All of that led Zhao Chen to the situation he was now in. Zhao Chen opened his eyes and looked coldly at all the warriors before him. Today heaven and earth will bear witness to blood being shed again on this mountain. Zhao Chen then took out a scripture from his clothes. All the warriors reacted immediately as they believed it was the heavenly dragon god scripture. This is what you guys want? Take it. Zhao Chen threw the scripture into the sky. Before the warriors could react, Zhao Chen drew his sword and released a sword energy aimed at the scripture. No. Are you crazy? The heavenly dragon god's scripture was indeed the greatest internal energy but still the scripture that contained that knowledge was made of plain paper. The sword energy that took the form of blue light immediately penetrated the scripture, sending it shattering into pieces. All of the swordsmen drew their weapons and became enraged by that action while Zhao Chen only laughed loudly in response to them. You guys want the heavenly dragon god scripture? I won't let it in your dreams even. Finishing saying that, Zhao Chen charged forward with his sword. Thanks to his great inner strength, Zhao Chen has a high lightness skill that makes his movement so agile and agile. Within a few breaths, he had arrived between the warriors and managed to release several slashes. Everything happened so fast, two higher level warriors had been killed by Zhao Chen's sword. Even though the two of them managed to block Zhao Chen's sword, it was just that the stab of the sword shattered their sword so easily. Zhao Chen's sword was not an heirloom sword, but the internal energy that flowed into the sword was so great that it made the sword have tremendous damage and easily cut through steel like cutting paper. The warriors no longer remained silent, they attacked at almost the same time. A fierce battle ensued between Zhao Chen and dozens of formidable fighters. In the face of so many enemies, Zhao Chen did not flinch in the slightest and could even fight while smiling broadly no matter how much his body was covered in wounds. The battle didn't last long, about 15 minutes passed before the warriors moved back away from Zhao Chen and looked at him while feeling terrified. Zhao Chen's condition was so bad, he lost his left arm, his whole body was covered in wounds but he was still able to stand up after losing so much blood. His breathing was heavy, but he still seemed able to kill a few more people to die with him. My master once said to be careful of the elderly in the martial world, because in this world most people die young. Today my eyes really opened. Someone said while chuckling amazed. Zhao Chen and the remaining warriors looked at the source of the sound and found a young man who looked to be in his 20s. They all immediately recognized him as the most talented young swordsman of this generation who came from one of the biggest sects today. The young man looked around, which was now filled with the bodies of higher level warriors. He was sure that even with his abilities, it was difficult to do what Zhao Chen had done. Don't misunderstand, I came here because I heard the Lord of the Ice Island was coming here, isn't it a rare opportunity to witness the Lord of the Ice Island? Asked the young man with a broad smile. The expressions on the faces of the warriors including Zhao Chen immediately changed, almost at the same time as the young man finished speaking, the air around them all felt colder. Zhao Chen looked in one direction and saw a girl rapidly approaching from a distance. At first glance the girl seemed to be floating in the air but Zhao Chen knew that it was a technique that could be performed by someone with such high strength. As far as Zhao Chen knew, the people who could do it in the entire martial world could be counted on the fingers of one hand. When the girl finally landed in front of everyone, they could see her face clearly. Everyone was amazed but no one dared to stare at him for too long apart from the young man who was the most talented young swordsman. The beauty of the ruler of the ice island really lives up to the legend. Today my eyes were really opened. The young man laughed freely and was full of arrogance. The girl who possessed divine beauty wore a cold face and didn't say anything, other than suddenly raising her hand. One more breath, the talented young man's body was blown several meters before crashing onto the ground. His body froze and his breath stopped for a moment. Seeing that scene all the remaining swordsmen didn't dare to take a breath, some even left the scene immediately. Zhao Chen chuckled, that young man was probably the most talented of his generation and was even able to learn his sect's advanced martial arts. The problem was that this girl who looked to be in her early teens was actually the same age as Zhao Chen. Bing Ruayu, 
Lord of Ice Island and the only martial genius from the Chaos Era who is still alive today. Not only mastered one of the four peerless scriptures but Ruai also possessed one of the seven world ruler treasures. Within three breaths, those who are still here will stay here forever. Bing Ruai said softly, but everyone could hear her. It didn't take three breaths, before Ruai finished saying more than half of the remaining warriors immediately left the mountain. Zhao Chen chuckled again when only he and Bing Ruai were left. MRS. I am not married. Bing Ruai interrupted Zhao Chen. Ahem. Miss. Zhao Chen choked on his own spit when Ruai cut him off at something he thought was trivial. Miss Bing. I don't know the reason for your presence here but if what you want is the heavenly dragon god scripture, you're too late. Bing Ruai shook her head slowly. I only want to help people from the same generation as me. I heard we are from the same era, but I guess I'm too late. Zhao Chen raised his eyebrows, not expecting Bing Ruai to come to his aid but Ruai was right, he was too late. If not for his inner strength, Zhao Chen would have died long ago and even his vision had started to blur. Miss Bing. Thank you for your good intentions. If there is a next life, I will return the... Zhao Chen could not finish his words before vomiting blood, his profound strength unable to endure the wound any longer. All Zhao Chen could do was smile as wide as he could at Bing Ruayu, before breathing his last breath. Bing Ruayu's eyes widened slightly when she realized that Zhao Chen had died standing up using his sword as a support. Bing Ruayu remembered her grandfather's words which she had almost forgotten. Only a true warrior dies standing upright, no matter how many wounds he has. Bing Ruayu didn't really care about those words considering that her grandfather had died in bed too. To think I'd see a real warrior here. Bing Ruai smiled faintly. She couldn't remember when she last smiled. Bing Ruai took off the necklace she was wearing and then wrapped it around Zhao Chen's neck. This necklace is an heirloom of Ice Island. It is said that it has the power to change destiny. Bing Ruai had never discovered the secret of this necklace. In the end she felt that this could be a form of regret for not being able to save Zhao Chen. Bing Ruai then used her inner strength to create ice around Zhao Chen's body, causing his body to be trapped in an ice coffin. Bing Ruai lowered her head once before leaving the mountain, not realizing that when she turned around something had happened to the necklace she had given to Zhao Chen. Something that changed Zhao Chen's destiny in the most unimaginable way. 7. Chapter 2 Return. Is this what death feels like? Zhao Chen could feel his vision gradually darken. To him his last sight of the face of the most beautiful girl in the martial world could be said to be an accomplishment as well. Zhao Chen was at least able to avenge his sect before dying, leaving nothing to regret. Is there really no more regret? Zhao Chen felt like laughing, feeling stupid. Who is he trying to fool? So many regrets in his life that he couldn't fix but now even regretting them is useless. It's too late, unless I can turn back time. What kind of stupid thoughts do I have? Now that Zhao Chen felt that he was in the dark, the pain all over his body also gradually disappeared indicating that he was heading towards the afterlife. Master. Father. Mother. I am coming. When Zhao Chen began to choose to surrender and give up everything suddenly a bright blue light appeared in front of him. Oh, is this the door to the afterlife? Before Zhao Chen could think further, the bright blue light grew bigger and closer to him. Zhao Chen wanted to observe the light further but when the blue light hit his body, it seemed to enter into him. Zhao Chen's body then emitted a bright blue light before his vision darkened again, but this time his whole body returned to feeling pain though not as badly as before. Ouch. Ouch. What happened? Zhao Chen struggled to escape from the pain he was feeling. Shouldn't he already be dead? Why did he still have to feel this pain? When Zhao Chen struggled further, he found himself able to open his eyes and found himself lying down looking up at the starry night sky. I'm not dead yet. Zhao Chen couldn't believe it, he tried to change his position to sit but his entire body ached and could hardly be moved. Zhao Chen was certain that he had died and this place was also foreign to him. Could it be that the afterlife was different from what Zhao Chen had thought in the notebooks up until now? Oh, you've come to your senses? I think it will take a few more days. Zhao Chen then found someone sitting in front of a fireplace not far from him, a young man who wore an iron mask to cover most of his face. Even though all that could be seen were a pair of eyes and a mouth, Zhao Chen could recognize the person. Master Fang, 
Why are you still wearing a mask in the afterlife? Does master's good looks still bring trouble in this realm? Zhao Chen immediately recognized this young man as Fang'an, the one who had brought him into the martial world. Fang'an, who had originally approached Zhao Chen with a gentle smile, now stopped in his tracks and became alert. How did you know I was surnamed Fang young man? Who are you? Zhao Chen frowned when he heard Fang and call him a young man. Zhao Chen inspected his body, his hands looked much smaller and his legs had also become shorter. What the? Zhao Chen held his head which was starting to hurt. He was sure he had been killed by such a severe injury but now he was in a situation he started to remember. Isn't this the first time I met Master Fang? I go back in time? How could it be? Zhao Chen didn't understand his condition. His head hurt and he started screaming hysterically. No sane person could understand the situation that had happened to him. Fang'an, who had been on guard, turned to pity when he saw Zhao Chen's condition. Calm yourself, everything will be fine. Fang'an hugged the hysterical Zhao Chen. Strangely the hug calmed Zhao Chen after a while. Fang'an did not force Zhao Chen to tell any further but let Zhao Chen digest the situation he was in. During that night Zhao Chen could not sleep trying to find an explanation for this experience that was happening to him. Occasionally Zhao Chen could hear Fang and coughing softly in front of the fireplace all night long. Seeing Fang and also not sleeping because he wanted to keep an eye on Zhao Chen, worrying that Zhao Chen might need something or return to hysterics again made Zhao Chen accept the situation more quickly. Perhaps God gave me a chance to settle my regrets. Zhao Chen no longer cared whether all of this was an illusion or reality but he was going to live it. For him, no matter what he's going through, being able to meet his master again is a blessing. Zhao Chen didn't understand why he had returned at the age of 5, when his village had been attacked and lost both his parents. Zhao Chen then dismissed the thought, realizing that returning to an earlier time would not necessarily save his village from robbers attacks. Son, have you calmed down? Can you tell me where you come from? How did you end up in this place? Fang and started to ask after seeing that Zhao Chen's condition was stable. Zhao Chen told Fang and everything. In his previous life it took a long time before Zhao Chen could tell everything to Fang and because of the trauma he had experienced but this time Zhao Chen was able to tell everything smoothly. Fang and was quite amazed to see Zhao Chen who was still so young looking calm in the situation that had happened to him. Fang and could also see that everything Zhao Chen had told him was not a lie. Okay. I understand your situation. How did you know my surname? And why do you call me master? Fang'an was dressed like a normal person, apart from the mask on his face of course while his sword was hidden by a cloth. Not many people would think Fang'an was a warrior by nature, they would only think Fang'an was hiding his face because his wounds or appearance were unsightly. Zhao Chen scratched his head, he couldn't possibly relate to the fact that this was his second life right? In the end, Zhao Chen could only make up a story that before he woke up, he had a dream that he was made the disciple of a warrior named Fang and who also wore a mask. Fang and looked Zhao Chen up and down, knowing his surname was one thing but knowing his full name was certainly quite another. To be honest, Fang and found it difficult to believe Zhao Chen's story, but on the other hand, Zhao Chen was only a 5 year old child in Fang and's eyes. There's no way I left him in this forest alone. He said in his dream he recognized me as master, could it be true? Is this fate? Fang and stroked his chin. Zhao Chen was a little worried that Fang and would not take him as a disciple this time because of his previous reaction and Zhao Chen was indeed so suspicious but if Zhao Chen wanted to make up for all his past regrets, he had to join Fang and into the martial world. If you really don't have a goal, how about you come with me? Maybe all of this is fate, I have never had a disciple. You could be my first disciple. Fang and hadn't finished speaking yet but Zhao Chen had already started kowtowing before him three times before calling Fang and back as Master Fang. All of Zhao Chen's behavior made Fang and a bit anxious, but in the end this master and disciple were back together in this life. 9. Chapter 3 Silver Moon Inn. Three days had passed since Zhao Chen officially became Fang and's disciple. They had already left the forest and Fang and brought Zhao Chen back to the sect but their journey was quite long. Fang and, who had previously felt anxious and worried because Zhao Chen was too much more mature than his age, slowly started to change his outlook. 
Not only was Zhao Chen a good and obedient student but also very respectful and filial to master, causing Fang and to now view him as a prodigy. The martial world is a cruel world, but as long as you train hard then you can at least survive well. On the way Fang and did not tell much about their sect but instead chose to give Zhao Chen an overview of the atmosphere of the martial world. Zhao Chen felt a little awkward because Fang and's attitude was so different to him compared to his previous life but Zhao Chen understood it. In his previous life Zhao Chen was a 5 year old traumatized child. This explanation if presented to him by Fang and would only make Zhao Chen choose to stay away from the martial world. Fang and explained like this. Of course because he saw Zhao Chen as a talented and courageous disciple. Indeed in this second life, Zhao Chen intends to never disappoint his master again. Chenna, your master is not a great person in the martial world and has many shortcomings, but master hopes that you will not regret being under your master's tutelage. If one day there is a warrior who is more worthy of educating you, master will let you be under his tutelage. Fang and said like this with a faint smile. In just three days, Fang and felt that Zhao Chen was too talented to be under his tutelage who had never had a single disciple. Even though Fang and said that, Zhao Chen knew that Fang and was being modest. The sect that would become Zhao Chen's new home as well as Fang and's place of origin was the Valley of the Hundred Swords, although it couldn't be called a large righteous sect but it wasn't too far from it. Fang and was known in the martial arts world as the Jade-Faced Swordsman. His sword skills were also top notch which made him one of the top fighters in his sect. The Valley of the Hundred Swords has a hundred elders who run the sect called the Sword Elder. These 100 Sword Elders were the most outstanding martial arts group in the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Fang and had not only managed to become the youngest Sword Elder in history at only 19 years old, but also the most talented disciple of his generation. Of course the Jade Face Swordsman name wasn't derived from his sword play skills but something else. Master, disciple will only follow master, will not follow others. Zhao Chen dismissed Fang and's good intentions. To him truly Fang and was the only person he deserved to be called master in his previous life. Chenna, the martial world isn't what you imagined. There's nothing wrong with having more than one master, in fact I've had three throughout my life and there may be more. Fang and said as he stroked Zhao Chen's head. Zhao Chen felt awkward as Fang and stroked his head but didn't say anything. After all he had the mentality of a 92 year old now. The matter of having more than one master also did not Zhao Chen argue any further. According to him with the heavenly dragon god's scripture still in his memory, he didn't need another master. As long as he had time, Zhao Chen would be able to conquer the martial world and repair all his past regrets. It's getting late, we should rest at that place. Fang An pointed at a simple inn. Indeed, the path that Fang An and Zhao Chen took was a trade route. So it was not uncommon for inns and taverns to be found along this route. The last few nights the two of them had stayed out in the open. Fang and felt that there was nothing wrong with them resting in this place this time. Zhao Chen frowned. For the past few days he had tried to remember everything that happened in his first life starting from the day he met Fang and. Shouldn't we be coming to this inn after a week of travel? Zhao Chen thought as he looked at the inn in front of him. Zhao Chen remembered this inn quite well because in his previous life when he passed by, it had become ruins and was filled with corpses. Zhao Chen even lost consciousness when he accompanied Fang An to check the conditions inside the ruins. In his previous life Zhao Chen walked at a slow pace without any vitality so it took him much longer to arrive at this place, on the contrary now he was walking excitedly with Fang An. Zhao Chen didn't know what happened in this inn back then but it definitely wasn't anything good. It could all happen tonight. Zhao Chen whispered softly, worried that he and Fang An would be in danger. Chenna, what are you thinking? Come in. Master, shouldn't we just continue on our way? Student can't wait to see the new residents. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly. Fang An smiled gently and stroked Zhao Chen's head, explaining that their sect wasn't going anywhere so the two didn't need to rush. Zhao Chen scratched his head which was starting to hurt. It was a miracle that he was able to experience a second life. Zhao Chen didn't want to be killed a few days after his rebirth. Even though Fang An was highly skilled in martial arts, Zhao Chen didn't want to take the risk. If I insist on refusing to enter the inn, Master will definitely become suspicious especially if he later hears something happened to this inn. Zhao Chen was in a dilemma, 
with no choice but to follow Fang and into the inn. Zhao Chen could only hope that such a terrible incident would not happen tonight because Zhao Chen couldn't help Fang and should anything happen later. The two then entered the inn called Silver Moon Inn. 5. Chapter 4 The Red-Haired Warrior Silver Moon Inn is a simple, two-story building that provides 20 rooms for rent. Fang and booked a room on the second floor and ordered some food to eat in their room. Chenna, you are still in the growing season, eat a lot. The past few days Fang and could only give Zhao Chen dry bread so this time he made Zhao Chen enjoy the side dishes. Thank you master. After saluting Fang and, Zhao Chen started picking up one side dish after another with his chopsticks. Fang and was amazed to see Zhao Chen's ability to use chopsticks at his age. Usually only noble children were good at using chopsticks at the age of 5. The two of them didn't speak a word while eating. One of the etiquette that Fang and had taught Zhao Chen was not to speak while eating. Every time night fell, Fang and would start coughing lightly. Zhao Chen looked at him worriedly but Fang and said that he was fine, even though Zhao Chen was aware that Fang and's condition was serious. As a result of an injury from a sparring in his youth, Fang and suffered internal injuries that were difficult to describe. Zhao Chen could clearly remember Fang and's deteriorating condition. Ten years from now Fang and would no longer be able to get out of bed and finally died two years later. This time I won't let master suffer the same fate. Zhao Chen resolved in his heart, with the knowledge he had from his previous life it would not be impossible to cure Fang and's condition. After dinner Fang and sat cross-legged on his bed to do some breathing exercises while Zhao Chen asked permission to go have a look. Fang and was used to seeing Zhao Chen, who only slept for a few hours every day. Zhao Chen said it was one of his habits from a long time ago. Previously, when Zhao Chen saw that Silver Moon Inn was not crowded with visitors, he breathed a sigh of relief thinking that the events that happened in his previous life might not happen tonight, that was why Zhao Chen was able to eat heartily. It was just that after dinner, Zhao Chen felt uneasy. Even though it was already dark, it could be said that the night was still young and the possibility for something to happen was still great. That was why Zhao Chen had descended to the ground floor to observe the situation. The ground floor of Silver Moon Inn looks like a tavern. There are a few tables and chairs to sit down to enjoy a meal. Zhao Chen then found that one of the previously empty tables was now occupied by a man who looked to be in his 30s with red hair and carrying a sword openly on his back. The red-haired man was not alone but was holding a baby who was crying loudly. You don't have any milk? The red-haired man asked the maid, a worried look on his face as he looked at the baby in his arms. Ah, we don't provide drinks like that. The waiter looked confused and he was also worried that the baby's crying would disturb the guests who were staying. The servants wanted to chase away this red-haired man but seeing the man's stature that was so fierce and also seemed to be a swordsman made him not dare to do it. Zhao Chen walked up to the red-haired man before climbing onto one of the chairs. The red-haired man was confused by Zhao Chen's attitude. Son, what are you doing? The man's voice became quieter. Even though he had a rough face but his attitude was quite gentle towards children. Zhao Chen didn't answer but started playing with his facial expressions at the baby. Seeing Zhao Chen's ridiculous attitude, the baby slowly stopped crying and even started laughing. Good child. Zhao Chen stroked the baby's head gently. That's when he realized the baby's body temperature was so low. The red-haired man didn't know how to react but he thanked Zhao Chen. The man felt that Zhao Chen was a smart kid. Uncle, this little baby is feeling so cold, she needs not only a warm drink but also thicker clothes. Zhao Chen explained before looking at the maid beside him, isn't one of the inn workers a mother? Please ask for his help to give milk to this little baby. The maid was taken aback by Zhao Chen's question, but she immediately realized that one of the maids in this place could indeed breast feed this little baby. Not long after the maid in question came and did not mind breastfeeding the baby. Thank you. The red-haired man gave a few coins to the maid who was nursing the baby. Zhao Chen knew that the amount of money was not small for an inmaid. Smart boy, thank you for helping uncle. The man then looked at Zhao Chen and had admiration in his eyes. What's your name? Uncle, my name is Zhao Chen. The man patted Zhao Chen's shoulder lightly. Good name. Uncle's name is Lin Fan. We've come for your head. Before the red-haired man had finished speaking, Someone kicked open the door of the inn and shouted loudly. 
The red-haired man's face turned to one of anger. Lin Fan you think you can get away with killing one of the higher-ups of the Red Scorpion Guild? A group of people entered the inn. Their number barely reached 20 people and everyone carried weapons such as swords, machetes and spears. Everyone released a large, murderous or aimed at the red-haired man. The inmate became terrified while Zhao Chen looked calm. The red-haired man, Lin Fan noticed Zhao Chen's composure and was quite impressed. Lin Fan? Why is this name familiar? When he heard the people who had entered the inn addressing the red-haired man as Lin Fan, Zhao Chen had a feeling he had heard of it but couldn't manage to remember it. One thing Zhao Chen understood was that the incident that had happened to this and in his previous life had to do with this Lin Fan. What made Zhao Chen still calm was that he could judge that the dozen or so people who entered this and didn't have higher levels of martial arts and were no match for Fang An. My earlier worries seemed unfounded. Thought Zhao Chen while shaking his head slowly. Chenna, can uncle ask you a favor? The maid who had previously been nursing the baby had already run away after handing the tiny baby back into Lin Fan's arms. Zhao Chen understood that the help Lin Fan wanted was to look after the little baby. Zhao Chen held the little baby in his tiny arms before walking away from the place that would soon become a battlefield. The smile on Lin Fan's face disappeared and he released a strong killing aura from his body, making it hard for those who felt it to breathe. 5. Chapter 5 Lin Fan. You guys have come here, there's no need to think about going home again. Lin Fan drew his sword and stared at the armed group before him. The people who previously released murderous auras were now trembling. Realizing that they were no match for Lin Fan despite their numerical superiority. Those people were cursing Zhao Chen in their hearts. As far as they were concerned Lin Fan was traveling with a baby which would definitely make it difficult for him to fight against such a large number of enemies. To think that no one would be willing to help Lin Fan look after the baby. Take the baby from the kid. Lin Fan's weakness is the baby. One person whispered to the other. Don't think I'm going to let you guys do that. Lin Fan had keen hearing so he could hear the whisper, without hesitation Lin Fan charged forward with his sword. Zhao Chen watched the battle from quite a distance while trying to comfort the baby he was carrying. Chen'a, what happened? Zhao Chen looked up and found Fang An leaving his room. After hearing the commotion on the ground floor, Fang An jumped from the second floor and landed next to Zhao Chen. Fang An was astonished to see Zhao Chen holding a baby. Master. Zhao Chen briefly explained the situation to Fang An. Fang An nodded slowly, then looked at the battle that was happening not far from where he stood. In such a short time, half of the people who had tried to attack Lin Fan had already fallen to the ground, lifeless. Fang An could see that Lin Fan was a higher level martial artist whose martial arts skills even surpassed him. Chenna, that uncle mentioned his name? Those people call the red-haired uncle Lin Fan. Lin Fan. Fang An looked so surprised when he heard it. Fang An now understood, Lin Fan could have finished off all of these people in 3 moves but he tried to kill all of his opponents in a neat manner, so that not much blood would come out of the enemy's bodies. Fang An felt that Lin Fan did all that because Zhao Chen witnessed the battle. Still thinking about Chen'er's condition watching his fight. Fang An couldn't help but smile in awe at the sight. Even though Lin Fan finished his fight trying to make it less bloody still a fishy smell soon filled the air and soon the smell of corpses would surely fill this in. Lin Fan sheathed his sword again. He then saw the masked Fang An standing next to Zhao Chen. Senior Lin. Fang An saluted Lin Fan. My name is Fang An, a member of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Jade-faced swordsman? Lin Fan raised his eyebrows. It is an honor that Senior Lin has heard of me. Fang An smiled gently. Zhao Chen then introduced Fang An as his master to Lin Fan. Zhao Chen realized the thoughts of the two were more centered on him not being distracted after seeing the bloody battle in front of him. It turns out that Chen is from the Valley of the Hundred Swords, it seems that in a few years your sect will have another great warrior. Lin Fan laughed loudly praising Zhao Chen. Senior Lin is too complimentary. Fang An nodded slowly. Zhao Chen was still confused as to why this inn had become a ruin if it turned out that the fight had only been like this. Looking at Lin Fan's abilities, even fighting while carrying a baby would still be able to finish off all of his opponents without much difficulty. Uncle Lin. Zhao Chen intended to return the baby he was holding to Lin Fan. 
Zhao Chen himself was still confused as to why he couldn't remember a champion as great as Lin Fan from his previous life. Chen looks like uncle will have to ask for your help a bit longer. As Lin Fan finished saying this, three other people entered the inn. Zhao Chen frowned. He could see that these three figures were formidable fighters whose strength was on par with or slightly below Fangans. On the clothes worn by the three of them there was a red scorpion symbol that was quite large. Lin Fan. You think you can stay alive after killing our little brother? One of the three pointed at Lin Fan. Ah, I thought I could only kill one of the four red scorpion generals. You guys bringing yourselves here saved me the hassle of hunting you guys down. Lin Fan smiled broadly before drawing his sword again. Chenna, stand behind master. Fang and told Zhao Chen to take refuge in him. Zhao Chen obeyed. He realized that even though Lin Fan had high martial arts skills, he might not be able to easily block the moves of the three of them. Seeing the presence of these three people, Zhao Chen only understood why this inn had become a ruin in his previous life. If Lin Fan were to fight against three heroes of this level while carrying a baby, he would definitely experience a lot of hardships and could even be seriously injured even if he managed to finish off all three of his opponents. This place is too cramped, how about we fight outside the inn? Asked Lin Fan. Why do we have to do what you want? After saying that one of the three immediately attacked using a whip. Lin Fan greeted the attack without fear, another one wielding a machete joined in attacking Lin Fan while the remaining one armed with a spear dashed towards Fang and Zhao Chen. Lin Fan wanted to try to stop him but the other two people used their all to restrain Lin Fan. The three of them realized that they were no match for Lin Fan if they fought fairly, they knew Lin Fan was carrying a baby which was his weakness. Chenna, take this opportunity to see the martial art of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Fang and smiled gently before charging towards the spear-wielding enemy. How dare to meddle in the affairs of the Red Scorpion group. The spear-wielding man charged violently. Fang and waved his sword to block all of the spear attacks at once using a nimble footwork technique. The fight between the two is practically even. Zhao Chen's outlook was slightly different, even though Fang and looked evenly matched with his opponent. Fang and was actually far superior. Fang and was only 22 years old now while his opponent was almost 50 years old, so one could see Fang and was far more talented than his opponent. Zhao Chen held his breath, it felt like it had been so long since he had last seen Fang and sword play. The sword technique that Fang and used was so agile and had many forms, this technique was called the seagull swordsmanship. One of the sword techniques that Zhao Chen still used even when he was called the Holy Swordsman. Without Zhao Chen noticing, tears fell from his eyes watching Fang and sword play. Once again Zhao Chen vowed in his heart to treat Fang and no matter what. 5. Chapter 6 Kiawaiyu. Twin Seagulls. Simultaneously dodging his opponent's spear strike, Fang and immediately countered with two swift thrusts and managed to injure his opponent though not seriously. Zhao Chen frowned, he could see Fang An's concentration was slightly broken because even in the fight he was still coughing. If only Fang An had fought during the day, maybe this fight would have been finished with Fang An coming out victorious considering that his opponent underestimated Fang An and showed several weaknesses. Zhao Chen's attention then turned to Lin Fan, the red-haired man's fight with two high-leveled warriors destroying a part of this inn. This Lin Fan is still hiding his full strength or is there some condition that prevents him from using his full abilities? Zhao Chen thought as he observed the fight, seeing Lin Fan's fighting ability made him realize that Lin Fan was equal if not superior to Zhao Chen at the peak of his abilities as a holy swordsman. Being able to keep up with Zhao Chen who had studied the heavenly dragon god's scripture for more than 10 years showed that Lin Fan was no ordinary swordsman. It was strange that Zhao Chen really couldn't remember Lin Fan's figure from his previous life. First brother, second brother, we are no match for him. We better back off now. One of the three red scorpion generals shouted quite loudly. I told you I would not let you off the hook. Lin Fan channeled inner strength into his blade then pointed it at the person who had just shouted loudly, the flower fairy conquers the demons. Lin Fan's attacks were swift and the force contained in those attacks made them extremely lethal attacks. One of the red scorpion generals was again killed by Lin Fan's sword. Zhao Chen's eyes widened when he saw the move Lin Fan unleashed, 
Not because it was able to finish off a high ranking warrior in one strike but because he recognized the sword move Lin Fan used. Flower Fairy Swordsmanship. Zhao Chen knew full well that this sword move could only be learned by someone from Peach Blossom Mountain, one of the current strongest righteous sects. Third brother. Another person who was facing Lin Fan as well as the spearman who was fighting with Fang and became so angry to see one of them killed like that. Even though they were burning with anger, both of them were aware that they would lose their lives if they continued to fight like this, especially when it turned out that Lin Fan was assisted by a warrior whose abilities were no less than the two, namely Fang and. We will remember this. Shouted one of the two before moving backwards leaving the inn. Lin Fan didn't really want to let these two off the hook but he could also feel that the foundation of this inn had reached its limit. If Lin Fan could finish off even those two, this inn would likely be reduced to ruins. Lin Fan could feel that almost all of the guests of this inn were ordinary humans. They had already noticed the commotion on the ground floor but had chosen to stay in their rooms not wanting to get involved. If this inn really did collapse, Lin Fan wasn't sure he could save them all. Thank you both for your help. Otherwise I would be in trouble. Lin Fan sheathed his sword back before approaching Fang An and Zhao Chen with a cheerful face. No need to be shy senior, it's an honor for me to be able to help you. Fang An paid his respects. Lin Fan summoned the inn's maid then gave him a few gold pieces to compensate for the damage he had caused. The money should have been more than enough to cover all the losses the inn had suffered. Ah, if it wasn't for the fact that I ran 7 days and 7 nights non-stop. I would have had no trouble facing three of their class. Lin Fan sighed, still regretting not having managed to kill the two remaining warriors just now. Fang An smiled awkwardly, while Zhao Chen gave a soft cough. Now Zhao Chen understood why Lin Fan looked unable to use his full abilities. In fact it was because he was not in his best condition. Lin Fan picked up the tiny baby again, who looked calmer now, his eyes full of emotion. You are as really poor. She would have almost been in danger if it weren't for the help of the two of you. Lin Fan explained the baby in his arms was the granddaughter of his eldest daughter who married into a merchant family. Even though she didn't approve, his daughter chose to leave home and start a family with the man she loved. A few days ago Lin Fan heard that his daughter's family was in danger so he ran non-stop to help his daughter. Unfortunately, Lin Fan arrived too late. When Lin Fan arrived, his daughter had been killed along with her husband by one of the generals of the Red Scorpion group. Lin Fan could only save the granddaughter and intended to bring this tiny baby back to his sect. Zhao Chen's body trembled, he was no stranger to this story. Now the gaze fell on the baby in Lin Fan's arms. Hearing Lin Fan call the baby Yu, Zhao Chen was sure that his guess was not wrong. Chenna, you may not know but Yu is a girl. You saved her today and your ages are not much different. What if I set you up with her? Lin Fan smiled widely. Fang and eyes widened and stared at Lin Fan in disbelief. Zhao Chen was equally shocked. Lin Fan then said the baby's name was Kiao Yu. Hearing Kiao Yu's name spoken from Lin Fan's mouth made Zhao Chen feel as if he had been struck by lightning. Now that Zhao Chen realized Lin Fan's true identity, Lin Fan was none other than the Red Tiger of Peach Blossom Mountain. One of Peach Blossom Mountain's five strongest warriors and the grandfather of the martial geniuses in Peach Blossom Mountain's history was Kiao Yu, who was nicknamed the Peach Blossom Goddess. Despite looking to be in his 30s, Lin Fan should be nearly 50 by now. Zhao Chen had heard that during the great fight that led to the annihilation of Peach Blossom Mountain, Lin Fan was not of much help as he evidently had serious internal injuries. Now Zhao Chen knew that the internal injuries had been obtained from today's battle. Not many people knew Lin Fan's name because people knew him as the Red Tiger, and Lin Fan rarely left Peach Blossom Mountain and spent most of his time educating his beloved granddaughter Kiao Yu. Zhao Chen could only look at Fang and because it was clearly inappropriate for his age to answer Lin Fan's offer. 5. Chapter 7 Internal Energy. Senior Lin. This. Fang'an was speechless, he must have been happy when Lin Fan looked up to Zhao Chen and wanted to set him up with his granddaughter but Fang'an felt like everything had happened so fast. Even though Fang'an was Zhao Chen's master, they had only known each other for a few days and had not passed any martial arts skills onto Zhao Chen. Fang'an felt that it was not appropriate to arrange Zhao Chen's matchmaking. Hum? 
You don't think my granddaughter is good enough for Chenna? Lin Fan's expression changed slightly. One could see that he loved his granddaughter very much and was sensitive towards all things related to Kiao Yu. Ahem. It's not like that senior Lin. Fang and could only scratch his cheeks, having a hard time explaining the situation. Zhao Chen felt it was unfair for his master to face this kind of situation. Uncle Lin, it's not that little sister isn't good enough but maybe I'm the one who isn't suitable for sister Kiao. Zhao Chen then explained his background of being an orphan and having only met Fang and for a few days. Hearing this explanation made Lin Fan's face soften, and at the same time admired Zhao Chen even more. Lin Fan had not expected that Zhao Chen had quite a tragic background and had not officially become a disciple of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Lin Fan had thought about bringing Zhao Chen back to Peach Blossom Mountain but felt it was inappropriate to do that to Fang and who had helped him. Zhao Chen even continued that he might not have the martial talent capable of keeping up with Kiao Yu. Lin Fan stroked his chin, considering Zhao Chen's words. Actually according to Lin Fan by looking at Zhao Chen's temperament which was so mature for his age as well as his intelligence and temperament, Lin Fan was sure that Zhao Chen would become a respected figure but it all came back to his martial talent. Senior Lin, these two are still so young. Isn't it too soon to talk about arranged marriages? Let them grow more mature and Kiao why you understand the situation first, introduce the two of them. If indeed both of them are interested in each other, it's not too late to set them up. Fang and finally finished composing the sentence he wanted to convey. Lin Fan did not immediately reply but looked back at Zhao Chen up and down. He had rarely felt so attracted to someone and Zhao Chen had so successfully made him want to take him as a partner for his granddaughter or at least take him as a disciple. I hope that you can provide sufficient resources for Chen so that his martial arts can develop properly. Lin Fan then took out something from his clothes, a small wooden box, since I haven't been able to match my granddaughter, I should at least repay your kindness. Fang and received Lin Fan's gift and checked its contents. He found inside were three pink colored pills. Senior Lin, this. Fang and immediately recognized the pill and understood its value. Don't refuse, if it wasn't for Chen or I would be in trouble. Lin Fan asked Fang and to keep the pills and give them to Zhao Chen at the right time. Zhao Chen also recognized the gift from Lin Fan as the lotus pill. These three pills had powerful healing properties and each pill was capable of increasing one to two cycles of strength. In martial arts, internal energy has a unit called a circle because the internal energy trained by a warrior will form a small circle within him. If one practices ordinary breathing techniques then one will be able to form one internal circle by practicing diligently for two years while a gifted one will be able to form one circle every year. When one practiced high level inner arts, they could obtain two to three circles annually and those who were gifted could form five to six circles. The Heavenly Dragon God scripture which was rated as the most advanced internal cultivation alone allowed those who practiced with it to create a maximum of 60 internal energy circles each year. Zhao Chen was talentless and could only make 10 to 12 circles every year despite practicing with the same scripture. Of course obtaining high level energy knowledge is not easy in the martial world, that's why most fighters look for medicines, plants and magic items that can increase internal strength but the price of each of these items is also very high. The three pills that Lin Fan gave were worth a mansion in a big city, which was why Fang An was a bit hesitant about accepting them but this was also part of Zhao Chen's luck. If Zhao Chen were to consume these pills, he would at least have an inner strength that was even better than someone his age who was the same gifted. Fang An also planned to find ways to obtain items like these to help Zhao Chen's development in the future. Zhao Chen instead thought of gifting this to Fang An, because the three pills could help Fang An temporarily suppress his old illness. To Zhao Chen, those three pills could indeed provide three to six profound energy circles but for him who had the heavenly dragon god scripture in his head, it was not that appealing. That night Lin Fan took Fang An and Zhao Chen to talk all night after asking one of the inmates to put Kiao Yu to sleep. Of course after knowing Lin Fan's ability, no one dared to refute him. Lin Fan had repeatedly praised Zhao Chen's intelligence in their conversations. Lin Fan even reminded Zhao Chen to visit Peach Blossom Mountain when he had the chance. Fang An also got some valuable pointers which greatly helped his martial art progress. After all, 
the opportunity to talk with someone like Lin Fan let alone to share knowledge was so rare. Chenna, don't forget to see Kiawayu in a few years. When morning came, Lin Fan intended to continue his journey. After ordering Zhao Chen, Lin Fan carrying Kiawayu left the inn. Zhao Chen couldn't help but chuckle in admiration seeing Lin Fan's lightness skill so high. Fang An also reminded that the martial world was vast and above the heavens there was still the heavens so Zhao Chen had to keep his bearings and not raise unnecessary trouble. Zhao Chen nodded slowly at Fang An's statement, the two chose to rest until noon before continuing their journey towards the Valley of the Hundred Swords. 6. Chapter 8 Valley of the Hundred Swords. Fang An and Zhao Chen's journey after leaving the inn had practically no problems. Other than a few beasts or people trying to rob them. The two of them continued on their way until they arrived at the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Chenna, that place will be your new home. Fang An pointed at the Valley of the Hundred Swords that was visible in the distance. Zhao Chen smiled broadly, the scene in front of him carried so many memories. This lifetime, I will not let the Valley of the Hundred Swords perish again. Zhao Chen resolved in his heart as he clenched his fists tightly. Even though it was called the Valley of the Hundred Swords, it was actually the size of a large city. The difference is that this city was built on lowland which was once a large valley. As the Valley of the Hundred Swords developed for hundreds of years, their buildings continued to expand until they finally formed a city. Senior Fang. Ah. Junior Fang. As Fang An and Zhao Chen walked closer to the entrance of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, dozens of uniformly dressed girls with Fang An became enthusiastic upon seeing Fang An's arrival. Zhao Chen could see Fang An's body standing beside him tremble momentarily as he saw the girls running towards the two. Senior Fang, why do you always wear a mask? Let me see your face. Junior Fang, you must be tired, I have a bottle of water taken from the snowflower waterfall, drink it. Brother Fang, were you injured on the mission? I have a good ointment for external wounds. Every time the girls tried to get Fang An's attention and give him something, Zhao Chen took a few steps back for fear of being stepped on by these girls. Zhao Chen only smiled awkwardly as he watched Fang An hassle the girls. Fang An, who was known as the Jade Face Swordsman, was because he had such a handsome face. The beauty of Fang An's face is said to be able to make any girl's heart flutter when he sees her. From a young age, Fang An received special treatment from the female disciples, and even the female elders in the Valley of the Hundred Swords tried to pamper him. This made Fang An hated by many male students, plus Fang An was so talented in martial arts. Zhao Chen knew the reason Fang An had received a serious injury from a sparring several years ago that led to his current condition was due to a female problem with his martial sister. The problem is that Fang An has never been interested in the relationship between men and women, more precisely because the treatment Fang An received since childhood by the girls around him made Fang An a little afraid of women which eventually caused Fang An to always wear a mask. Not many outsiders of the Valley of the Hundred Swords had ever seen Fang An's face, but they heard that he did have a dazzling look. It was thanks to his face that all the unmarried girls in the Valley of the Hundred Swords refused to regard Fang An as an elder even though Fang An held the position of sword elder three years ago. According to the girls, addressing Fang An as elder meant giving up hope of ever becoming Fang An's life partner. Zhao Chen chuckled as he remembered that in his previous life, every time Fang An had a birthday, a mountain of gifts would be sent to their residence. Sisters, I'm sorry but I can't talk to you for long. Fang An slowly stepped back and held Zhao Chen's head. It was only when Fang An did that that the women noticed Zhao Chen, the little boy they didn't know before. Zhao Chen could feel the cold gazes from all of the girls, some even gave off a murderous aura. Zhao Chen recalled the first time he came to the Valley of the Hundred Swords, he also received the same treatment but at that time he didn't understand what was happening so he could only cry. Zhao Chen quickly introduced himself, Disciple Master Fang. Zhao Chen pays respects to the sisters. When they heard Zhao Chen introduce himself as a disciple, all the girls' attitudes changed immediately. Oh, Junior Fang finally has a disciple. Oh, sweetie, what was your name just now? Chenna, right? Chenna, you can call me Aunt Master Ling. I am someone close to your master. A girl handed Zhao Chen a handkerchief. What do you mean, Sister Ling? One of the girls interrupted the girl surnamed Ling's words. 
Zhao Chen scratched his head. In a moment the girl's attention was on him. All of these girls had the same thought. Zhao Chen was a golden opportunity to get close to Fang An. These girls were trying to coddle Zhao Chen but before they could go too far, Fang An grabbed Zhao Chen and brought him into the sect. This kind of situation made Fang An prefer to be outside the sect doing missions. Chen are you alright? When the two had reached a fairly quiet place, Fang An immediately checked Zhao Chen's condition, worried that Zhao Chen would suffer the same trauma as himself. This disciple a fine master, they are all good. Zhao Chen smiled broadly. Fang An opened his mouth but said nothing, he then led Zhao Chen to a pavilion not far from the entrance. Along the way, there were more girls trying to get close to Fang An but seeing Fang An in a rush made them reluctant to approach him. Not a few youths under the age of 16 also saluted and addressed Fang An as elder. This place is called Young Sword Pavilion, where all members of the sect take on missions as well as carry out various administrative activities. Fang An explained. Zhao Chen of course already knew that, he had worked in administration for several years in his previous life because he didn't want to practice martial arts. Fang An said he wanted to register Zhao Chen as his disciple as well as make an ID for Zhao Chen. The Young Swords Pavilion was indeed one of the most crowded places in the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Fang An and Zhao Chen attracted quite a number of people's attention when they entered the venue. All the attention was only natural considering that Fang An was the youngest sword elder in history, having assumed the position at the age of 19. Due to frequently carrying out missions outside the sect after becoming a sword elder, it was quite rare for someone to see Fang An. Fang An led Zhao Chen to one of the administration desks which was empty. Zhao Chen did not expect to see such a familiar face. A woman who looked the same age as Fang An was busy writing at the table. When she noticed Fang An's arrival, she immediately smiled warmly and greeted the two. Your elder Fang has returned and it seems you are not alone. Who is this little brother? The woman looked at Zhao Chen lovingly. 5. Chapter 9 Yu Lian. Sister Lian. Please help me make an identity for my disciple. Fang An said so while stroking Zhao Chen's head. Oh, Elder Fang has finally taken in a disciple? The woman looked slightly surprised for a moment before starting to carry out Fang An's request. Zhao Chen would never forget the woman before him, the woman named Yu Lian. Seeing this woman made Zhao Chen recall many long buried memories within her. Yu Lian was from the same generation as Fang An. The age of the two didn't differ much either, Yulian was several months younger than Fang An. To Fang An, Yulian was a special figure because this woman was the only one who didn't go crazy after seeing his face. That was why in his previous life, when Zhao Chen said he wanted to work at the Young Sword Pavilion, Fang An entrusted him to Yulian. Zhao Chen learned so much about administration as well as general knowledge about the martial world under Yulian's tutelage. As far as Zhao Chen knew, Yu Lian's martial skill was also high but that woman didn't like violence so she chose to work in administration. If Fang An was a surrogate father to Zhao Chen in his previous life, Yu Lian was like a surrogate mother to him. Zhao Chen could remember the time when Fang An died of illness, Yu Lian cried for several days without stopping and had not smiled since then. Her body became emaciated until she finally died from exhaustion three years later. Yu Lian raised her eyebrows when she noticed Zhao Chen staring at her with teary eyes. Something is wrong with me? She asked Zhao Chen. Ah oh no. Auntie reminds me of someone. Zhao Chen immediately controlled his facial expressions. Yu Lian only smiled after Zhao Chen answered. Yu Lian then discussed Zhao Chen with Fang An. Elder Fang, according to the regulations Zhao Chen cannot practice martial arts. Yu Lian then reminded Fang An of the sect rules. Zhao Chen recalled the rules Yulian had referred to. The Valley of the Hundred Swords divided the admissions of disciples into two categories, firstly those from within the sect and secondly those from outside the sect. Internal recruitment is carried out for those who are descended from members of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, those who belong to this category may start training from the age of 5. In Zhao Chen's case, he was from outside the sect and could only become an official disciple and start his training when he was 8 years old. Zhao Chen didn't really understand these rules but what he knew was for the benefit of those who wanted to learn martial arts. Those who come from warrior families have lifestyles and nutrition that make their bodies more prepared for martial arts training. 
Unlike Zhao Chen who came from a farming family or other ordinary families, their bodies would not be able to withstand the rigorous training of martial arts. It doesn't matter, Chen also has to learn to read and stuff first. Fang and New Yulian had reminded him because he had never taken any students before but Fang and would not forget his rule. Fang and himself was actually a descendant of a member of the Valley of the Hundred Swords so he started training at the age of 5. Fang and's mother died after giving birth to him while his father was killed during a mission when Fang and was 17 years old. Zhao Chen scratched his head that didn't itch. It was true that in his previous life because of his family background, Zhao Chen couldn't read or write even though both of them were indispensable if he wanted to learn martial arts based on the scriptures. Other basic skills that need to be learned are counting, painting as well as general knowledge about the world such as economics, ethics and others. The problem was that Zhao Chen had mastered it all with the memories from his previous life. After all even though he was now 5 years old his memories were of that of a 92 year old. Chenna, keep the side e carefully. From now on you are part of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Fang and handed over an iron badge with Zhao Chen's name on it. On the other side of the badge was the Valley of the Hundred Swords emblem and Fang and's name. Yu Lian said someone would deliver sect clothes for Zhao Chen later at Fang and's residence. After finishing registering Zhao Chen, Fang and then reported on the mission he had completed. Elder Fang as usual completed the mission swiftly. A middle-aged man with sword-like mustaches walked up to Yu Lian's table. Zhao Chen frowned while Fang and Yu Lian immediately saluted the middle-aged man. Vice Chairman Wang. Fang and smiled awkwardly before introducing Zhao Chen to the middle-aged man. Zhao Chen was actually very displeased but managed to hide his feelings. Zhao Chen would never forget the figure before him, Wang Ergao, the vice chairman of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. In his previous life Wang Ergao disliked Fang An, because Fang An's appearance rendered Wang Ergao's grandson's achievement of becoming a sword elder at the age of 25 insignificant. Wang Ergao then often made things difficult for Fang An by giving him dangerous missions. Wang Ergao was from the Wang family, one of the five noble families of this country. Indeed the Wang family had been a supporter of the Valley of the Hundred Swords for a long time using their wealth so that the Wang family had an important position in the sect. What made Zhao Chen displeased Wang Ergao was that not only did he make things difficult for Fang An from time to time but that when the Valley of the Hundred Swords was attacked several years after the chaos era started, Wang Ergao, who realized the enemy was too strong, chose to leave the sect with all of his descendants. Wang Ergao's action made the Valley of a Hundred Swords perish and be forgotten in the history of the world of martial arts. Oh, you finally took in an apprentice after three years as an elder? Wang Ergao was slightly surprised when he found out that Fang and brought Zhao Chen. Without further ado, Wang Ergao immediately grabbed Zhao Chen's hand and checked his pulse. Fang and could also see that Ergao's actions were impolite but the positions and abilities of the two were far different so Fang and could only clench his fists in anger. Yu Lian who witnessed all of that felt awry and could only lower her head. Zhao Chen was of course also furious but couldn't do anything about it. He even already knew what Wang Ergao was going to say after checking his pulse. 5. Chapter 10 Bone Quality. Elder Fang, you are the most talented disciple and also the youngest sword elder. Yet you are recklessly picking on disciples? This kid has absolutely no martial talent. I hope you don't exhaust the sect's resources on him. Wang Ergao's expression was cold but he was happy in his heart because he felt that Fang An had taken in a disciple who had no future. Wang Ergao had checked and found that Zhao Chen only had bones and an ordinary body structure so he didn't have any good martial talent. If Zhao Chen thought back, Wang Ergao's words had also influenced his previous life's choice not to study martial arts and discover too late that he was actually quite talented in swordsmanship. Vice Sect Master Wang's advice I will consider. If there is nothing else the Vice Sect Master wants to say then I'll take my leave since the two of us just had a long journey and haven't rested yet. Fang An smiled faintly. He naturally also realized that Zhao Chen did not have high talent in martial arts but Wang Ergao did not know that Zhao Chen was a smart kid. Wang Ergao snorted softly before turning around and walking away. He chose to leave the scene earlier than Fang An and Zhao Chen. Seeing Wang Ergao walk away, Fang An took a deep breath and patted Zhao Chen's head. Chenna, you shouldn't take those words to heart. Master make sure you will be able to learn martial arts without hindrance. 
Zhao Chen nodded slowly, he showed that he was not bothered by Wang Ergao's words. Fang En smiled broadly at his attitude. The two of them then said goodbye to Yu Lian before Fang En brought Zhao Chen to their residence. Fang En took Zhao Chen to the outskirts of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Along the way, Fang En saw Zhao Chen enthusiastically observing the surroundings. Fang En did not know that Zhao Chen was deep in nostalgia. Zhao Chen was trying hard to hold back his tears, this place could be said to be missed by him a lot. After walking for some time, the two arrived at a quite large residence. At the gate Zhao Chen could see a large sign with the words Bamboo Sword Villa written on it. From now on this will be your residence. Fang and then invited Zhao Chen to enter. The Valley of the Hundred Swords had a hundred villas like this which were each distributed among the Sword Elder. Even though Fang and was ranked in the top 20 within the Sword Elders but he chose Bamboo Sword Villa, the smallest villa among the hundred existing villas to be his residence. Fang and's reasoning was simple. He didn't intend to have as many disciples as the other sword elders and also he would be outside the sect more often so Fang'an had no intention of fighting over the residence with the other sword elders. Not all the disciples and sect members lived in these hundred villas, but only the direct disciples of the sword elders and the rest had their own residences like a city. Fang'an gave Zhao Chen one of the largest rooms in Bamboo Sword Villa, if you don't like this room, you can choose another room yourself. Fang and showed Zhao Chen around, showing him wells to fetch water, bathrooms, kitchens, study rooms and others before allowing Zhao Chen to rest. Zhao Chen did feel exhausted, he cleaned up his room soberly before falling into a deep sleep until dinner time. Chenna, before learning martial arts, you must master some basic knowledge, from tomorrow master will guide you. Fang and explained after the two had dinner. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly but didn't argue with Fang and. That night Zhao Chen didn't sleep but made plans ahead. I want to train my body quickly but master won't allow me. Zhao Chen hesitated and thought about what attitude and choice he would make going forward. Zhao Chen intended to become a gifted disciple in order for the sect to provide himself with sufficient resources to speed up his training process as well as give Fang and pride. The problem was that Zhao Chen also realized that he couldn't directly practice using the heavenly dragon god's scripture. If one wanted to store a large amount of internal energy in his body, then he had to train his body to become strong enough to store all of it. In his previous life, Zhao Chen found this scroll at the age of 72, when he was already one of the high-ranking aces in the martial world. Zhao Chen's body back then allowed him to directly practice the Heavenly Dragon God's scripture but it was different this time. The first chapter of the Heavenly Dragon God's scripture was the Dragon Bone Refining which made Zhao Chen extremely shocked when he read it. A person's martial talent was usually judged by the quality of his bones and body structure. Warriors could usually improve the quality of their bones with some kinds of medicine and magic herbs, but obtaining them was not easy. Most people improve the quality of their bones through tens of years of hard training, and even then it does little to improve the quality of a warrior's bones. The dragon bone refining from the heavenly dragon god's scripture was a technique that allowed one to increase the quality of one's bones quickly without the use of medicine or magical herbs. According to the scripture, a warrior's bones were divided into several categories namely wolf bones, tiger bones and dragon bones. The wolf bones were divided into three namely the weakest the yellow wolf bones then the black wolf bones and finally the wind wolf bones. Tiger bones are also divided into three. Namely young tiger bones, wild tiger bones and iron tiger bones. The dragon bones are divided into four namely the young dragon bones, the earth dragon bones, the sky dragon bones and the most powerful is the dragon god bones. Zhao Chen's previous life possessed the quality of the wind wolf bone and after practicing for some time he attained the iron tiger bone. Zhao Chen thought it would take a long time to reach the dragon bone. So he continued on to the second part of the scripture without completing the first stage. This time I have enough time, so I won't rush it. I will definitely reach the dragon god bone. Zhao Chen was determined. Zhao Chen then checked the quality of his current bones using that method. He could only smile bitterly when he found out the quality of the bones he possessed were those of the yellow wolf bones. The lowest quality bones a warrior could possess. My journey looks like it will be quite long. Zhao Chen chuckled. 6. Chapter 11 One Year. Chenna as always, you never stop surprising me. 
Fang and stroked Zhao Chen's head gently. It doesn't feel like a year has passed since Zhao Chen became Fang and disciple. Now Zhao Chen is already 6 years old but his growth is far above the average child of his age. Zhao Chen looked like a 10 year old kid from his size. The past year Zhao Chen had not stopped surprising Fang An. He had so obediently learned to read, write and count. Lessons that should have taken 3 years to learn were devoured by Zhao Chen in a few months. Of course this was because basically Zhao Chen already knew everything. Zhao Chen could have mastered it the day he was taught but it would be so shocking that he pretended he didn't understand it and spent several months learning it all. Fang and then taught Zhao Chen literature, painting and ethics. Chen er is really talented, even if he can't become a warrior, he can become a famous scholar. Fang and thought as he looked at his only disciple. During the past year Zhao Chen studied so hard, most of his time was spent in the study room. Although Fang An encouraged him to play with children his age, Zhao Chen said he was more interested in studying. He had the mentality of a 90s year old, there was no way that Zhao Chen would have the desire to play with 6 year olds. Fang An also didn't take on any missions for the past year as he focused his attention on educating Zhao Chen all the necessary basic knowledge. Zhao Chen was indeed often in the study room even at night. When Fang An wasn't watching him, Zhao Chen copied the heavenly dragon god's scripture into a blank scripture. Zhao Chen also wrote down all the important events that he could remember. Even though Zhao Chen had memories from his previous life about many things that happened in the future but that didn't mean he couldn't forget. Over time after living his new life, he would definitely forget something. That's why Zhao Chen recorded everything and kept it well. Zhao Chen, who had not been able to learn martial arts or internal energy due to his condition chose to study things that he had not paid attention to before. For the sake of killing time, Zhao Chen studied medicine, formation arts, and other things from the books in Bamboo Swords Villa. Chenna, master has something to talk to you about. After the morning painting practice, Fang An suddenly asked Zhao Chen to sit across from him and listen to what Fang An wanted to convey. Chenna, as a sword elder, master must take on a mission from time to time. Basically Fang An explained that the longest sword elder could take a day off was one year. In the near future Fang An was going to take a mission, he advised Zhao Chen not to lax in his training. Master doesn't need to worry, student will not let master down. Zhao Chen replied. In his previous life, Fang An didn't take this long off from his missions because Zhao Chen wanted more alone time. This time Fang An didn't go on a year-long mission because he wanted to educate the talented Zhao Chen. Fang An reminded Zhao Chen not to show his cleverness to others for the time being. Fang An did not explain the reason but Zhao Chen could understand it. In the ruthless martial arts world, someone who was talented didn't always become revered. If you don't have a strong background, these talents will be finished before they develop. At least due to not taking on missions for an entire year. Fang An's condition had gotten better. His coughing wasn't as frequent as before when night fell. The next day, Fang An left Bamboo Sword Villa. Fang An said it would probably be a few weeks before he returned. Finally I can be more free. Zhao Chen let out a long sigh after seeing Fang An's figure disappear. Zhao Chen was indeed happy that Fang An's condition had improved slightly. But in the past year Zhao Chen's space for movement had become so limited because Fang An had been watching him almost all the time. Zhao packed a few things before running to the Bamboo Sword Villa's warehouse. The Bamboo Sword Villa was located in the eastern part of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, it was also attached to the city wall. During the past year whenever Fang An was asleep, Zhao Chen built a secret passage that could lead him out of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. If Zhao Chen wanted to leave the Valley of the Hundred Swords, he had to report it to the Young Swords Pavilion. Zhao Chen was sure that he would not get permission to leave the sect, which was why he had built this secret passage. Zhao Chen carefully inspected the surroundings before exiting the secret passage. He then recovered the secret passage with grass and rocks. In the past year he had never left the Bamboo Sword Villa. Even though Zhao Chen was one of those people who liked to travel so his body felt very itchy for adventure. Finally I can start carrying out my plan. Zhao Chen dashed towards the east, his destination was a large river near the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Because Fang An kept watching over him, 
Zhao Chen couldn't learn many martial arts but he did not forget from time to time to train to strengthen his physique by doing daily activities like drawing water from the well, chopping firewood, cleaning the villa and so on. For children his age, all of these activities include pretty good physical exercise. Zhao Chen also secretly studied lightning, because he didn't yet have inner strength, so Zhao Chen could only learn the most basic lightning technique that all warriors mastered first, namely wind steps. These short legs feel so pitiful. Zhao Chen smiled bitterly when he felt that his running speed using wind step was no different from that of an ordinary adult. One obvious change compared to his previous life was Zhao Chen's physical growth, before he was a skinny youth who looked malnourished and lacking in strength, not at all like an ordinary warrior but this time he had a big appetite and was doing exercises actively so his physique grew to a great extent and strong. Zhao Chen slightly missed his ability to run as fast as the wind, but he also understood that as long as he practiced hard enough he would sooner or later get it back. After running for some time, Zhao Chen could see a flowing river before him. The river that previously brought havoc to the Valley of the Hundred Swords was the Jade Grass River. 5. Chapter 12 Water Ginseng Zhao Chen sat cross-legged by the river to catch his breath, even though he had several times the stamina of someone his age. He was still exhausted after running for a while. Zhao Chen's gaze fell on the jade grass river with mixed feelings. He knew that the river which had light green water would cause the valley of the hundred swords to perish in another 20 years. Zhao Chen looked around and found that there was no one to be seen. He was not too surprised by this situation. The water flowing in the jade grass river had a light green color and was also much colder than normal water. No one dared to drink the water from this river because of its color. In addition, there are no fish that live in this river and strange sounds are often heard from the bottom of the river at night, that's why usually no one comes to it. No one knew the true secret of this river until 15 years later when some of the youths of the Valley of the Hundred Swords decided to have a swimming competition in the Jade Grass River. When one of these youths drowned, it was discovered that the bottom of the Jade Grass River was actually filled with a plant called Water Ginseng. Water ginseng has uses to improve the quality of one's body and strengthen one's bones if consumed regularly. If processed into medicine, water ginseng can also help speed up the formation of inner energy circles for warriors. This discovery made the Valley of the Hundred Swords extremely wealthy but also brought disaster as some dark sect groups wanted to rule over it. Before that happens, I will finish most of this water ginseng. Zhao Chen smiled broadly. He who felt that his breathing had returned to normal then took off the clothes he was wearing. Zhao Chen used his hand to touch the surface of the water of the jade grass river, his whole body shivered when his hand came into contact with it. It turns out that this water is much colder than I thought. Zhao Chen swallowed his saliva, it seemed that his body would not be able to stay in the water for long if he did not use inner strength. Zhao Chen gritted his teeth, he could not return empty handed after going this far. Zhao Chen then gathered some tree branches, along this river indeed many trees grew shady. The collected twigs he then arranged and made into a bonfire, Zhao Chen made his body temperature rise while doing a warm up movement. After regaining his breath, Zhao Chen jumped into the Jade Grass River. The river is neither deep nor has a fast current, it's just that the water is very cold. Within a few breaths, Zhao Chen could feel his body temperature rapidly dropping. I must hurry. Zhao Chen thought as he opened his eyes wide, he tried to reach the bottom of the river as fast as he could. Zhao Chen found a lot of grass at the bottom of the river, without thinking Zhao Chen pulled the grass as hard as he could before swimming back up. Zhao Chen used his all to quickly get out of the river that almost froze him to death. Puah. He said. When he came out of the river, Zhao Chen had also reached his limit of holding his breath. Zhao Chen quickly got out of the river and sat by the bonfire to warm himself up. My life is almost floating. Zhao Chen muttered as he shivered so violently. Even though his body couldn't stop shaking yet, Zhao Chen smiled in satisfaction when he saw that his results weren't that bad. In that one tug of his hand, Zhao Chen managed to get three water ginsengs. The size of the three water ginsengs was indeed small but Zhao Chen guessed that the plants in his hand was at least 10 to 20 years old. The older the water ginseng, the more valuable and the better its properties. Zhao Chen actually wanted to take more ginseng but his body condition didn't allow him to do that, 
For now Zhao Chen had to be content with what he had managed to get. Zhao Chen stored the three water ginsengs in the place he had prepared earlier. After drying off, Zhao Chen put his clothes back on and then intended to return to the Hundred Sword Valley. Hum? To think that there is such a little child in this place. Zhao Chen was surprised when he heard the sound, he raised his alertness and found an old geezer walking towards him. The old geezer wasn't very tall, only around 160 centimeters apart from his long white beard, his belly was also bloated. The grandfather looked to be around 70 years old, Zhao Chen's eyes widened when he saw the clothes that grandfather was wearing. While walking around I saw smoke near the Jade Grass River, usually no one comes to this place, why are you here young man? Asked the old man with a gentle smile. Respect, senior. I. Zhao Chen had difficulty forming his words. Zhao Chen was really surprised to meet grandpa in front of him, even though in his previous life he had a chance to meet face to face but he recognized the figure in front of him very well from the clothes he was wearing and the medallion on grandpa's waist. Zhao Chen was pretty sure the grandfather before him was none other than the chief of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, Jiang Kun who was also nicknamed the King of the Hundred Swords. Jiang Kun is known as a high level warrior who has extraordinary abilities, even though he looks 70 years old, Jiang Kun has actually lived for more than 150 years because of his inner power abilities. It was a few days after Jiang Kun died that the Celt groups came to take over the Jeed Grass River which caused the Valley of the Hundred Swords to perish. It could be said that Jiang Kun was the only pillar that made the Valley of the Hundred Swords respected by the other factions. Jiang Kun looked Zhao Chen up and down, he raised his eyebrows as he read the character of the boy in front of him. Jiang Kun could see Zhao Chen didn't want to answer his question but didn't want to lie to him either. If you don't want to answer, then forget it. It's just that this place isn't a safe place so come with me. Jiang Kun stretched out his hand and touched Zhao Chen's shoulder. Zhao Chen immediately felt his body warm and comfortable. Jiang Kun could see that Zhao Chen was so cold that he used internal energy to make Zhao Chen's body temperature more stable. If you can't say why you're here, you can at least introduce yourself right? Jiang Kun asked. Senior, introduce my name Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen. What a good name. Jiang Kun nodded slowly, then he invited Zhao Chen to come with him. Zhao Chen was in a bit of a dilemma but didn't feel like he could refuse the request so he complied with Jiang Kun's wishes. 6. Chapter 13 Games. Who exactly is this child? He wasn't wearing the Hundred Sword Valley clothes. Jiang Kun watched Zhao Chen who was walking beside him. He could see Zhao Chen had some thoughts but it could be said that his state was quite calm. Zhao Chen was indeed in a dilemma and was trying to get out of this situation. It had never crossed his mind that the first time he came out of the Valley of the Hundred Swords without permission would be to meet the sect leader, Jiang Kun. Jiang Kun brought Zhao Chen to a location that was still on the banks of the Jade Grass River, where there was a stone table and chairs. Zhao Chen had never heard of a place like this before. HM. Looks like I came too early huh? Jiang Kun stroked his long white beard. Zhao Chen then noticed that the table had an engraving that resembled a chessboard. In addition, there are also chess pieces on the table. Can you play chess? Jiang Kun noticed that Zhao Chen was observing the stone table. Junior understands the rules of the game but isn't good at it. No problem, I'll give you 3 points. Play with me. Jiang Kun certainly didn't expect Zhao Chen to be so good at playing considering his age. Zhao Chen nodded then sat down opposite Jiang Kun. As Jiang Kun wished, Zhao Chen placed his four white pieces on the chessboard. Oh, not bad. Jiang Kun raised his eyebrows when he saw the position of the pieces arranged by Zhao Chen, he then started to place his pieces. Jiang Kun laughed at first, praising the steps Zhao Chen had taken but after 15 minutes there was no more laughter or praise Jiang Kun spat out. I made a mistake, let's repeat it. I'll still give you 3 points. Jiang Kun realized that he was in a disadvantageous position, even if he continued, he would not win. Zhao Chen nodded, he then cleared the chess board and started a new game. Zhao Chen again put his 4 pieces first, this time Jiang Kun played seriously with him from the start. 20 minutes later one could see a frown on Jiang Kun's forehead, ahem. It seems I still underestimated you too much. What if we replay and I only give you 1 point? 
Zhao Chen did not refuse, his face was straight and started to clean up their game again. Zhao Chen was actually quite astonished as well, he had a clear mind and was even more considerate than before. His previous life's battle experience could also be used as a strategy in chess games. As I recall I wasn't this smart. Zhao Chen thought as he thought back to the past year when he started studying the sciences that he had not touched in his previous life, his absorption was so good. Zhao Chen had previously thought this was due to his over 90 year old mental state but perhaps there was something else. The third match between Zhao Chen and Jiang Kun this time lasted for almost an hour before Jiang Kun gave up yet again. Young man, you seem to look younger than your actual age don't you? How old are you really? Jiang Kun asked while frowning. At first Jiang Kun thought Zhao Chen was 10 or 11 years old from his stature but after seeing Zhao Chen's chess playing ability, Jiang Kun started to doubt him. Zhao Chen scratched his cheek. Hesitated a bit to answer but finally said that he was 6 years old now. Ugh. Jiang Kun's eyes widened and he choked on his own breath when he heard Zhao Chen's reply, you don't lie to your elders. Jiang Kun found it hard to accept that Zhao Chen was not only not younger than his actual age but even older than his actual age. Junior isn't lying, Junior is really 6 years old. Zhao Chen replied with an awkward smile. Jiang Kun stared into Zhao Chen's eyes intently. He could see that the boy before him was not lying. For Jiang Kun to lose at chess to a child who wasn't even 20 years old, it was embarrassing, especially when Zhao Chen was actually 6 years old. Once again. This time we are playing fair. Jiang Kun's tone rose slightly, he felt that his pride was at stake this time. Zhao Chen coughed lightly, as he recalled Jiang Kun was famous for being calm in all situations but it seemed the stories he had heard in his previous life weren't completely true. An hour later, Jiang Kun covered his face with both hands. Jiang Kun could feel his cheeks burning from the embarrassment he had suffered, losing four times in a row against a brat like Zhao Chen had hurt his pride. Senior, if you don't want to play anymore, may I take my leave? Soon it will be dark. Zhao Chen looked at the sun that was almost setting. Jiang Kun then woke up from his reverie, he also just remembered that he actually came to play with a friend but it seems the person he was waiting for couldn't come today. Where do you live? It's getting dark, let me take you home. Jiang Kun's face looked calm again, as if nothing had happened before. Zhao Chen refused, explaining that he could go home alone. Jiang Kun stared at him for a long time before saying, I will wait for you here every day, we will play again. Jiang Kun obviously didn't want this situation to end in his side losing 4 times. Zhao Chen scratched his head before nodding slowly and saying goodbye. After making sure Jiang Kun didn't follow him, Zhao Chen started to use his wind step art to return to the Valley of the Hundred Swords. This kid can use lightning technique. Jiang Kun could still see Zhao Chen quite clearly despite being at a distance. Jiang Kun was actually in awe of Zhao Chen's intelligence, he had hoped that the boy was from the Valley of the Hundred Swords but the direction Zhao Chen was headed was not his sect's entrance. Other than the Valley of the Hundred Swords there is only the House of the Jade Furnace but there is no way this kid came from there. Jiang Kun was actually planning to play chess with the sect master of the Jade Furnace house, the two sects were friendly to each other and the sects weren't that far apart but if it was reached by ordinary human ability it would take 1 to 2 days of travel. Jiang Kun could only shake his head slowly and hope for Zhao Chen to reappear tomorrow, he intended to drag Zhao Chen into the Valley of the Hundred Swords if Zhao Chen wasn't already part of any sect. 5. Chapter 14 Bet. Zhao Chen returned to Bamboo Sword Villa with a restless heart, worried that he had made a big mistake by meeting Jiang Kun today. Every action of mine can change history, if I'm not careful then the future that happens will be very different from the one I've experienced before. Zhao Chen thought hard as he looked at the three water ginsengs in front of him. One of the reasons Zhao Chen had reduced contact with the other people from the Valley of the Hundred Swords over the past year was that he didn't want to change things too much to the point where things didn't go according to his memories. For Zhao Chen the safest way was to make himself stronger as fast as he could. If Zhao Chen had high martial arts abilities then whatever happened in the future would not be a problem for him. Now he's worried that his desire to monopolize water ginseng is hampered by his meeting with Jiang Kun. There's no point in me thinking about all that now, I'd better give this water ginseng a try. 
Feeling unable to find a solution in the near future, Zhao Chen chose to cook the smallest and youngest ginseng among the three he managed to harvest. These three ginsengs were over 10 years old. If Zhao Chen consumed them directly then his body might not be able to receive all of these nutrients so he decided to cook the water ginseng by boiling it. The efficacy of water ginseng cooked in this way was reduced by 3 to 40 percent. It was a pity but Zhao Chen had no other choice. Zhao Chen consumed the ginseng in one gulp before sitting cross-legged and beginning to practice according to the heavenly dragon god's scripture. Not long after he swallowed the water ginseng, Zhao Chen's stomach went cold while his head felt hot. Zhao Chen's face turned red and there was a bit of white smoke coming out of his head. The process lasted for several hours and Zhao Chen had to be alert every second. When all of the water ginseng's nutrients were absorbed, Zhao Chen let out a cold breath from his mouth. Zhao Chen got up from his seat and made a few movements. He then chuckled in admiration after feeling the change in his body. To think that water ginseng has this kind of efficacy, no wonder so many wanted jade grass river in my previous life. It was true that the quality of Zhao Chen's bones was still yellow wolf bones but his physical strength had increased quite a lot as well as the muscles of his body had become more vigorous, which definitely wasn't something that could be achieved with an average month or two of training. Zhao Chen then pondered, after tasting the efficacy of this water ginseng he was even more certain that he would need the plant to change his fate in this life. There is no other choice, I will find a way to manage the sect leader. Zhao Chen scratched his head. Zhao Chen then made preparations before leaving the Valley of the Hundred Swords again via the secret passage he had made. This time Zhao Chen's journey was slightly shorter than before, after consuming the water ginseng. His stamina and running speed increased. Just as before Zhao Chen had made a bonfire, only then did he enter the Jade Grass River. A while later Zhao Chen came out of the river with two water ginsengs in his hands while his body was so cold. Even though my physical strength has increased, my tolerance for cold hasn't changed. Zhao Chen muttered while shivering violently. Zhao Chen stored the two ginsengs he managed to get before starting to warm himself in front of the bonfire. You showed up early today. Not long after Zhao Chen put his clothes back on, Jiang Kun appeared in front of him looking astonished. Obviously Jiang Kun was wondering what exactly Zhao Chen was doing on the banks of the Jade Grass River. Zhao Chen only smiled awkwardly and then saluted him. Jiang Kun then led Zhao Chen to the stone table that the two of them had come to play chess yesterday. This time the table was not empty but another elder was sitting on one of the stone chairs. Zhao Chen recognized the clothes the old man was wearing as robes from the Jade Furnace House, a sect that concentrated on training in medicine. I thought you wouldn't come today either. Jiang Kun smiled faintly at the old man. Brother Jiang, last night I suddenly had an important guest so I couldn't keep our appointment. The grandfather gave an explanation but did not look guilty. Grandfather's attention then turned to Zhao Chen who was standing beside Jiang Kun. Who did you bring this? Don't tell me this is your descendant, you two have absolutely nothing in common. Old fart wang, today it seems I have to teach you a lesson. Jiang Kun rolled up his sleeves, he naturally understood what those words meant. What lesson do you mean? I think I still won two rounds from you so far. Grandpa said with a chuckle. Zhao Chen tried not to show any expression, but he could guess the identity of a grandpa in front of him. There was only one person from the Jade Furnace Mansion who could act this way towards Jiang Kun, and that was the Jade Furnace House's sect leader, Wang Dan. Chenna, it seems I have to postpone the game with you, watch us play first. Jiang Kun whispered to Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen couldn't help but obey, he watched the two elders begin to compete in chess skills. Zhao Chen was watching the match from the side of the table. Jiang Kun and Wang Dan's playing ability could be said to be evenly matched. Defeat could result from a single misstep and in this round, it was Jiang Kun who made the mistake. After 3 years I'm finally back 3 wins. Wang Dan laughed heartily without caring about Jiang Kun's body shaking violently. Jiang Kun immediately regained his composure within a few breaths, today my state of mind is not good due to the sect's numerous matters therefore you were lucky enough to win over me. Old Far Jiang, what nonsense are you saying? Every time you lose. You always have the same excuse. Wang Dan chuckled. Jiang Kun snorted in annoyance as he realized Wang Dan was going all out to make fun of him, 
This time it's really true. With your game so bad today even Chenna could beat you. Jiang Kun patted Zhao Chen on the shoulder, making him startled. Wang Dan raised his eyebrows. He felt that Jiang Kun had lost his mind because he lost to him. According to Wang Dan, it was impossible for Zhao Chen to beat him in a game of chess. Old fart it seems that your defeat this time is indeed related to your troubled mind. Wang Dan tried to sound serious as he said that but it was obvious that he was holding back a laugh. Oh, old fart Wang if you are so confident how about we make a bet? Jiang Kun's smile widened rapidly. 5. Chapter 15 Old Fox. Bet? Old fart, you really want to gamble with this brat? Wang Dan pointed at Zhao Chen who now had a confused face. Jiang Kun didn't answer immediately but took out a small box. When he opened it, he saw a plant resembling ginseng but blood red. 200 year old blood ginseng, old fart Wang do you dare to gamble? Jiang Kun asked in a challenging tone. Wang Dan frowned, while Zhao Chen was shocked because both of them knew that the blood ginseng that Jiang Kun secreted was so precious. Wang Dan looked at Zhao Chen for a moment before looking back at Jiang Kun. Old fart, are you sure you want to bet this big? This time Wang Dan's tone changed a lot. He really thought that Jiang Kun's mental state was disturbed due to his defeat just now. If you don't dare to fight then consider me a one-time win, so you're only two wins ahead of me. Wang Dan's brows trembled when he heard Jiang Kun's words. Now he feels that Jiang Kun just wants to manipulate his mind. Good. If you're willing to bet, why not me? Wang Dan then took out something from his robe, a small box containing a small silver ball, silver grass pill. Its value is not inferior to your blood ginseng right? Jiang Kun nodded in satisfaction. If blood ginseng had the efficacy of strengthening a warrior's bones and blood then silver grass pill could cure 100 kinds of poisons when used as an antidote or it could increase one's inner strength by 3 to 5 circles. Agree. Jiang Kun then pulled Zhao Chen and whispered to him, Chenna, you must win this match. I will reward you if you win. Zhao Chen scratched his cheek. He did not expect to be involved in such a situation. After all, Jiang Kun was the sect master that Zhao Chen was under so following his orders in this condition was practically an obligation. I'm not going to make fun of a kid like you, I'll give you 5 points. Wang Dan felt that it was impossible for Zhao Chen to win over him. In fact, competing with Zhao Chen had already lowered his self esteem, so Wang Dan felt the need to lose 5 points. Jiang Kun cheered inside. Before when he lost by just 3 points, Zhao Chen had managed to knock him out without a fight. Jiang Kun could already see the silver grass pill in his hand. Sure enough in 10 minutes, Wang Dan's calm face was now covered with cold sweat after seeing Zhao Chen's playing ability. Wang Dan finally could only look at Jiang Kun and cursed in his heart. This old fox framed me. Wang Dan thought furiously. Wang Dan couldn't put down his piece for 2 minutes indicating that he had already lost his step. Jiang Kun with a big smile stretched out his hand, asking for the result of their bet. Wait a minute. Wang Dan started to try to reason, he realized that he had already lost to Zhao Chen. What? Don't tell me you want to go back on your word? Jiang Kun raised his eyebrows. Old fart. You clearly trapped me here. If you want to show off that the Valley of the Hundred Swords has a talented disciple, this is not the way. Wang Dan said as he gritted his teeth. The two started arguing while Zhao Chen cleaned up the chessboard in front of him. Zhao Chen secretly glanced at the two. He was actually a little amazed that Wang Dan and Jiang Kun were in fact so different from the stories he had heard in his previous life. One thing was certain. Zhao Chen could see the two of them were close friends in their own way. Old fart let's gamble again. Wang Dan took out a small bottle this time. 10 grams of galaxy tea. Jiang Kun's eyes widened, Zhao Chen also immediately looked at the bottle in Wang Dan's hand. Galaxy tea is a type of tea that is very valuable and has the effect of making the drinker's mind much clearer so that he can learn any knowledge more quickly. 10 grams was enough for 10 cups, considering it was so expensive as well as extremely rare, Jiang Kun had to gamble with a 200 year old blood ginseng and the silver grass pill he had just obtained. Jiang Kun is facing a dead end in one of the sciences he is studying. He is sure that if he gets the efficacy of this tea, he will experience progress in that science. Zhao Chen sighed softly, 
He had not expected to be involved in such a serious gamble. Zhao Chen suddenly felt a weight fall on his shoulders, considering whether he won or lost, there would be some who might be offended by his attitude. Wang Dan no longer looked down on Zhao Chen, he asked him to play fair and use all his skills from the start. Zhao Chen could feel that Wang Dan's level of concentration in the second game was completely different. No one made a sound throughout the game even when breathing they did it slowly. Zhang Kun, who was the only spectator, also tensed up seeing the steps taken by Zhao Chen and Wang Dan. Zhao Chen realized that even though the blood ginseng was 200 years old, silver grass peel and galaxy tea were expensive items, they were nothing special for someone like Wang Dan or Zhang Kun. Actually the main problem is the pride that is at stake. The longer the game lasts, the longer it takes Wang Dan to move especially after one hour. Wang Dan needs at least 3 minutes to place his pieces. Entering the third hour, Wang Dan took a deep breath before finally raising his hand. In the end, even though he used all his abilities, Wang Dan couldn't win against Zhao Chen, but that didn't mean that Zhao Chen won easily. Zhao Chen's head also ached and his concentration was so drained. Wang Dan basically mastered the art of playing chess more than Zhang Kun, so he was a more difficult opponent to face. Jiang Kun smiled so broadly that it could even be said to be one of the biggest smiles he had ever graced his face. In contrast to Wang Dan, whose expression was so upset and felt his pride was hurt, especially after hearing from Jiang Kun that Zhao Chen was actually 6 years old. Senior, it is already getting dark. I beg your pardon. Even though he only played twice, the second game with Wang Dan lasted so long. Jiang Kun restrained Zhao Chen from not giving a gift to Zhao Chen who had helped him win two bets. It's just that Zhao Chen refused to accept the reward, he could guess Jiang Kun intended to take him as a disciple but and Zhao Chen's heart only fang and was his master so he had no interest in being under Jiang Kun's tutelage. Jiang Kun's expression turned crumpled upon learning of Zhao Chen's refusal while Wang Dan's eyes suddenly lit up as he looked at Zhao Chen. 4. Chapter 16 Black Wolf Bone Turns out he isn't a member of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Old Frog you've gone too far this time. One of Wang Dan's frustrations was because he felt jealous of Jiang Kun who had a son as smart and special as Zhao Chen in his sect. When he found out that Zhao Chen didn't seem to have any relationship with Jiang Kun, he immediately intended to recruit Zhao Chen into the Jade Furnace House. Jiang Kun noticed the light in Wang Dan's eyes change as well as the intention behind it. Jiang Kun then quickly said to Zhao Chen, in that case, go home Chenna, we will talk about this some other time. Zhao Chen nodded slowly before saying goodbye to the two, Wang Dan intended to stop Zhao Chen but Jiang Kun blocked him. If I can't recruit him, don't expect the Jade Furnace House to be able to get him. Jiang Kun thought as he grinned widely. At least Jiang Kun knew Zhao Chen better than Wang Dan and also knew Zhao Chen lived in the vicinity of the Valley of the Hundred Swords so he thought he still had a chance to recruit Zhao Chen in the future. Zhao Chen could hear Jiang Kun and Wang Dan arguing, both of them realized that although Zhao Chen's martial talent was nothing special but the intelligence that Zhao Chen had from such a young age would definitely help make up for his shortcomings in martial arts a lot. Is this going to be something good or bad? Zhao Chen shook his head slowly without slowing down his pace. He realized that the two important figures were attracted to his abilities but Zhao Chen couldn't feel that this was a good thing for now. Zhao Chen returned to Bamboo Sword Villa. After taking care of the place and filling his stomach, Zhao Chen again consumed another water ginseng. I can feel my physical and skeletal qualities are improving again. This water ginseng is truly efficacious. Zhao Chen chuckled in admiration after making a few moves. Zhao Chen looked at the remaining three ginsengs. Even though he consumed a ginseng that lost some of its properties due to boiling, he didn't expect that it would still have such an impact on its development. Zhao Chen then decided to finish off those three water ginsengs before going out to harvest more at the Jade Grass River. The main reason for not having too many meetings with Jiang Kun would be that the secret about the water ginseng would be discovered much earlier. The next three days Zhao Chen remained in the Bamboo Sword Villa and consumed one ginseng every day. Every ginseng he consumed equaled the gains gained from one or two months of physical exercise. 
Zhao Chen's physical strength after consuming five water ginsengs had become so much different that even Zhao Chen was sure that if he could consume another ten water ginsengs of the same caliber as before, he would be able to raise the quality of his bones from a yellow wolf bone to a black wolf bone. Even though Zhao Chen had previously thought that relying on the knowledge from the heavenly dragon god scripture, even if it would take him at least one or two years to achieve it, now as long as Zhao Chen had enough water ginseng, he could achieve it in less than two weeks. Zhao Chen headed back to the Jade Grass River after running out of ginseng, as usual he made a bonfire first before diving into the river. This time with his new strength, Zhao Chen found it easier to obtain water ginseng. Zhao Chen was even quite confident in his physical strength, as long as he dried off for a moment then he could enter the river again to harvest more water ginseng. On that day, Zhao Chen managed to obtain 5 water ginsengs. Sec leader is out of sight today, naturally he is, there's no way he can freely play chess with a position he holds every day. Zhao Chen breathed a sigh of relief when he saw no sign of Jiang Kun's presence. Zhao Chen then returned to the bamboo sword villa and repeated the training process. Zhao Chen only hoped that by the time Fang and returned from his mission, Zhao Chen would already be able to reach the quality of the black wolf bone. Another five days passed. Zhao Chen practiced using the water ginseng every day. Zhao Chen felt that it would be better for him to start consuming the water ginseng directly once it reached the black wolf bone, by then his body should be able to hold all the nutrients contained in the ginseng. Zhao Chen returned to the Jade Grass River after running out of water ginseng, on this trip he truly felt a difference compared to the first time he left the Valley of the Hundred Swords. His footsteps were much quicker, almost double what they were before and his stamina had also increased greatly. On this trip, Zhao Chen obtained 8 water ginsengs in 2 dives. These ginsengs are enough to help me reach the black wolf bone. Zhao Chen muttered while shivering. Over the next few days Zhao Chen kept coming to Jade Grass River to harvest water ginseng. He wanted to gather enough supplies since he wouldn't be able to come here as long as Fang and was in Bamboo Sword Villa. Luckily, during those few days Zhao Chen did not see Jiang Kun and so was able to continue harvesting the water ginseng without a hitch. Unfortunately, the water ginseng had no use for recovering internal injuries otherwise Zhao Chen would have wanted to give it to Fang and as well. Zhao Chen thought for a while that he shouldn't tell Fang and the whereabouts of the water ginseng given his master's character. It was not impossible that Fang and would want this water ginseng to be of use to all the inhabitants of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Zhao Chen often felt that his master's kindness had crossed the line, perhaps because Fang and was still quite young. One night after finishing processing all the nutrients contained in the water ginseng he had consumed, Zhao Chen's entire body let out a loud sound that sounded like bones cracking. Finally I reached the black wolf bone. Zhao Chen could feel a huge change in his body, as if he had been reborn. With the quality of this new bone, his martial talent rose for the better. Of course the quality of the black wolf bone was something that was very common in the martial world but for a 6 year old child to possess it could only come from those of a warrior family lineage. Zhao Chen smiled as he looked at the water ginseng stock he had gathered the past few days. Zhao Chen was sure that all the ginseng was enough to allow him to obtain the wind wolf bone in no time. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 17 Warrior Level. Master, is there something wrong? Zhao Chen asked with an innocent face even though he knew why Fang En looked confused at him. A few hours ago after returning from his mission, the first thing Fang En did upon arriving at Bamboo Sword Villa was check Zhao Chen's progress. Over the past year, according to Fang En's observations, Zhao Chen had really enjoyed studying. Zhao Chen even chose not to associate with children his age and spent most of his time in the study room so Fang An was worried that Zhao Chen actually had no interest in martial arts. Fang An had indeed asked Zhao Chen to start training physically recently to prepare Zhao Chen to learn martial arts at the age of 8. Fang An had thought that when he went out on missions, Zhao Chen would rather spend his time reading books than training his physique. In fact not only did Zhao Chen's physical strength improve greatly but the quality of his bones also increased at a rate Fang and couldn't fathom. Does Chen really have high talent as a warrior only that he needs more practice to unleash his potential? 
thought Fang An. If you look at the quality of Zhao Chen's bones now, there is no reason for Fang An to delay Zhao Chen's martial arts training until he is 8 years old. With his position as Sword Elder, Fang An could apply for Zhao Chen to practice before the age of 8 despite being a disciple who came from outside the sect. Fang An only had one disciple and had made great contributions to the Valley of the Hundred Swords over the past few years so this shouldn't be a difficult request considering that Fang An had never asked for anything like this before. Chenna, if you train hard there seems to be a possibility of you becoming an expert level warrior before turning 30. Fang An finally spoke after a long silence. Expert level warrior? Zhao Chen actually understood Fang An's meaning but he still had to ask because he shouldn't have known this information. Fang An nodded slowly before starting to explain that in the martial world, warriors were divided into classes based on their abilities. A person can be considered as a warrior if he masters one type of martial arts and has the strength capable of defeating five healthy adult men. Such a warrior is called a third class warrior. When a warrior masters the art of lightening the body which allows him to jump as high as 5 meters and has the ability to face 3 to 5 third class warriors, he will be called a second class warrior. If one mastered several martial arts, had higher lightness skills and possessed inner strength of 10 circles then he could be called a first class warrior. The dozen or so people who had tried to attack Lin Fan at the inn were all third and second grade warriors combined. Expert level warrior were the next class from level 1 warriors. There were many conditions that made one said to be an expert level warrior, but one main condition was that one had to be within the 60 circles of at least to become an expert warrior. One out of a hundred skilled warriors in the martial world would be known as a titled warrior, that meant they were skilled warriors who were recognized for their abilities in the martial world. Fangan, for example, was one of the titled warriors because he was known as the Jade Faced Swordsman. In a large sect like the Valley of the Hundred Swords that had around 10,000 warriors within it even less than 500 people reached the level of a master warrior but quite a number among these master warriors became titled warriors. Zhao Chen knew that Fang An was born with extraordinary martial talent because Fang An was born with a young tiger bone quality physique. Coupled with the various resources his family had, Fang An managed to become a master warrior at the age of 16 despite his internal injuries and finally became a sword elder at the age of 17. Talent like Fang An was actually rare even in big sects, it was just that his talent was hidden and escaped the attention of an important figure like Jiang Kun because of Fang An's character who preferred to be modest and hide his abilities. Master, I prefer to study for now. It won't be too late if I study martial arts in a few more years. Zhao Chen didn't want to rush into learning martial arts after all he was still re-practicing some of the martial arts he had learned in his previous life. For Zhao Chen the most important thing right now was improving the quality of his bones so he could practice the heavenly dragon god's scripture to the fullest. Fang An actually caught something different from Zhao Chen's answer when he wanted to try to persuade Zhao Chen to start practicing, a sec member came to Bamboo Sword Villa. Elder Fang. Sect master requests that all of the sword elders gather in the main hall right away. Said the sect member in a hurry, finished saying so he immediately said goodbye because he had to inform the other elders. Fang and could tell something serious was going on, Chenna, we will continue this conversation later when I get back. After saying that Fang and left for the main hall while Zhao Chen stayed behind in the bamboo sword villa. Zhao Chen's expression changed slightly after Fang and left bamboo sword villa. He went to the secret room to open his notebook. I see, it's no wonder I didn't meet sect leader Jiang during the recent water ginseng harvest. Zhao Chen frowned. According to his records, it should have been around this time that a major event had occurred, namely a struggle for the throne between the princes. This political war that occurs every few tens of years always involves the inhabitants of the martial world. Zhao Chen didn't really remember the details of everything that happened because when it all happened in his previous life, he didn't really understand much about the world. Zhao Chen only remembered Fang and going to the capital for quite a long time, leaving Zhao Chen in the Young Sword Pavilion to study under Yulian. Fang and only returned to Bamboo Sword Villa in the middle of the night, he thought Zhao Chen was already asleep so did not call him to continue their conversation. Coughing sounds were heard from time to time. Zhao Chen knew that Fang and did not sleep that night because he was thinking about many things. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, 
feel free visit patreon.com miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 18 Central Mainland Continent. Chenna, you're getting better at cooking. Fangna smiled broadly as he saw the breakfast Zhao Chen made, using the simple ingredients at hand. Zhao Chen made dishes that were full of flavor and delicious. Indeed as far as Fangan could see, the kitchen was Zhao Chen's second favorite place to spend his time. Master is praising too much. Zhao Chen smiled widely, he really wanted Fangan to be able to enjoy more good food while in the sect. Zhao Chen knew that Fangan was very simple in many ways including food, so he didn't enjoy life well all his life. Chen there is something master wants to tell you. It seems that your practice really has to be postponed. After breakfast Fangan explained that he would be leaving the Valley of the Hundred Swords in two days for the capital and be there for some time. Fangan did not explain that it was related to the struggle for the throne between the princes because he thought that Zhao Chen could not understand it yet. Fangan then also explained about the land they lived in. This world we live in is known as the Central Mainland Continent. There are three empires and seven countries that share the continent. Fangan explained that every empire and country had their own policies and rules, some were the same and some were different. The existence of government aims to ensure that the people who live in it get a good and orderly life. The three empires controlled most of the landmass, while the seven countries had a much smaller area than each empire but still held great power when compared to a sect. The three empires were the Tang Empire, Han Empire and Wei Empire. The Valley of the Hundred Swords itself is located in the Han Empire, which is the smallest of the three empires. The martial world of every empire and country also stands on its own, but the martial world is never separated from the government, especially those who come from the white flow. The white sects always support the government where they exist because these sects also need the military strength of the local governments to survive. The martial arts world in any empire and country has something in common, that is, at least 70% of the martial world members belong to black or heretical sects. It can't be controlled if basically when humans have great power they want to prioritize their personal desires. Master will leave some items that will help you strengthen your body. Fangan then took out several small wooden boxes as well as a piece of paper. You should consume them according to this note. Zhao Chen was a little surprised. All that Fangan gave him were precious herbs and medicines. Even though the properties of these items are far less than water ginseng, they are still of great value to many warriors, especially when used on a six-year-old child like him. Senior Lin's three pills are still being kept by master because it isn't time for you to consume them yet, they will be useful when you start cultivating inner strength. Fangan's message. Fangan thought it was better to give the resources that helped Zhao Chen's physical development and stamina first. Actually this action of Fangan worried Zhao Chen. In his previous life Master Fang always lived a simple life because all his earnings from completing missions as well as his family's inheritance he used to treat his internal injuries. To obtain all of this, he must have used his own medical expenses. Zhao Chen was so touched by Fang An's action that he wanted to tell Fang An that he had a lot of water ginseng. If Zhao Chen could sell the water ginseng he had, Fang An would no longer have to worry about medical expenses and might even be able to buy the medicine that had the effect of completely healing Fang An's internal injuries. Why are you crying Chenna? Fang An was startled when he saw Zhao Chen start to shed tears. This disciples will not disappoint master. Zhao Chen bowed to Fang and before accepting all the boxes. No need to feel that way, all these resources are nothing special. Fang and smiled gently, feeling proud that his disciple was so filial. Zhao Chen did not answer Fang and, he only resolved in his heart, Master Fang, I hope Master can be patient for a few more years. Disciple promises to definitely heal Master completely. Zhao Chen only dared to open up more after having enough ability to protect himself. Zhao Chen also reminded Fang An to be careful while he was there. I'm only going to be gone for a while, with the sect master around, I'm practically just taking a look. Fang An chuckled before explaining Jiang Kun was a very powerful being. A hundred people like Fang An were no match for Jiang Kun so there was nothing for Zhao Chen to worry about. Zhao Chen knew that this was not entirely true. The struggle for the throne between the princes of the Han Empire this time was different from usual because one of the princes who wanted to become emperor had the backing of the black sect. 
As far back as Zhao Chen could remember, Emperor Han had invited four sect masters like Jiang Kun to stop the prince's ambitions. Jiang Kun will stay in the capital for three years until a new emperor is elected from one of the princes other than the prince who conspires with the black cult. Jiang Kun brought ten sword elders with him who would switch places every few months. Over the next three years all important decisions of the Valley of the Hundred Swords fell into Wang Ergao's hands. That's why Zhao Chen was very careful and hid his talent considering that Wang Ergao always made things difficult for Fang An. If nothing changes then I have something to prepare for something that will happen in a few months time. Zhao Chen started to think about his training to get stronger as soon as possible. Fang An spent the next two days with more rest while telling Zhao Chen many things about the martial world. It was clear that Fang An hoped that his story would increase Zhao Chen's desire to learn martial arts. You. How did you get here? On the day of departure, Jiang Kun came to Bamboo Sword Villa to pick up Fang An. Jiang Kun didn't expect to see Zhao Chen sweeping the courtyard. Zhao Chen was equally shocked to see Jiang Kun. He rushed over to Jiang Kun. Sect Master, please don't tell Master Fang about our previous meeting. Zhao Chen made a pitiful face. Fang An was still packing his things so he didn't know Jiang Kun's reaction when he saw Zhao Chen. Jiang Kun actually had a lot to say to Zhao Chen, but seeing that Zhao Chen belonged to the Valley of the Hundred Swords and even became the disciple of the most talented person in the history of the sect, Jiang Kun felt that he could accept Zhao Chen's request for the time being. Young man, you owe me an explanation the next time I return from the capital. Jiang Kun said as he pinched Zhao Chen's cheek lightly. Zhao Chen only smiled awkwardly. Jiang Kun obviously didn't realize that this journey of his would span three whole years. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 19 Important Guest. Several months had passed since Fang and left the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Zhao Chen had spent the time diligently training to increase his physical strength. Apart from going to harvest water ginseng at the Jade Grass River, Zhao Chen had never left the Bamboo Sword Villa. Obtaining the young tiger bone in a few months seems impossible even with the heavenly dragon god's scripture. Zhao Chen let out a long sigh after sitting cross-legged for several hours cultivating the nutrients from the water ginseng. Two months after Fang and left, Zhao Chen had managed to obtain the wind wolf bone and had also begun to consume the water ginseng directly. Zhao Chen thought that with Fang An's resources and endless supply of water ginseng, he could reach young tiger bone in less than a year. If I think about it this is actually normal, before it took me over 50 years to reach the wind wolf bone and when I obtained the heavenly dragon god scripture, it took 5 years with the resources I accumulated over tens of years to reach the iron tiger bone as well. Zhao Chen muttered under his breath. When he first encountered the heavenly dragon god scripture, the quality of the bone that Zhao Chen possessed was indeed that of a wind wolf bone despite having trained his physique for more than 50 years. The resources Zhao Chen used to reach iron tiger bone in 5 years with the heavenly dragon god's scripture also matched in quality with the water ginseng he was consuming now. Zhao Chen estimated that with his current training speed, as long as he had enough water ginseng, he could reach iron tiger bone by 10 years of age at the latest. What's more. Ginseng water not only improves the quality of his bones but also his physical strength and stamina. Now Zhao Chen with his physical strength alone could be said to be a third grade warrior, as long as he practiced the lightning skill better in a while then he could match up to a second class warrior before he turned 7 years old. In the history of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, only Fang An could reach the strength of a second class warrior before the age of 10. Fang An's record was likely to be broken by Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen also practiced an empty-handed martial art called Wolf Fist. This move could be considered a common move and it was indeed in the Bamboo Sword Villa's library so Fang An would not suspect anything when he saw Zhao Chen master it. For Zhao Chen, mastering the Wolf Fist and Wind Step for a child of his age was already an extraordinary feat considering his background and the physical strength he possessed was so great. Zhao Chen was planning to learn advanced arts when he already had a large amount of profound energy. While sweeping the courtyard of Bamboo Sword Villa, Zhao Chen could see people peeking at the gate from time to time. Indeed, 
It was only a few months since Zhao Chen's two-year anniversary of being a part of the Valley of the Hundred Swords that quite a lot of people had heard of him. Not something surprising considering that Fang An was one of the most well-known figures within the Valley of the Hundred Swords. The thing that made Zhao Chen famous was not that he was Fang An's only disciple but that since entering the Bamboo Sword Villa, no one had ever seen him leave the premises once. Zhao Chen also never got along with anyone including kids his age. Indeed, for Zhao Chen there was no need to leave Bamboo Sword Villa because every month there would be someone delivering the necessities of life such as rice and others. Not to mention that many young girls gifted Fang and something, Zhao Chen would accept all of it when Fang and was not in Bamboo Sword Villa. Today there were more girls hanging around the gates than usual, it seems master is going home. Zhao Chen didn't need to look up information about Fang and's return. Every time his master came back from a mission there would be lots of girls gathered at the villa's gate. Bamboo Sword, looking forward to greeting Fang An. Sure enough, that afternoon Fang An arrived at Bamboo Sword Villa. Welcome master. Zhao Chen greeted Fang An with a big smile. Chenna, you're taller than I remember. Even though Fang An was wearing a mask, Zhao Chen could see Fang An was exhausted from the way he smiled. Zhao Chen didn't say much. He took Fang An inside to rest. Zhao Chen then brought some hot food to recover his stamina. He was sure that Fang An needed it after his long journey. Fang An looked Zhao Chen up and down. He was sure that Zhao Chen had grown back in height though not by much. Chen uh, come let master check your condition. Fang An could still remember how surprising Zhao Chen's progress had been during his mission for about two weeks so Fang An was quite curious about Zhao Chen's progress over the past few months. After inspecting Zhao Chen's body, Fang An couldn't help but remain silent for a long time before chuckling in admiration. Fang An was completely speechless. He had not expected that Zhao Chen's bone quality had increased so much as his disciple's physical strength. Fang An was sure that Zhao Chen not only possessed the abilities of a third-class warrior but was already approaching the strength of a second-class warrior. Even though Fang An wasn't this strong at Zhao Chen's age. Unfortunately sect master Jiang can't come back with me this time. I think only he is worthy of educating Chenna. Fang An was deep in thought, he really didn't think he was worthy enough to be Zhao Chen's master after seeing his horrible development. Zhao Chen could guess Fang An's thoughts so he changed the subject. Master, why is the street sounding busier than usual? Ah, you notice that? Fang An then explained he and several other sword elders were returning home to escort the Han Imperial family who wished to pay a visit to the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Currently most of the members of the Valley of the Hundred Swords were preparing to welcome this important guest. Fang An didn't really like this kind of activity so chose to go straight back to Bamboo Sword Villa. After all he was sure his place would not become a tourist destination for the Imperial family. Zhao Chen nodded slowly. Everything was according to his memory and if that was true then there was an incident he had to stop in the near future. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 20 in Zuhua. The Valley of the Hundred Swords became more alive than usual. The entire street began to be filled with decorations as if there was going to be a big celebration. Not a few also cleaned the streets and made the valley neater than usual. All of this happened because a party of around 200 people entered the Valley of the Hundred Swords. The clothes worn indicated that this party was from the Han Imperial capital who was escorting an important guest. Indeed, some of the horse-drawn carriages in the group looked so luxurious and were pulled by the mighty choice horses. Inside the most luxurious carriage, there was a man in his 30s with a woman in her 20s and a little girl who looked to be 5 or 6 years old. Mother, look at the many children my age in this place. The little girl peeked from the window and saw that there were many people looking at their carriages, among them were also children from the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Zuxu. In front of your father you should be. A 20s year old woman was about to rebuke the little girl but was stopped by a 30s year old man. Let Zuxu act as she wants. The man smiled warmly but his eyes looked at the little girl with sadness. This man who had a charismatic face was none other than Yin Song, the crown prince of the Han Empire. The woman who was in her twenties who had a motherly face beside her was Mu Rong's wife while the little girl with them was the daughter of the two, Yin Zuhua. 
Yinzuha had skin as white as snow like her mother, hair and eyes were perfectly black. Even though she was only 5 years old, everyone could already see that Zuha would become a very charming girl when she grew up. Yin Zuhua was also the favored granddaughter of the Han Emperor and Yin Song's coming all the way to the Valley of the Hundred Swords had indeed something to do with this little girl. Yin Zuhua was born in the winter when the snow flowers were blooming, that's why Emperor Han gave her the name Zuhua. The Han Emperor made Zuhua his favorite grandson because he dreamed that on the night of the girl's birth, a goddess from the moon had been reborn into the Han Imperial family. There were indeed some features about Zuhua, for example, that she didn't cry when she was born. Even though the midwife had patted her red bottom to make her cry, Zuha didn't budge. Zuhua could also walk from the age of 2 and speak fluently by the age of 3. Everyone in the imperial family thought a genius had been born, and the Han Emperor also increasingly believed Zuhua was the reincarnation of a goddess. All was going well until when he was 4 years old, Zuha accidentally broke a bone in one of the maids he was playing with. It was only then that Zuha realized that he had inhuman strength. Famous physicians from all over the Han Empire were brought in to see Zuha's condition. Not a few were injured while examining the little girl. Even one of the senior physicians who tried to examine Zuhua using a silver needle ended up breaking several ribs due to Zuha's kick, which was in pain with the needle. Not a single physician was able to find the reason why Zuhua had such great power. Some people even started saying that Zuhua was an incarnate demon but the Han Emperor still kept him as his favorite grandson. Realizing that traditional healers couldn't do much, the Han Emperor finally invited experts from the martial world. One of these experts finally recognized Zuhua's condition. The experts said Zuhua possessed a special type of body called the God of War body that could only be found in the legends of the martial world. If a baby boy was born with this body then he would definitely become the number one champion in the martial world but if it appeared in this baby girl it would be nothing but a curse. Princess Zuha's body will continue to grow stronger with age, if she doesn't find a skill that allows her to control that power then her body won't be able to become a vessel for that much power. The expert reckoned Zuha would not be able to get past the age of 16. The skill to control the war god body was still possible for men but it would not be able to be learned by women because male and female body shapes were so different including how to train the flow of their power. Upon learning of this the Han Emperor and Yin Song were devastated because they loved Yin Zuhu so much. Before they could find a solution, one of the princes began to fight for the throne by relying on the help of the black sect. Some time passed and one day the Han Emperor discussed this with Jiang Kun. War god body? The sect master of the Valley of the Hundred Swords several generations ago researched the matter in depth. We still keep a lot of records, maybe it can help with his majesty's grandson's condition? Jiang Kun asked. Thanks to this information Yin Song decided to visit the Valley of the Hundred Swords, Jiang Kun actually thought of bringing Yin Song there after the throne battle was over but Yin Song didn't want to wait any longer. According to Yin Song, every second is precious to Zhu Hua. Yin Song also looked out the window, he only hoped that he could really find a clue that would help Zuhua. Yin Song did not want to lose the smile of his beloved daughter. When Zhao Chen said he wanted to go see the imperial family entourage visiting the Valley of the Hundred Swords, Fang An was slightly surprised because normally Zhao Chen didn't seem interested in leaving Bamboo Swords Villa. I've done my best, I hope I can change what's going to happen. Actually, the reason Zhao Chen had been training so hard these past few months and trying to continuously improve his physical strength had to do with Yin Song and Zhu Hua's visit. In his previous life the Valley of the Hundred Swords was actually infiltrated by some warriors of the Black Sect who intended to take Zhu Hua's life. It all ended with Mu Rong being killed while trying to protect his daughter. Yin Song would eventually become the new emperor of Han and he would never forget the negligence of the Valley of the Hundred Swords that cost his wife his life. Yin Song's first action when he became the Han Emperor was to sever all ties with the Valley of the Hundred Swords, making the sect even weaker. Jiang Kun did not refute the decision because he felt that he had made a mistake. On this occasion, Zhao Chen would not allow such an incident to happen again. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, Feel free visit. Pat Reincom Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 21 Sword King Villa.
Yin Song's party resided in one of the three largest villas in the Valley of the Hundred Swords, the Sword King Villa. Wang Ergao himself greeted the delegation, a look of happiness filling his face at being able to form a relationship with the future Emperor of Han. Crown Prince, I have prepared a banquet for you as well as the best resting room for your family. Wang Ergao didn't hide his intentions of fawning over Yin Song at all. Yin Song smiled awkwardly, he met Jiang Kun before and saw Jiang Kun was a true warrior who didn't have much interest in worldly things but Yin Song couldn't see the same in Wang Ergao. Yin Song did not refuse the banquet, he asked Mu Rong to take Yin Zuha to rest in the room that the Valley of the Hundred Swords had prepared. There is no need for the Crown Prince to worry, the safety of the Valley of the Hundred Swords is absolutely guaranteed especially in this Sword King Villa. Wang Ergao then noticed that there were 10 people not far from Yin Song and his family, they were all first class warriors. Yin Song smiled faintly, a first class warrior working for a family is not easy to find. Apart from the big families in the capital it was hard to have a bodyguard of 10 first class warriors to look after a few people in the Han Empire. Of course these 10 warriors looked normal in a place like the Valley of the Hundred Swords which had hundreds of skilled warrior heroes. Elder Wang please understand, their existence is only to make me calmer. Yin Song then followed Wang Ergao to the banquet hall and brought 6 warriors, he ordered the other 4 to guard Mu Rong and Yin Zuhua. Yin Song also intended to ask Wang Ergao about the records of the war god body when he attended the banquet. Mu Rong felt tired after a long journey so he took Yin Zuhu to rest. Zhao Chen was now outside of the King of Swords villa, normally members of the Valley of the Hundred Swords were free to enter each villa, but due to the presence of an important guest, the villa was now heavily guarded and everyone who wanted to enter or leave had to be inspected first. This villa's security is very strict. It won't be easy for someone to intrude into it. Zhao Chen surrounded Sword King Villa, looking for openings to intrude but he could see that security was heavily guarded. Zhao Chen couldn't remember the details of Mu Rong's death but what was certain was that it had all happened a few days after the group arrived at the Valley of the Hundred Swords. In his previous life Zhao Chen spent time in the Young Swords Pavilion so he only found out about the matter when Yin Song was so enraged that it caused the Valley of the Hundred Swords to go into chaos. That definitely won't happen today. Zhao Chen started to wonder if, for example, if he was assigned to kill Yin Zuhua, what kind of plan would he carry out? What was certain was that this was a suicide mission. Even after successfully killing their target these assassins would not escape the Valley of the Hundred Swords which had so many skilled warriors. Thinking there was nothing he could do at the moment, Zhao Chen returned to the Bamboo Sword Villa. Fang'an was practicing his swordsmanship in the courtyard when Zhao Chen returned. Seeing Fang'an, Zhao Chen suddenly had an idea. Chen you've come home, did you find what you were looking for? Fang'an smiled gently at Zhao Chen. Master. I heard that the emperor's granddaughter came here as well and she was very beautiful but I didn't manage to see her. Zhao Chen said shyly. Fang'an widened his eyes, he didn't expect Zhao Chen to be interested in the opposite sex at this young age, um. Chenna, you already have a girl waiting for you in Peach Blossom Mountain, you still want to glance at other girls? Master, I'm just curious, nothing else. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly. Fang'an chuckled. He felt like he was thinking too far. Sometimes Fang and forgot that Zhao Chen was only 6 years old because of his extraordinary intelligence. Maybe later Master will meet the Crown Prince, later you can come along and maybe get to see Princess Zhu Hu up close. Fang and stroked Zhao Chen's head gently. Fang and had indeed been assigned by Jiang Kun to accompany Yin Song to search for information regarding the war god body. Jiang Kun acknowledged Fang'an's deep understanding of martial arts despite his age, and Yin Song seemed to find it easier to communicate with the young Fang'an anyway. Zhao Chen returned to his room and started consuming another water ginseng, he felt he had to make use of every moment he had to grow stronger. Usually Zhao Chen only consumed one ginseng per day, but this time he continued to consume it after the medicinal properties of the ginseng had been used up. For the next two days Zhao Chen did not come out of his room except to eat and clean the bamboo sword villa. Fang An could also notice Zhao Chen's terrifying development from his body movements. Chenna, today I'm going to meet the crown prince, do you want to come with me? Of course master. Zhao Chen was excited as soon as he heard this news, 
The past two days he had been restless for fear of something happening. Fang and chuckled. They then finished their breakfast before Fang and led Zhao Chen to go to Sword King Villa. Along the way, Zhao Chen became the center of attention because it was the first time he had left Bamboo Sword Villa with Fang and in quite a while. Although not a few people had peeped into the Bamboo Sword Villa to see him, not many had seen his face clearly. Senior disciple Fang isn't bad after all. Her face is quite charming in my opinion. He will grow into a handsome young man. Most of the people who commented like that were girls, Zhao Chen was not surprised to hear that because indeed, with the increase in the quality of bones at a young age, his body shape became more manly and his face became a little prettier. In addition, someone who practiced the heavenly dragon god scripture would have an aura that made him appear even more charming. Of course all of this went back to the basic shape of a person's face, Zhao Chen basically had just a standard face. Even if one day his bones reached the quality of the dragon god bone even he would not possess Fang En's good looks. Chenna, let's walk faster. Zhao Chen smiled faintly before starting to walk faster, as usual his master was uncomfortable being stared at by so many girls. In a few moments the two arrived at the Sword King's villa. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 5. Chapter 22 First Meeting. Again, no useful information. Yin Song closed the book in front of him and massaged his forehead. Ever since he finished attending the banquet that Wang Ergao had prepared for him, Yin Song busied himself reading the notebooks related to the war god body but was unable to find a solution to Yin Zuhua's problem. Father. Father. Suddenly the door of Yin Song's reading room opened, and a little girl entered the room with an excited face. Miss, the crown prince is busy and doesn't want to be disturbed. One of the warriors guarding Yin Song had tried to stop Zhu Hu but to no avail. I'm bored. I miss you father. Zhu Hu looked at the swordsman in annoyance. Yin Song motioned for the swordsman to back off. He then walked over to Zhu Hu with a warm smile. Zhu Xu, what are you looking for father for? I want to be carried. You haven't seen me in a long time. Zhu Hu put on a sullen face. Yin Song chuckled before holding his beloved daughter. Indeed despite her condition, Zhu Hua was a cheerful and spoiled girl. Not to mention that Zhu Hua was quite emotional and had tantrums easily. Actually it didn't matter if she was an ordinary girl but Zhu Hua's tantrums were dangerous considering the huge power stored in her body. Once, Zhu Hua smashed all the furniture in a room and tore down the walls because she was forced to drink bitter medicine. Where's mother? Why aren't you with her? Asked Yin Song. The smile that had graced her lips from being carried instantly disappeared from Zhu Hu's face, she just lowered her head without saying a word. Yin Song held his breath for a moment, it seems that Mu Rong still can't forget what happened at that time. Yin Song thought as he slowly shook his head. A few months ago, Mu Rong scolded Zhu Hu because she made a serious mistake. Zhu Hu didn't like being scolded so she reflexively slapped Mu Rong on the leg out of annoyance. Unexpectedly, this punch was enough to make Mu Rong's leg bones crack. Mu Rong screamed and cried loudly and rolled on the floor in pain. Mu Rong's reaction made Zhu Hu panic and gripped Mu Rong's hand tightly. Unfortunately the little girl gripped too tightly causing Mu Rong's fingers to break. After that incident Mu Rong didn't dare come near Zhu Hu for over a week while Zhu Hu locked herself in her room, crying non-stop because she felt guilty. Mu Rong finally reunited with Zhu Hu but the relationship between mother and daughter was never the same. Mu Rong always kept a distance and was a little cold towards Zhu Hu. Besides that sometimes Mu Rong looked at Zhu Hu with fear. Yin Song couldn't blame Mu Rong's attitude because it definitely wasn't easy facing Zhu Hu after everything she'd been through. Crown Prince, Swordsman Fang has arrived at Sword King Villa, he wishes to see you. One of the maids came to Yin Song's reading room. Indeed Yin Song asked to be notified when Fang and came to visit. Yin Song then went to see Fang and while holding Zhu Hua. Crown Prince, sorry for only being able to come today. Fang and had been waiting in the living room with Zhao Chen. When he saw Yin Song's arrival, he immediately stood up and saluted. Zhao Chen also showed his respect to Yin Song. Brother Fang doesn't need to be shy, I understand it. Yin Song chuckled before asking Fang and to sit down. 
During the trip to the Valley of the Hundred Swords Yin Song's party received several attacks. Fang An was always near Yin Song's carriage and kept Yin Song and his family safe. Yin Song invites Fang An to stay with him but Fang An asks permission to go home to meet his disciple first because he has not seen him for several months. If it wasn't because the bamboo sword villa was too small to accommodate Yin Song and his party then Yin Song would have wanted to stay in the bamboo sword villa. Is this the disciple that brother Fang told you about? Yin Song's gaze fell on Zhao Chen. Yin Zuhua also felt attracted to Zhao Chen. Fang and then introduced Zhao Chen to Yin Song and Yin Zuhua. You could clearly see the shock on Yin Song's face when he found out that Zhao Chen was only older than Zuhua by only a year, even though his physique looked like that of a 10 year old child. Brother Fang is so talented, it's no wonder you also have such a special student. Yin Song chuckled, he could see the light in Zhao Chen's eyes showing his intelligence. Fang and glanced at Zhao Chen wanting to know his disciples reaction after meeting Zhu Hua, but in fact Zhao Chen had an expressionless face. Yin Zhu Hua asked to be led down from Yin Song's arms, she then walked up to Zhao Chen curiously. Want to play with me? Asked Zhu Hua. Of course. Zhao Chen nodded slowly. Yin Song and Fang and looked to be reacting. Both of them knew Zhu Hua's condition and it could harm Zhao Chen. Nice to meet princess. Zhao Chen stretched out his hand. Yin Song and Fang and panicked but before they could do anything, Yin Zhu had already grabbed Zhao Chen's hand. Yin Song and Fang and were surprised when nothing happened to Zhao Chen while Yin Zhu looked so happy. This is the first time a child my age doesn't scream when they shake hands with me. Zhu became so enthusiastic. Zhao Chen smiled but actually he was enduring pain. He was sure that Zhu He didn't exert any effort when shaking his hand but if it wasn't for Zhao Chen having the wind wolf bone and great physical strength his hand would have been crushed. Princess, shall we play outside? There is a flower garden nearby. Zhao Chen asked. Yin Zhu He nodded vigorously then pulled Zhao Chen's hand to leave the room without saying goodbye to Yin Song or Fang An. Yin Song and Fang An were both stunned by the situation. The two of them had their own thoughts after knowing that Zhao Chen could survive Yin Zhu Hua's strength. Brother Fang, I didn't expect you to have such a special disciple. Yin Song still couldn't believe what he was seeing. Fang and couldn't help but smile awkwardly because all he knew was that Zhao Chen indeed had much better bone quality than before Fang and went to the capital but bone quality and physical strength were two different things. Fang An believed that all the resources he provided before leaving those few months were not enough to allow Zhao Chen to possess that much physical strength. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 6. Chapter 23 Sky Dragon Bones. Zhao Chen felt that his arm was about to let go from being pulled by Yin Zuhua. Fortunately when the two were outside the room, Zhu He stopped pulling him. What are we going to play? Asked Zhu He so enthusiastically, she had never had friends of her age. Even though she had several siblings, they all stayed away from Zhu He because of her body condition. Zhao Chen straightened his arm, he smiled awkwardly and confusedly. Zhao Chen's eyes were so keen that he could see that the power Zhu He gave off was purely physical strength without the aid of internal energy. How about we go look at the flowers over there? Zhao Chen pointed at a flower garden not far from where they were standing and took the initiative to pull Zhu Hua over first. Zhao Chen wasn't sure his body was strong enough to endure if Zhu Hua pulled his arm one more time. Zhu Hua actually wasn't that interested in flowers but she complied and followed Zhao Chen. Without Zhu Hua noticing, Zhao Chen's expression changed slightly because when he held her hand, Zhao Chen also checked the quality of the girl's bones. Sky Dragon Bone. Zhao Chen almost screamed when he found out the quality of Zhu He's bones. According to the Heavenly Dragon God scripture, the Sky Dragon's bone was the highest quality bone that humans naturally possessed while the Dragon God bone could only be obtained by practicing the Heavenly Dragon God scripture. In other words a person born with the Sky Dragon bone was destined to become the number one warrior in the martial world if she had the proper knowledge to control her development. As far as Zhao Chen knew, the quality of this bone only appeared once every 1000 years and even if a talent like this appeared it would not necessarily be an unrevealed warrior due to not finding the proper knowledge to practice. 
Zhao Chen then remembered that in his previous life Yin Zuhu died at the age of 15. Rumors circulated that the princess had died from illness but now Zhao Chen knew the truth. At present there was no internal energy suitable for the body of a female possessing the sky dragon bone in the martial world except for that of the northern ice island but Zhao Chen knew there was no way the Han Empire could get it for Zhu Hu to learn. Zhao Chen felt a little sorry but there was nothing he could do now, even though the heavenly dragon god's scripture could also help this Zhu Hu but Zhao Chen couldn't possibly pass this knowledge on to Zhu Hu. If I had 500 circles of internal energy I might be able to do something but acquiring that amount of internal energy in less than 10 years. Zhao Chen was in a dilemma. What are you daydreaming about? Don't we want to see flowers? Zhu Hu sensed that Zhao Chen's thoughts were not with her. Zhao Chen woke up from his reverie, both of them were already in the flower garden so Zhao Chen started to explain one by one the flowers they saw, these are orchids. At first Zhu Hu was enthusiastic but after that she grew tired of looking at the flowers. Zhao Chen racked his brains then he had an idea, he took out a piece of paper and started to fold it into a bird shape. Ro. How to. Teach me. Teach me. Zhao Chen chuckled before taking out another piece of paper and giving Zhu Hu a hint. It was not easy for Zhu Hu to fold the paper with his strength. Many times it tore when he tried to fold it but Zhao Chen patiently taught him and took out another paper after another. Zhu Hua, who had wanted to give up after seeing Zhao Chen's attitude, tried to make the paper bird. Zhu Hua didn't know while watching him make paper birds, Zhao Chen was deep in thought. Zhao Chen tried to analyze Zhu Hua's situation. Possessing the sky dragon bone meant that Zhu Hua would continue to grow stronger as her bones aged. The problem is that all the strength comes from the bones, not the muscles or organs. Every time a person releases energy, his organs will receive a burden. Therefore, the greater the strength a person has every time he moves, the greater the pressure placed on his organs. The easiest way to protect the body's organs from this burden is to have internal energy, that's why internal energy and physical strength must develop together. The problem is that the internal arts that can keep up with Zuhua's speed of strength development can be counted on one hand and not all of Zuhua can learn as a girl. Consuming resources that can increase internal energy is also not a solution because cultivating the properties of various medicines or magical plants will burden the body. If you're not careful, it will speed up Zuhua's death. Water ginseng may be the single most useful resource for prolonging one's life. The quality of her bones is already too high and the properties of water ginseng won't affect her but all the nutrients of water ginseng can be used to strengthen her organs and muscles. Thought Zhao Chen. As long as Zhao Chen helped Zhu Hu absorb the water ginseng's nutrients using internal energy as well as the techniques from the heavenly dragon god's scripture then Zhu Hu could live longer but to truly heal her permanently, Zhao Chen needed at least 500 circles internal energy. Look. Look. Finally I can make it. Zhu Hua showed him the paper bird she made, even though the shape wasn't as good as Zhao Chen's but at least it still looked like the bird. Zhao Chen chuckled at Zhu Hua's craftsmanship, feeling laughed at Zhu Hua became a bit sulky and asked for another piece of paper. Zhu Hua wanted to make even better paper birds. Just watch, I can make it better than you. Zhu Hua snorted in annoyance. Zhao Chen shook his head. He was surprised that Zhu Hu loved to speak in such a high tone. In the end Zhao Chen gave up the thought of helping Zhu Hu. He felt that there was no obligation on him to save Zhu Hu after all there was no interest between the two in Zhao Chen's grand plan. If there was anyone else I had to help other than Master and the Valley of the Hundred Swords, it would be Miss Bing Ruao. Zhao Chen still had not forgotten the future Lord of Ice Island who had come to assist him in his last moment of life. Currently on the other side of the world, Bing Ruai was living her life. Supposedly as long as there weren't any significant changes, Bing Ruai would still be one of the strongest aces in the martial world. To be honest Zhao Chen himself didn't know what he could do to repay Bing Ruai but he was determined to help her in this life in return for the favor Ruai gave him in the past life. Zhao Chen also felt that he could return to the past and live this life the second time with regards to Bing Ruai even though he did not know the exact details. Zuxu, why are you here? Zhao Chen's thoughts were broken, he turned his head and found Mu Rong and four first class warriors walking towards Zhao Chen and Yin Zuhua. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit.
Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 24 Attack. Mother, watch this kid teach me to make paper birds. Yin Zuhua was excited when she saw Mu Rong, her biological mother walking towards her. Zhao Chen could see Mu Rong's eyes contained fear as she looked at Zuhua. Mu Rong forced a faint smile at Zuhua and listened to her story about the paper birds. Mu Rong was a little surprised because if Zuhua was able to fold paper into a paper bird it meant that Zuhua had learned to control her strength. Madam, introduce my name is Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen introduced himself as Fang and disciple, Mu Rong's expression slightly changed as she also respected Fang and who protected them along the way. Zuxu, Chen is older than you so you shouldn't act like that towards him. Mu Rong watched Zhu Hua call Zhao Chen as if he was the same age as her. Mu Rong thought Zhao Chen was at least 10 years old. Zhu Hua was a little confused because she heard Zhao Chen was only older than her by less than a year but Zhu Hua didn't want to make Mu Rong scold her so she complied. Chen Jej. Zhu Hua called out to Zhao Chen half-heartedly. Zhao Chen didn't really think much of it because considering his mental age, Zhu Hua should have called himself grandfather. Before Zhao Chen could respond to the call, he suddenly felt a killing intent coming from behind him. Down. Zhao Chen pulled Zhu Hua down, immediately a sword stabbed where Zhu Hua's head had been. Mu Rong was shocked, while Zhao Chen quickly kicked the sword wielder. What are you doing? Mu Rong couldn't believe it because the person who attacked Zhu Hua suddenly was one of the four first class warriors guarding them. The swordsman was equally in disbelief when Zhao Chen was so quick to respond to his attacks and even counter-attacked. The swordsman didn't think about dodging Zhao Chen's kick because he thought that someone his age wouldn't have much strength. In fact, the kick managed to send the swordsman flying back a few meters. The other three first class warrior finally woke up, they immediately moved to immobilize the warrior with evil intentions. Why are you doing this? One of the other warriors could not accept that their comrade betrayed because they had worked for Yin Song for a long time. You guys wouldn't understand. The traitorous swordsman laid out a long sigh, his stomach still hurting from Zhao Chen's kick. Chen Jej, are you alright? Yin Zuhua realized that Zhao Chen's actions saved her life, she became worried about Zhao Chen's condition. Zhao Chen said he was fine but his mind was actually in a mess, it shouldn't have happened like this. Zhao Chen had never heard of one of the warriors guarding Yin Zuhu being the attacker. If indeed the attacker was from one of the guards then Yin Song would not have blamed the Valley of the Hundred Swords in his previous life. One of my actions has changed the future without me noticing. Zhao Chen thought. Not long after Yin Song, Fang An and Wang Ergao came to the location after hearing a report from one of the guards. Chen Er, are you alright? Fang An checked Zhao Chen's condition. Relax master, this student is fine. Wang Ergao was slightly pale. He did not expect that there would be an attack on Sword King Villa. If anything happened to Mu Rong or Yin Zuhua, he would be held responsible. Zuhua told Yin Song about Zhao Chen saving her, Mu Rong also gave the same testimony. Chen Er, thank you for saving Zuxu. Yin Song had previously felt that Zhao Chen was not an ordinary child, so he remained calm. It is my duty to protect the princess. Zhao Chen replied with a smile. Wang Ergao instead looked at Zhao Chen in confusion. He was sure that when he met Zhao Chen at the Young Sword Pavilion almost two years ago he had checked the boy's talent and found that Zhao Chen had no special talent as a swordsman. In fact, now Zhao Chen had managed to save Zhu He from a surprise attack by a first class warrior that not even the other three first class warriors had the chance to stop. Moreover Zhao Chen was capable of counter-attacking and the force of that attack was enough to injure a first-class warrior. Master, we mustn't let our guard down. Zhao Chen used this opportunity to tell Fang An as well as Yin Song that there was a possibility that the one who intended to harm Yin Zhu Hua was not just this one warrior. When Zhao Chen suggested checking the identity of all the residents of Sword King Villa, Wang Ergao's expression changed immediately. How dare you accuse the Valley of the Hundred Swords of having intruders? Wang Ergao snapped. Vice Chairman Wang, Chen's words have some truth in them. It wouldn't hurt for us to be cautious or take precautions against something we might regret later. Fang and certainly couldn't stay silent with Wang Ergao's attitude. 
Yin Song intervened between the two and asked Wang Ergao to fulfill Zhao Chen's request. This also concerned his own safety. Wang Ergao certainly couldn't refuse if Yin Song asked him. If it doesn't turn out like you thought then you will have to accept the punishment. Wang Ergao pointed at Zhao Chen. Fang and wanted to speak but Zhao Chen held him back. Wang Ergao's anger was only natural since Sword King Villa belonged to his descendant and everyone who worked here were his people. Wang Ergao snorted in annoyance and finally ordered to check every occupant of Sword King Villa. About two hours later a piece of news made Wang Ergao's face turn deathly pale. After an inspection, it turned out that there were seven unknown people infiltrating and mingling in the Sword King Villa. All of them possessed first class warrior skills. It is believed there are several more intruders who have managed to escape before being examined. Vice Chairman Wang, if it weren't for Chen reminding him of this. Yin Song didn't finish his words but his tone was cold. Wang Ergao tried to explain, he really didn't expect that there would be intruders in Sword King Villa. Yin Song actually didn't intend to listen to this explanation for too long. Brother Fang, if you don't mind can I stay at Bamboo Sword Villa with my wife and daughter? Yin Song said he could only rest easy if he had Fangan's protection. Bamboo Sword Villa was also safe from intruders as the only ones living there were Fangan and Zhao Chen. Zuxu also definitely wants Chen to accompany me, I hope brother Fang can accept my selfish request. Yin Song smiled at Zhao Chen, he started to like the boy in front of him. Fangan looked at Wang Ergao who looked so sullen. Feeling that he couldn't refuse the request and finally Fang and escorted Yin Song to Bamboo Sword Villa. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 6. Chapter 25 Zhao Chen's Other Talent. Several days had passed since the assassination attempt on Yin Zuhua. Yin Song finally chose to live in the Bamboo Sword Villa with Mu Rong and Zhu Hua. Bamboo Sword Villa was small and simple but Yin Song didn't mind as long as he and his family could feel safe with Fang An and Zhao Chen's presence. Yin Song had all the files related to the war god body brought to the Bamboo Sword Villa for him and Fang An to study. In the past few days, Yin Song and Fang An spent time together so a friendly relationship grew between the two. So far, Yin Song as the crown prince, did not have many people who could freely talk to him, especially as a friend, so Yin Song really appreciated Fang An's friendliness. Yin Song had the ability to see through a person's talent, he knew that not only was Fang An a talented swordsman but his disciple Zhao Chen also had extraordinary talent. Yin Song believed that the two of them would become important figures in the martial world in the future. So it was better for Yin Song to develop a relationship with the two of them from the start. Chen Jiege. Teach me how to make other paper folds. Chen Jiege. I want a flower necklace. Chen Jiege. Accompany me to look at the tree. Previously Yin Zuhua was only enthusiastic about Zhao Chen because she first had friends of her age. Then she spent more time with Zhao Chen because she felt that the young man saved her life. As they spent more time together. Zhu Hua grew more and more attracted to and spoiled Zhao Chen. Yin Song, who noticed his daughter's behavior, couldn't help but chuckle. As far as Zhu Hua was concerned, he only treated her like that. Zhao Chen could only scratch his head every time Zhu Hua started nagging at him. This girl had always stuck to him since living in the Bamboo Sword Villa. Zhao Chen was of course aware of Zhu Hua's interest in him, but he could only regard Zhu Hua as a child or even like his grandson. Even if Zhao Chen was trapped in the body of a six-year-old but his female tastes were those of mature women, he would still be more likely to have an interest in women like Yu Lian or Mu Rong than Zhu Hua. Later I will accompany you to play, now eat this first. Chen Jiege, you cooked something delicious again? Zhu Hua became excited when Zhao Chen brought over a bowl of food that gave off a delicious aroma. Over the past few days Zhao Chen had indeed cooked all kinds of delicious dishes that Zhu Hua had never tasted before and even Yin Song and Mu Rong praised his cooking prowess. It was hard for Yin Song and Mu Rong to believe that all the dishes they ate were made by a 6 year old. Fang An was also initially surprised when he first tasted Zhao Chen's cooking even though Zhao Chen said he used to like helping his mother cook but it was hard to believe that a child of his age could cook like this. Indeed, other than the study room. The place where Zhao Chen spent the most time was the kitchen. 
Zhao Chen also often made dishes that Fang An had never seen. That's why Fang An felt that Zhao Chen did have special talent as a warrior but his intelligence made him more talented as a scholar working in government. Zhao Chen also seemed to be able to make a name for himself by becoming a chef. Chenna, this corn soup tastes so good. Yin Song praised Zhao Chen's cooking. This corn soup looked like the ordinary corn soup he was eating at first glance but in fact the broth was thicker and full of flavor. Besides there was something as fine as a white hair around the corn in little lumps of fluffy yellow. This corn soup is cooked using chicken broth, crushed eggs, and pureed crab meat, how to cook it. Zhao Chen then explained the reasons why his corn soup was different. In his previous life, Zhao Chen traveled to many places and the only solace for his soul was good food. Zhao Chen who ate various dishes now had the creativity to create new dishes. Yin Song was stunned to hear that, if it wasn't for Zhao Chen's young age he would not have behaved like this. Eating Zhao Chen's dishes for the past few days made Yin Song think of making Zhao Chen the palace chef. Ronja, I want to eat soup like this when I return to the capital. Yin Song looked at his wife who was also amazed at Zhao Chen's dish. Mu Ruong nodded slowly, he had indeed written down a few dishes that Yin Song, Yin Zuhu and himself liked. Mu Ruong also grew fond of Zhao Chen who was not stingy in sharing his insights. Chenna, you should make a recipe book for all your creations. Mu Ruong smiled gently. Zhao Chen nodded and promised to write a recipe book. Previously he thought his cooking was just mediocre but knowing that his cooking was able to satisfy the taste buds of the future Han Emperor made Zhao Chen more confident. Chen Jiege. Where are the apple sweets you usually make? Zhu Hu made a sullen face because she couldn't see her favorite dish. Two days earlier Zhao Chen had made a candied apple made from peeled apples covered in honey and sugar and then chilled. Um. I'm out of honey. Zhao Chen scratched his non-itchy nose. Chen Jiege. I want to eat that. Zhu Hu started to act spoiled again. I'll make something else later, no less delicious. Zhao Chen said with an awkward smile. Fang An never said much while eating. He just smiled and enjoyed his meal. Yin Song himself really enjoyed the atmosphere of eating dishes like this. Zhao Chen knew that even though Yin Song looked cheerful while eating, his expression would change when he was in the reading room with Fang and because neither of them had found any useful clues to Zhu He's condition. Seeing Fang and also become agitated at not being able to help Zhu He finally made Zhao Chen decide to take action. Master, I brought a hot drink. Zhao Chen knocked on the study room door. Chen come in. When Zhao Chen entered, he could see the languid face of Yin Song who was reading one of the notebooks about the war god body. Brother Fang, we've read almost all the records about the war god body but there's nothing we're looking for yet, I'm afraid. Yin Song closed the book he was reading. War god body? Zhao Chen asked in a fairly high pitched voice and immediately caught Fang and Yin Song's attention. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free visit. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 5. Chapter 26 Promise. It's nothing Chenna. Yin Song was so absorbed in his feelings that he forgot that Zhao Chen was serving them drinks. Ah, yes. Zhao Chen wore an expression that caught Yin Song and Fang An's attention. Chenna. Do you know anything about the war god body? Fang and knew that Zhao Chen loved to read so might know something. I. Zhao Chen looked doubtful. Chen I say what you want to say, there's no need to be afraid. Yin Song felt that the previous words made Zhao Chen feel that he should not interfere. Zhao Chen nodded slowly before explaining that he had read the records about the body of the war god in one of the books in the Bamboo Sword Villa's library but he was sure that Fang and Yin Song must have read the notes. Records at Bamboo Sword Villa? Fang An was shocked to hear that. Brother Fang, you don't know about it? Yin Song could see Fang An's reaction. Fang An shook his head, he was not the first owner of the Bamboo Sword Villa and he was so busy carrying out missions that he had not read all the book collections in the Bamboo Sword Villa. Fang An then asked Zhao Chen to take the book he meant. Zhao Chen went to the bookshelf and started looking. Before long he pulled out one of the slightly worn blue books from the row of books. Written on the cover of the book was the record of the war god's body. Yin Song and Fang and checked the contents of the book together. When they opened the first page, both of them frowned. 
Zhao Chen noticed the reaction of the two and swallowed his saliva. Both Fang'an and Yin Song were intelligent people, they would have discovered the strangeness of the book at one glance. Even though the books in their hands were old, around 20 to 30 years old, the ink that became the title and filled the pages looked so new. All of that was natural because the book had just been made by Zhao Chen and he pasted it in the study room this morning. Luckily Fang'an and Yin Song decided to continue reading the contents of the book first. This. Fang'an's eyes widened every time he read a new page. Yin Song was equally astonished, not only did this book contain complete records of the war god body's condition but also had a provisional solution as well as a complete solution. Strengthening the organs using the internal power of others, as well as cultivating medicinal herbs using external assistance. This solution is reasonable but not easy to implement. Fang'an could quickly draw a conclusion from the notes. The book also contained exercises that allowed Zuhu to better control her strength and reduce the burden on her organs. If followed strictly then Yin Zuhu could live to be 30 years old. In 10 years so much can happen, more time also means more hope. Yin Song's body shook violently as he found a way to increase Zuhu's age even though it wasn't much but it was progress. Chenna, thank you. It's all thanks to you. Yin Song couldn't hold back and tightly hugged Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen felt awkward, while Fang and only smiled proudly at Zhao Chen who had found this way. Both of them no longer care about the origin of the book or the new ink because everything written in this book is real. The next few days Yin Song stayed at Bamboo Sword Villa copying the book and discussing with Fang and what training Zuhu should undergo. Brother Fang, I'd like you to educate Zuhu if you please. My heart would be at ease if Zuhu were under your tutelage. Yin Song feels that his relationship with Fang An has become much closer and trusts Fang An. Fang An couldn't answer right away, he thought this was a big responsibility and not an easy decision for him. If possible Fang An wanted to refuse this request but in the end he asked Yin Song to discuss all this with Jiang Kun first. Yin Song could only respect Fang An's decision and agreed to discuss Yin Zuhu with Jiang Kun. The day after Yin Song asked Fang An to be Zuhu's guide, a letter came from the capital containing an order from the Han Emperor that Yin Song had to return to the capital immediately because something big had happened. The struggle for the throne by the princes seemed to be getting more complicated and hot, there was no choice finally Yin Song decided to return soon. Yin Song asked Fang An to escort him back to the capital, to Yin Song only Fang An could really be relied upon. The future has changed again. Zhao Chen sighed when he saw Fang An agreeing to Yin Song's request, thus Fang An would leave the Valley of the Hundred Swords for another few months. Zhao Chen didn't know that this change would be good or bad but he thought he should train harder because it wasn't certain that the future this time would match his previous life. Chen Edge. You come with me to the capital, there's lots of good food and stuff. You'll be happy there. Yin Zuhu immediately pouted when she found out they were returning to the capital because she didn't want to be separated from Zhao Chen. Zuhu then thought about taking Zhao Chen to the capital. Yin Song initially supported Zuhu as he had never seen his daughter so happy as she was with Zhao Chen but Fang and requested that Zhao Chen stay in the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Fang An's reason was simply because the situation in the capital was unsafe due to the succession struggle that was taking place. It took a long time to stop Zhu Hua from crying because she didn't want to be separated from Zhao Chen. When Zhao Chen promised to go to the capital after finishing his training only Zhu Hua calmed down. Chen Judge promised. Zhu Hua stretched out her little finger. Yeah I promise. Zhu Hua then handed a jade bracelet to Zhao Chen. This is my favorite bracelet. Chen Judge should return it to me later. Zhao Chen was a little surprised but finally nodded anyway. He didn't have anything of value so Zhao Chen gave him a book of poetry he made. Seeing the attitude of the two, Fang An could only shake his head while Yin Song chuckled. These two children are still 5 to 6 years old but can already do such cute things, making Mu Rong confuse herself seeing her daughter's behavior. Fang An converted his contributions into resources and gave them to Zhao Chen before finally leaving for the capital. Fang An was also curious as to how far his apprentice's strength would develop after he returned. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get 36 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 5. Chapter 27 Young Tiger Bone. 
Several months had passed since Fang had had gone to escort Yin Song back to the capital. Every day after Fang and left the Valley of the Hundred Swords, Zhao Chen trained diligently. Finally I reached Young Tiger Bone. On the second year that Zhao Chen was in the Valley of the Hundred Swords, he attained the Young Tiger Bone thanks to the Water Ginseng and the Heavenly Dragon God's scripture. Someone who possessed the Tiger Bone Bone at the age of 7 was extremely difficult to find even in the big sects. Zhao Chen tried to do some moves to feel his new strength. His body felt so different from before that even Zhao Chen was able to jump as high as 5 meters without lightening the body. Zhao Chen's physical strength was immense and he believed himself to be unbeatable by anyone under 10 years of age. Even though he doesn't have the slightest inner strength yet, Zhao Chen believes he can draw against a first class warrior just by relying on the physical strength and speed that Zhao Chen has. Zhao Chen. Stop hiding. Come out and face me. A loud cry rang out from the front courtyard of the Bamboo Sword Villa. Oh my god, they never get bored hard. Zhao Chen scratched his head which started to hurt. Lazily, Zhao Chen walked towards the front courtyard only to find a few children dressed as disciples of the Valley of the Hundred Swords. One of them stands out because of his handsome face and the strength that radiates from his body. Today's Zhao Chen is definitely your end. Said the handsome looking boy who looked 10 years old. Senior brother Wang, haven't you said that several times already? Zhao Chen smiled faintly at the boy. Ever since the assassination attempt at Sword King Villa was thwarted by Zhao Chen, he had been noticed by Wang Ergao as someone to be reckoned with. Zhao Chen knew that Wang Ergao was trying to complicate and hinder his development within the sect but in fact Zhao Chen didn't even leave Bamboo Swords Villa once after Fang and left for the capital. Wang Ergao as the vice sect master naturally couldn't directly intervene against Zhao Chen therefore he sent his most talented descendant of the same generation as Zhao Chen. Wang Chong is Wang Ergao's favorite great grandson. He is 10 years old and has high martial talent. At such a young age, Wang Chong had already started practicing internal strength and had already formed several circles. Zhao Chen naturally remembered Wang Chong because this boy would later become Zhao Chen's generation's most talented disciple of the Hundred Swords Valley. Even though now Wang Chong looked arrogant and acted as he pleased, with age he would become a responsible person and a good leader. That was why Wang Chong was not too bad in Zhao Chen's eyes at this time. As Zhao Chen recalled, Wang Chong had been killed during one of the dangerous missions before the attack on the Valley of the Hundred Swords occurred. Given his character, Zhao Chen was sure that if Wang Chong was still alive when the Valley of the Hundred Swords suffered an attack that decimated the sect, Wang Chong would have stayed and fought alongside the others instead of running away like Wang Ergao and the other descendants of the Wang family. During these months Wang Chong would come to challenge Zhao Chen. When the two of them fought Zhao Chen never threw a punch at Wang Chong but only dodged the boy's attacks until Wang Chong finally exhausted himself. Wang Chong had never lost to a child his age. When he was treated like this, especially since Zhao Chen was three years younger than him, Wang Chong could not accept it. If previously Wang Chong was doing all of this under Wang Ergao's orders, now he was doing it for himself. Your punching movement is still too wide, the opponent will easily attack you. Your kicks are less fast, focus more energy on your waist. Breathe well when pulling punches otherwise your own bones will shift. Apart from dodging Wang Chong's attacks, Zhao Chen also made comments that could make progress in Wang Chong's martial arts. That's why Wang Chong was always followed by several people when he visited Bamboo Sword Villa because they could also learn from Zhao Chen's input. After fighting for 15 minutes, Wang Chong was starting to run out of breath. I guess that's enough for today right? Zhao Chen smiled then turned around leaving Wang Chong and the others. Zhao Chen don't be happy just yet. I'll be back in a few days. Wang Chong snorted in annoyance before leaving the Bamboo Sword Villa. Zhao Chen slowly shook his head, he knew that even though Wang Chong behaved like this but in the young man's heart he was grateful to Zhao Chen for helping him develop his martial arts but in front of so many people Wang Chong had to guard his attitude and self esteem. The next day while sweeping the grounds, Zhao Chen noticed that there were more girls hanging around in front of the Bamboo Sword Villa. All of that made Zhao Chen realize that his master would be back soon. Sure enough, a few hours later Fang An entered the Bamboo Sword Villa. Master. Zhao Chen greeted Fang An and showed his respect. Chenna, you've gotten even taller. 
Fang and gently stroked Zhao Chen's head. Zhao Chen was only 7 years old but his body looked like that of a 12 year old. Zhao Chen's growth speed could only be summed up in one word which was terrifying. Fang and forgot to take a breath when he found that Zhao Chen's bone quality had improved again. With the quality of the bones, Zhao Chen could be considered a rare talent even in the great sects. Chenna, while in the master capital had a discussion with the sect master and he agreed for you to start practicing now. Fang and then felt that physical training made Zhao Chen's latent potential emerge, so Fang and planned a year-long physical training program for Zhao Chen. Fang and wanted to unleash all of Zhao Chen's potential and push it to the limit before starting to practice martial arts. Zhao Chen did not reject all of that. He thought that it was time for him to train harder and not always rely on a resource like the water ginseng. That evening while having dinner, Fang and talked a lot about the incident in the capital, especially about Zhu He who often missed Zhao Chen. Hearing all that made Zhao Chen slightly moved because in his previous life there was no one who behaved like that towards him. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more Fan 10 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 28 Physical Training. Princess Zuhu is now under the guidance of the sect leader. As long as there are no significant issues, Lady Princess's condition will improve. Fang and explained in detail about Yin Zuhu, thinking that Zhao Chen wanted to know. Fang and also added that Yin Song treated him well. After learning about his internal injury, Yin Song didn't hesitate to provide valuable medicine to alleviate Fang and's pain. Upon hearing this, Zhao Chen felt joyous. If that's the case, then the changes in the future compared to his previous life would have a positive impact. Zhao Chen was grateful for deciding to stop the assassination attempts and helping Zhu He's condition. The growing closeness between Yin Song and Fang and seemed to bring more benefits than problems, judging by their current progress. After finishing their conversation, Fang and instructed Zhao Chen to rest because according to the training plan he had prepared, Zhao Chen had to wake up at 4 a.m. every day. A few hours later, precisely at 4 a.m., Fang and woke up Zhao Chen. The sky was still dark, but Zhao Chen didn't feel weak despite having to train in the early morning like this. Zhao Chen rinsed his body to feel refreshed before starting his warm-up exercises. The first morning exercise was to run towards the nearby mountain, not utilizing any body lightening techniques. Although the distance was not far, running there without stopping would require significant stamina. This would be the first time Zhao Chen trained outside Bamboo Sword Villa since joining the Hundred Sword Valley. Upon reaching the foot of the mountain, Zhao Chen would start moving large stones weighing tens to hundreds of kilograms towards a high cliff. After moving the stones, Zhao Chen would begin climbing the cliff without using any body lightening techniques. The first day went smoothly, and Zhao Chen was able to complete everything by noon without difficulty. His achievement left Fang in at a loss for words. In the following days, Fang An increased the difficulty of the training by adding more weight to Zhao Chen's body, pushing him to train until reaching his limits. The problem was that Zhao Chen's strength also improved at an astonishing rate due to the assistance of the water ginseng. Fang An eventually introduced new training methods to Zhao Chen, striving to make the training even more challenging. In a few months, Zhao Chen had reached levels of difficulty that even made Fang An furrow his brow just thinking about them. As Zhao Chen ran out of the Hundred Sword Valley every day with such heavy weights and his training routine became known to many, he became a well-known figure to the point where Wang Chong stopped challenging him to a fight. Zhao Chen's talent was finally recognized, and everyone knew that the seven-year-old boy possessed inhuman strength. Zhao Chen was hailed as the most talented individual in his generation, and with Fang An being a genius in his own right, this master and disciple pair became even more renowned in the Hundred Sword Valley. Not a few sword elders felt jealous that Fang and had found such an outstanding disciple. One of those who was particularly displeased with all of this was Wang Ergao. However, after learning about their sect leader, Jiang Kun's interest in and attention to Zhao Chen's development, Wang Ergao abandoned his intention to do something harmful to Zhao Chen. Chenna, I can't imagine what kind of warrior you will become in the future. Fang and never ceased to be amazed by Zhao Chen's actions. He had become accustomed to being astonished and would often marvel at his only disciple's progress. 
Time flew by, and Zhao Chen had been training like this for a full year. Now, Zhao Chen was 8 years old, and just a few days before his 8th birthday, he had successfully reached the level of fierce tiger bone through his rigorous training combined with the water ginseng and the heavenly dragon god scripture. To improve the quality of his bones from yellow wolf bone to fierce tiger bone within 3 years was unheard of in history. Zhao Chen was the first person to achieve such a feat. During his free time, Zhao Chen went to the Jade Grass River. He wanted to test his diving abilities with his fierce tiger bones. In the past, with his young tiger bones, Zhao Chen had no trouble facing the cold waters of the Jade Grass River and could harvest dozens of water ginseng in one dive. Now, with his new body's strength, Zhao Chen could dive even longer and effortlessly harvest over 30 water ginseng. After a short rest, he could dive again. Ultimately, in a single visit, he harvested over a hundred water ginseng. If there are no significant issues, I should be able to reach Iron Tiger Bone at the latest by the age of 10. Zhao Chen felt enthusiastic about his progress. Zhao Chen wasn't in a hurry to cultivate his internal energy. When a warrior starts training internal energy, it consumes almost all of their time. Rather than spending one or two years to form a single circle of internal energy, Zhao Chen chose to strengthen his foundation first. As long as he could reach Dragon God Bone, the results of his internal energy training for a year using the Heavenly Dragon God scripture would be equivalent to a regular warrior training for 60 years or a genius warrior training for 10 years. Moreover, even though Zhao Chen didn't currently possess internal energy due to constantly consuming water ginseng, he had physical strength that was difficult to match even by those who had internal energy. Zhao Chen was confident in his fierce tiger bones. If he unleashed his full strength in a punch, the power of his attack would rival that of someone with 30 circles of internal energy. With a single punch, Zhao Chen could even shatter a large stone into small fragments. When Zhao Chen returned from harvesting water ginseng, he saw Fang and carving a wooden stick into the shape of a sword in the courtyard. Zhao Chen could guess the intention behind Fang and's action. Sure enough, not long after Fang and finished crafting a wooden sword, he called his disciple, Chenna, now that you're 8 years old, and over the past year, you have trained your physical body excellently. It's time for you to train in martial arts, and we can start with swordsmanship. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly upon realizing that Fang and was more enthusiastic than he was. Zhao Chen could see that Fang and had placed great hope in him as part of the future of the Hundred Sword Valley. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 10 chapter. Patreon com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 29 News from the Capital. Chenna, the sword technique I'm about to pass down is called Swallow Swordsmanship. There are 12 forms inside. I'll show you the first form. Fang and then demonstrated the first form of swallow swordsmanship. Fang and deliberately slowed down his movement so that Zhao Chen could observe him properly. Zhao Chen couldn't help but smile faintly. This swordsmanship was one of the techniques he had studied for dozens of years in his previous life and helped him attain a profound understanding of the art of the sword. Zhao Chen could even perform the 12 moves in the swallow swordsmanship with his eyes closed. How? Are you having trouble memorizing all the moves from the first form? Asked Fang and after finishing his moves. Zhao Chen shook his head slightly before explaining that he had memorized all of the moves. Fang and was not surprised when Zhao Chen was able to remember at a glance with the intelligence he had displayed so far. Memorizing moves is different from mastering them. In martial arts there are several levels to mastering a style. Fang and then explained that there were four levels of mastery in a style. The first was basic mastery, that is, when one memorized the core moves of the move and was able to cast 10 to 20% of the move's abilities. When one was able to use 3 to 50% of the potential of a move, one would be judged to have intermediate mastery. The next level was advanced mastery, when one was able to use 6 to 90% of the move's potential. Finally, perfect mastery is when a warrior is able to bring out 90 to 100% of the ability of a moment. Although there is a term of perfect mastery in a style but you must clearly remember Chenna, that the art of the sword is not a journey to the top of a mountain but a dive into the bottomless ocean. Fang and reminded. 
Zhao Chen certainly never forgot this message from Fang and because he felt that learning the sword art was a never-ending journey. Fang and then handed a wooden sword to Zhao Chen and asked him to practice the moves he had just taught him. It's been quite a while huh? Zhao Chen muttered under his breath as he held the wooden sword. In his previous life he belatedly discovered himself proficient in swordsmanship, yet he still attained a level of swordsmanship that is difficult for many people to reach and was eventually named the Holy Swordsman. Indeed, the nickname was mostly due to his extraordinary inner strength thanks to practicing using the heavenly dragon god's scripture. In his previous life, when he started practicing the sword, Zhao Chen's hand never left the sword for a single day. It didn't feel like three years had passed since he had returned to the past and during that time he had neither touched a sword nor practiced any sword arts. Indeed, sometimes he did some basic movements when sweeping the page but the sensation was certainly much different from holding a wooden sword like this. Zhao Chen took some distance then started to perform the moves of the first form of swallow swordsmanship. His body still felt stiff and unaccustomed to it but his every move was sharp and agile. Fang En's eyes widened when he saw Zhao Chen's swordplay prowess. Middle mastery. No, he is even close to advanced mastery. Fang En thought as he stared at Zhao Chen in disbelief, he still couldn't fathom the situation of Zhao Chen being able to achieve such high mastery just by trying once. My body really isn't used to doing this kind of movement anymore. Zhao Chen muttered under his breath. After completing the first form of movement, Zhao Chen did not stop but started again from the beginning and this time it was seen that his body movements were smoother but also more powerful. Zhao Chen repeated the moves of the first form several times and with each repetition his mastery steadily increased. Now his level of mastery of the first form of swallow swordsmanship had reached advanced mastery. This. Fang'an was speechless. He knew that Zhao Chen had special talent but found that Fang'an's evaluation of him still included underestimating him. Chenna, as long as I am not in place, are you practicing martial arts alone? Fang'an felt that it was impossible for Zhao Chen to master a technique so quickly, which might be that Zhao Chen had learned this sword art before without Fang'an's knowledge. Recalling that Zhao Chen had thwarted an assassination attempt on Zhu Hua several months ago, Fang'an was not surprised that Zhao Chen had secretly studied martial arts. Zhao Chen then explained that he had indeed learned martial arts from books in the Bamboo Sword Villa's library, namely Wolf Fist and Wind Steps. Fang'an then asked Zhao Chen to demonstrate the two skills. Fang'an was again shocked to find that Zhao Chen's mastery of the Wolf Fist had reached perfect mastery while Wind Step had reached advanced mastery. Chenna, your Wind Step is still too clumsy because you lack profound energy but being able to reach this level without profound energy is truly amazing. Fang'an gave Zhao Chen a hint that allowed him to improve his mastery of wind step. Despite his shock, Fang'an continued to train Zhao Chen. Fang'an continued to teach the swallow swordsmanship, one form after another, to Zhao Chen. It only took a few days for Zhao Chen to master the 12 forms of swordsmanship. Fang'an was happy but also worried because Zhao Chen's terrifying talent could invite disaster too if he wasn't careful. Fang and helped Zhao Chen attain proficient mastery for the twelve and strive for perfect mastery. Actually it wasn't easy for Fang and considering that he was such a genius that he had yet to achieve perfect mastery of all forms of swallow swordsmanship. Actually I teach or I learn. Fang and smiled awkwardly, he realized that after seeing Zhao Chen's moves, he had the inspiration to raise his mastery of the sword to reach consummate mastery. Even though he taught Zhao Chen. Fang'an also learned a lot of new things. This training lasted for a full month until one day someone delivered a letter to Bamboo Sword Villa addressed to Fang'an. Zhao Chen could see the seal of the Han Imperial family on the envelope, so he could guess that the letter Fang'an received was from Yin Song. Fang'an's expression turned ugly as he read the letter and finally heaved a deep sigh as he finished reading it. Chenna, Master has to return to the capital again. Something has happened. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more Thant 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 5. Chapter 30 Preparation. Master, what exactly happened? Zhao Chen felt a bit confused, there shouldn't be any big trouble that occurred during the struggle for the throne of the Han Empire in his previous life. 
These problems only occurred in the capital and did not directly impact the Valley of the Hundred Swords but Fangan's reaction indicated that something very serious was going on. Fangan was actually a little hesitant to tell Zhao Chen but he felt that his disciple needed to know. Chenna, maybe you don't understand but in the capital there is a struggle for the throne that will determine the future of the Han Empire. Several years ago a struggle for the throne occurred because one of the princes who was Yin Song's brother had teamed up with and gained the support of the Black Sect to become the leader of the Han Empire. The current Emperor of Han disapproves of the prince's wishes and so enlists the help of the four white sects to support the crown prince, Yin Song becomes the new Emperor of Han. Each sect then dispatched their respective sect leaders to protect the capital as well from the Black Sect. Yin Song's letter said something had happened in the capital and made two of the four white sects that supported him withdraw from involvement in the usurpation. Yin Song did not go into details about the event in question for fear that this letter would fall into the wrong hands. What was certain was that if it wasn't for the Han Emperor begging Jiang Kun directly, the Valley of the Hundred Swords also intended to withdraw. The Han Emperor asked Jiang Kun to call more sword elders to cover for the other warriors who had retreated but Jiang Kun refused. Yin Song finally came to Jiang Kun and talked about his intention of inviting Fang An. Jiang Kun said that if Fang An was willing to come voluntarily then Jiang Kun would not forbid him. The future has changed again. Does it have anything to do with the crown prince's wife not dying? Thought Zhao Chen who was so surprised to hear the news. As far as he could remember in the struggle for the throne in his previous life there was no such thing as this. Mu Rong's death in the past life seemed to have had a serious impact on everything that happened before, well because Mu Rong was living in this life, something had changed and ended up in this situation. Chenna, master cannot refuse the crown prince's request, he has given me so many medicines to help my condition. Master, let this disciple come with you. This disciple wants to gain experience in the outside world as well. Zhao Chen's words surprised Fang An. In his opinion Zhao Chen was still too young to gain experience in the outside world especially in such a dangerous situation. Even though physically, Zhao Chen looked like a 12 to 13 year old child but still he was actually only 8 years old. Zhao Chen realized that Fang An had reservations about inviting him. Master. Apprentice feels that this is a good opportunity to both train and fulfill the promise with Princess Zuhua. After all, Apprentice has long been curious about the sights of the capital. Fang and finally couldn't refuse after Zhao Chen kept coaxing him. He had to admit Zhao Chen was also skilled at speaking. We're leaving in a few days. There's something Master needs to take care of first. Chen, you also prepare your things. Zhao Chen looked so happy when Fang and agreed to take him along. Actually the reason Zhao Chen insisted on coming along was because he was worried. Zhao Chen was certain that he would not be able to rest easy when Fang An went to the capital to face an unknown situation. Even though Zhao Chen didn't have the skills to help Fang An yet, with his knowledge and insight, maybe he could help in a different way. Zhao Chen basically didn't have much apart from a few pieces of clothing, so he used those few days to harvest as much water ginseng as he could because he didn't know how long this trip would last. At least Zhao Chen had prepared enough water ginseng for him to consume for one more year. The day before departure, Fang An took Zhao Chen to visit the Warsword Pavilion. The building is the repository of all the weapons owned by the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Members can buy weapons in this place with money or exchange them for the value of contributions to the sect. Chen you have good sword skills for your age. Master will give you a sword because you also have to learn to protect yourself on the way. Fang An explained his intention of bringing Zhao Chen here, it's just that master doesn't have much in his savings anymore, can't buy you a good sword now. Fang An smiled shyly but Zhao Chen understood his teacher's situation. During the past year Fang An did not carry out missions to train Zhao Chen, all of his wealth had been spent on buying medicine as well as Zhao Chen's training resources. If Yin Song hadn't sent him even a letter in the near future Fang An would definitely have left the sect to undertake several missions to provide for the Bamboo Sword Villa's needs. Zhao Chen didn't really have many options, even though his body grew faster than most kids his age but Zhao Chen was still like a 12 to 13 year old so his body wasn't ideal for wielding a long sword for an adult. Fang An finally chose one of the short swords and gave it to Zhao Chen. When Zhao Chen checked the quality of the sword, he couldn't help but smile faintly. In the world of martial arts, 
Weapons have their own qualities. The lowest was of ordinary quality, like the sword Zhao Chen currently held. This sword is not bad but it is usually used by ordinary humans and warriors rather than warriors like him. A weapon of average quality like this could only be used to kill a few people before it became dull and unusable. If these swords were of better quality then they would be called elite quality, usually these weapons were created by skilled blacksmiths. Among the elite weapons there would be even more qualified ones that even had names because the makers were famous blacksmiths. This quality of weapons is referred to as renowned quality or named weapons. Zhao Chen looked around, he could see that half of the war sword pavilion were ordinary weapons, while the other half were elite weapons that first class and expert warrior generally used. Zhao Chen could also see that there were dozens of weapons on display that were of very good quality and were named weapons. What was interesting was that Zhao Chen could see that some of the swords stored in special places were emitting an unusual aura. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 31 The Journey Begins. In my previous life I only visited the Warsword Pavilion a few times and didn't pay close attention, to think that it houses a few treasured weapons here as well. Zhao Chen muttered under his breath as he looked at the weapons stored in a special place. Indeed, above the named weapons there are other weapons of a higher quality, they are referred to as heirlooms. Heirlooms has many types, for example weapons, armor and others. They are objects made of special materials and have unusual abilities, sometimes even magical ones. The heirlooms also have their own respective classes, namely human heirlooms, earth heirlooms, and sky heirlooms. Among the sky heirlooms, there are several heirlooms that possess extraordinary power, known as the Seven World Ruler. It is believed that there are actually more than the Seven World Ruler treasures but the existence of treasures of this level is not easy to find. Chenna, aren't you satisfied with the sword you got? Fang had noticed that Zhao Chen was looking at the other swords of better quality and even looking at the relics. Fang had, had not expected Zhao Chen to have such an observant eye and be able to discern the quality of weapons at such an early age. No master, this disciple is very satisfied. Zhao Chen snapped out of his reverie, smiling awkwardly as he thanked Fang for the gift. Zhao Chen stored his sword well, Fang then took him to the young sword pavilion. The two met Yu Lian and reported their planned departure to the capital. Chenna, you have grown into such a dashing young man. I barely recognized you. Yu Lian was slightly stunned before smiling gently at Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen scratched his head. In his previous life he and Yu Lian were quite close because Yu Lian taught him so many things back when Zhao Chen was working in the Young Sword Pavilion. In this lifetime, Zhao Chen had not seen Yu Lian since the day he joined the Valley of the Hundred Swords because he had been busy training. Yu Lian also felt a bit strange because it didn't feel like three years had passed and Zhao Chen had grown so fast, looking much more mature than his age. Yu Lian also knew about Zhao Chen's famous moves due to his strenuous training over the past year. This will be the first time Chen has ventured out since becoming a disciple of the Valley of the Hundred Swords right? You have to come back safely okay. Yu Lian then passed two sets of sect clothes to Zhao Chen. As long as I'm with master. No one will be able to harm me. Zhao Chen said confidently. Fang An only smiled in response to Zhao Chen's statement. It was true that in the last three years Fang An had not made much progress towards his internal strength but his sword skills had improved quite a lot especially during the past month when passing sword skills to Zhao Chen. The next morning, just as the sun was rising, Fang An and Zhao Chen left the Valley of the Hundred Swords. Zhao Chen looked at the Valley of the Hundred Swords for a long time, after three years he finally left the place. In his previous life, Zhao Chen first left the Valley of the Hundred Swords when he was 19 years old. This time, he was 11 years faster and even the strength he possessed was greater than his 19 year old self in the past. Chenna, why are you carrying such a big package? Fang An actually wanted to ask since he saw Zhao Chen carrying an enormous bundle on his shoulders. As far as Fang An was concerned, Zhao Chen didn't have many items. Zhao Chen only smiled awkwardly and said he had brought his necessities. Of course the large package he brought contained water ginseng which was enough to last him for over a year. 
Zhao Chen thought that there was a possibility that the two of them should stay in the capital until the fight for the throne was over. Fang and didn't inquire further after that but he saw that Zhao Chen also carried the jade bracelet that Yin Zuhu had given him. The bracelet was stored by Zhao Chen in his robes. The two of them wore a purple robe with sword prints all over their robes, indicating they were from the Valley of a Hundred Swords. Previously their sect attire didn't attract much attention but ever since Jiang Kun became the sect master, he made the sect uniform like this. Fang and preferred to wear his own robes when traveling but because this time he brought Zhao Chen to experience the outside world, he also wore the uniform of the Valley of the Hundred Swords accompanying Zhao Chen as well as showing off the identity of the two. Several days passed, the journey of the two could be spelled out without a hitch. The distance between the capital and the Valley of the Hundred Swords was vast so Fang An and Zhao Chen traveled using lightning. Fang An wanted to use this opportunity to let Zhao Chen get more used to using the lightning body. Fang An could only be stunned to find that Zhao Chen had such great stamina, he was able to run non-stop for several hours and not get tired either. Even while traveling, Zhao Chen also regularly consumed water ginseng when his condition allowed it. Zhao Chen had not forgotten his wish of attaining the Iron Tiger Bone before the age of 10 thus he did not slack off. If we maintain this pace then we will soon be entering the main road. Fang An said. Indeed after leaving the Valley of the Hundred Swords, Fang An took the shortest path to the capital so the two of them ran through grasslands as well as forests and even rounded a mountain. This path is impossible to pass by using a horse-drawn carriage or people who do not have the knowledge of lightening the body that is high enough. Chenna is also talented in lightening. I guess I should have the sec master pass down the best lightening that the Valley of the Hundred Swords has. Fang An thought after observing Zhao Chen's abilities the past few days. A few hours later the two found a large road. Fang An said that by following this road they would arrive at the capital but they still had a long way to go. Master, look. Zhao Chen pointed ahead, it seems that there is an entourage ahead of us. Fang and narrowed his eyes, he could only see the faint shadows of a few people. Little did Zhao Chen realize that the water ginseng also made his sense of sight so sharp that he was able to see long distances clearly. This road was indeed used by everyone, we would often encounter merchants or other travelers because this road connected the capital with all the major cities and the Han Empire. Fang An explained. Zhao Chen smiled faintly, from what he could see this group of people were neither merchants nor ordinary travelers. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 32 The Five Noble Families. Fang An and Zhao Chen walked quickly until Fang An finally saw the group Zhao Chen was referring to. A luxurious green chariot pulled by four powerful horses was equipped with a flag that read Liu. In addition to the carts, there are several carts pulled by a horse, carrying boxes that are usually used to store valuables. The car group was controlled by around 30 people who were all on horseback. These guards are each fully armed and also wear protective clothing. It turned out to be an entourage from the Liu family. Fang An smiled faintly before looking at Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen didn't say anything, he naturally knew about the Liu family, one of the five noble families of the Han Empire. Fang An thought that Zhao Chen must have read the records about these five noble families. In the Han Empire there were five aristocratic families that wielded immense influence namely the Yin, Wang, Liu, Mu and Song families. The Yin family is none other than the Han imperial family that has been in power for over 500 years. The Wang family was known as an aristocratic family that produced weapons and had strong ties to many sects of the white sect. The Mu family was an aristocratic family allied with the Yin family. The new Han emperor Yin Song had a Mu family wife, Mu Rong, Yin Zhu who was mother. The Mu family itself was the largest merchant family that owned countless businesses throughout the Han empire. The Liu family was the oldest noble family in the Han Empire, they were also the ruling family before being replaced by the Yin family. The Liu family is famous as a family of ministers because it gave birth to so many scholars and nearly 70% of the ministers and important officials in the government are from the Liu family. The Song family was famous as a military family, almost all generals and top military officers came from the Song family. 
Judging from combat power, the Song family kept pace with the major sects because of the number of warriors they had. Fang and had always advised Zhao Chen beforehand to avoid dealing with any of these five families as much as possible because they were people full of schemes. Fang and also never expected that he would become close to Yin Song. One could say that both Fang and Zhao Chen had close ties to the Yin family. Two bodyguards noticed Fang and Zhao Chen's presence and approached the two of them. Who are you? How dare you approach this group? Said one of the bodyguards. Sorry, we didn't know beforehand. We will keep our distance. Fang and replied with a smile. Zhao Chen saw that the two bodyguards before them were third rate warriors. Fang An could have finished them both off in one strike but Zhao Chen understood Fang An's reason for giving face to the two. The goal of the two was to reach the capital as soon as possible so it was best to avoid unnecessary trouble. Fang An and Zhao Chen finally stopped walking and allowed the group to take some distance from them. Master, wouldn't it be easier if we got ahead of them? It seems their traveling speed is slow due to carrying a lot of stuff. Zhao Chen asked. When night falls. They will rest earlier than us because their horses must be tired. That's when we will pass them. Fang'an explained. As far as Fang'an was concerned most nobles attached great importance to their pride and were easily offended by simple actions. Fang'an did have some experience because there was a mission where he had to deal with aristocratic families, one of which was the Liu family. Besides that they were carrying a lot of valuables, there is a possibility that their journey was discovered by robbers. If we get ahead of them on a bright day like this there is a possibility that the robbers who are after them will block our way. Fang An added. Zhao Chen nodded slowly, he would not have thought that far if not for Fang An's analysis. It seems that the peaceful past three years made my thinking towards this kind of situation dull. Zhao Chen lowered his head and pondered many things. Time passed and as the sun was about to set, the train group stopped. Fang An and Zhao Chen were again quite close to the group. The two intended to continue on but again there were several bodyguards blocking the two. Didn't I tell you to keep your distance? Said the bodyguard who had come to Fang An earlier. Fang An still explained carefully that he and Zhao Chen were in a hurry. Both of them wanted to continue their journey so they had to pass through this group. We can't leave you like that. Maybe you guys will tell the robbers about our whereabouts or something. You can continue your journey tomorrow morning. Said one of the bodyguards. Don't you guys think it's too much? Zhao Chen couldn't help but look at the behavior of these bodyguards. What is this little child talking about? The bodyguard was clearly not happy that a brat like Zhao Chen was interfering. He stared at Zhao Chen as if he wanted to swallow him alive. Fang An stepped in front of Zhao Chen, mediating between the bodyguard and his disciple. Is there a need to behave like that with the children? Zhao Chen smiled broadly. He knew Fang An was a patient person. As long as this bodyguard only suppressed Fang An, perhaps nothing would happen but Fang An really didn't like someone offending his closest people. The reason Zhao Chen spoke up was because he wanted Fang An to bear his fangs at these bodyguards. The bodyguards wanted to say harsh words but no words could come out of their mouths when they noticed Fang An's icy gaze. Their instincts as warriors told them that Fang An was not someone they could face. At the same time, a young man got down from the green carriage. The young man looked to be around 17 or 18 years old, wearing a beautifully patterned silk robe while carrying a fan in his hand. The young man immediately noticed that Fang An and Zhao Chen were being intercepted by the bodyguards. He intended to call one of the bodyguards to find out the situation, but the young man called it off when he took a closer look at Fang An. The young man's mouth opened slightly, he glanced at the robes that Fang An and Zhao Chen were wearing before rushing over to the two. Elder Fang, I didn't expect to meet you on this trip. The young man saluted while smiling broadly at Fang An, his demeanor making the bodyguards uncomfortable. Young master, I don't seem to recognize you. Fang An scanned the young man's rather handsome face but he was sure that this was their first meeting. The young man introduced himself as Liu Cheng, he then asked about the situation between Fang An and his bodyguards. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 5. Chapter 33 Raven. Elder Fang, please forgive the negligence of my followers who don't know an important person like you. 
Liu Cheng choked his own breath when he saw that his bodyguards were behaving inappropriately. Liu Cheng looked at the bodyguards beside him. What are you waiting for? Immediately apologized to Elder Fang and his disciple. The bodyguards were confused but seeing their master being so respectful towards Fang An, they were sure that Fang An was no ordinary person. The bodyguards immediately apologized and looked apologetic for offending Fang An. They are such loyal followers of the Liu family that they sometimes forget that this path belongs to the Han Empire not the Liu family. Please Elder Fang not take their previous attitude to heart. Liu Cheng again apologized. No problem, it's all just a misunderstanding. Fang An smiled faintly as he shook his head slowly. Fang An intended to continue on but Liu Cheng asked him to stay. Elder Fang, my heart won't be at ease if I don't host you. Liu Cheng wanted to make sure Fang An didn't hold grudges or make a big deal out of this in the future. Even though Fang An had said to forget everything, Liu Cheng insisted on apologizing by giving Fang An and Zhao Chen a banquet. Elder Fang must have traveled for days without having a good meal. Please Elder Fang will enjoy having dinner with me. Liu Cheng kept on cajoling Fang An until finally Fang An could only agree. Zhao Chen didn't really care. After all the past few days the two of them had only been eating bread and dried meat so it wouldn't hurt to taste hot food tonight. Young Master Liu, how did you recognize me? While eating a meal together, Fang An again asked a question that Liu Cheng had not answered before. Liu Cheng coughed lightly before explaining that several years ago Fang An saved his eldest brother and since then the name Fang An the Jade Face Swordsman was well known to most of the Liu family. The uniform of the Valley of the Hundred Swords was eye-catching and easy to remember. Fang An also had the trademark of wearing a mask when going out and had skin that was more beautiful than a girl's. Fang An choked on his drink when he heard Liu Cheng explain that his skin was more beautiful than the average girl's skin. Fang An was quite sensitive to this matter. Zhao Chen devoured the dish with gusto but his eyes were also on the bodyguards around him. There were about 30 bodyguards guarding this group. Three of them were first class warriors while some were second class warriors and the rest were third class warriors. Zhao Chen's attention then turned to Liu Cheng's shadow before smiling sinisterly. Zhao Chen only stared at Liu Cheng's shadow for a few seconds then turned his eyes away. Fang An also looked at Liu Cheng's shadow for a few seconds but didn't show any expression while doing so. Young Master Liu is carrying so many things. Is Young Master's destination still far away? Asked Zhao Chen. Liu Cheng then told that he was on his way to propose to a girl. All the items he brought were dowry for the proposal. The location he was headed for was a city they should reach by tomorrow night if they could maintain their current speed of movement. Even though Zhao Chen was a child, Liu Cheng did not look down on him one bit. Liu Cheng more or less knew the situation of the sects even though he had never joined one. If Fang An took Zhao Chen on a journey at this young age, surely Zhao Chen would have some ability too. It's just that Liu Cheng thinks Zhao Chen is 12 or 13 years old, only a few years younger than him. If Liu Cheng had known that Zhao Chen was only 8 years old, his reaction would not have been this calm. The disciple of the Jade Face Swordsman is definitely not just anyone. Liu Cheng thought as he looked at Zhao Chen. After Fang An completed a mission to rescue an important member of the Liu family, they tried to recruit Fang An to become one of the forces of the Liu family but the offer was flatly rejected. The Liu family then investigated Fang An further and discovered his extraordinary achievements in both the Valley of the Hundred Swords and the Martial World. The Liu family's higher-ups agreed that Fang An would become a great figure in the martial world in the future and thus ordered the Liu family's members to be respectful when meeting him. The Liu family naturally didn't know that Fang An suffered internal injuries which made his future not what they had in mind. It's too late to continue traveling, how about Elder Fang stay with us tonight? I have prepared a tent for you and your disciple. Liu Cheng offered with a big smile. Indeed, in addition to dinner. Liu Cheng invited Fang An to drink wine. When the banquet was over it was already dark. Fang An looked at Zhao Chen for a moment before accepting Liu Cheng's offer. The two then made their way to the tents prepared for them. Only when Fang An and Zhao Chen were out of sight did Liu Cheng heave a sigh of relief. Liu Cheng got up from his seat and entered his tent to rest. Young master, the Jade Face Swordsman is even more powerful than the rumors say. A hoarse voice rang in Liu Cheng's ear. Not long after Liu Cheng entered his tent, a black-robed figure appeared from his shadow. The figure wears a mask in the shape of a white crow's head. Oh. 
I hardly ever hear Elder Wu praise other warriors. Liu Cheng smiled faintly at the masked figure. The masked man before him was Wu Yang, one of the expert level warriors working for the Liu family. Wu Ya was a master of illusion, with his special technique he could hide in someone's shadow. Liu Cheng was one of the talented younger generations of the Liu family so Wu Ya always protected him at all times. Not only the Jade Face Swordsman noticed my presence but even his young disciple could see me hiding in the young master's shadow. Wu Ya's heart stopped for a moment when he noticed Zhao Chen staring at him with a broad grin. Liu Cheng's eyes widened, he couldn't believe Wu Ya's words. Liu Cheng finally couldn't help but smile awkwardly and was grateful that he wasn't being arrogant in front of the master and disciple pair. Wu Ya also added that if he fought himself against Fang An, he felt that there was little chance of him coming out victorious. Wu Ya himself had not expected that the Valley of the Hundred Swords had such a talented young warrior. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more Thant 15 chapter. Pat Rian com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 34 The Flower of Sin. Master, I want to practice a bit before going to sleep. Even though it was already dark but the night was still early for Zhao Chen to rest, he wanted to find a quiet place and consume water ginseng as usual. Don't go too far, this place is not very safe. Fang and didn't forbid him. He felt that Zhao Chen had the ability to protect himself to a certain degree. Zhao Chen nodded slowly before leaving Fang'an alone. He knew that every night during their journey, Fang'an trained his internal strength again. Master's condition has indeed gotten better compared to before but still needs time to fully recover. Zhao Chen thought as he shook his head. Fang'an's internal injuries were indeed very serious, if it weren't for the quality of the bones and internal energy he possessed when he received the wound, Fang'an would probably have died within a few days or at least become paralyzed. Fang'an was still able to live like now and only having a light cough every night was already showing the greatness of his talent. Zhao Chen believed that if Fang'an was born in a large sect and obtained resources that matched his talent, Fang'an could become one of the 10 or 5 strongest figures in the martial world before he was 50 years old. As long as Master's internal injuries are healed, he can still reach the pinnacle of martial arts. It's just that it's taking longer than it should. Zhao Chen muttered under his breath as he looked for a quiet place, the guards didn't seem to care about his presence. After discovering that he was a disciple of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, the way the guards looked at Zhao Chen became completely different. Especially when they realized Fang An was a skilled swordsman, someone who could end their lives without difficulty. Zhao Chen went to a quiet area not too far from the party's camp. He then sat cross-legged and took out a water ginseng. Without hesitation, Zhao Chen swallowed the ginseng and began to absorb its nutrients. The first time he consumed water ginseng, it took Zhao Chen 8 hours to absorb all the nutrients it contained but since possessing the beast tiger bone he only needed 2 hours to absorb a 10 to 20 year old water ginseng. If Zhao Chen practiced non-stop, he could absorb 10 to 12 water ginseng every day. But Zhao Chen was worried that there would be side effects. As far as Zhao Chen knew, there wasn't any warrior who could regularly consume water ginseng every day. Some large sects might have enough wealth to do so but no one would spend that much resources on a single person, let alone use up several water ginseng level resources in one day. Back then the water ginseng wasn't that expensive because the Valley of the Hundred Swords harvested and sold it in large quantities causing many resources of its level to suffer a price drop as well. Now that the price of a water ginseng class resource is still very high, I feel like the richest person in the martial world can train like this. Zhao Chen laughed to himself. Originally Zhao Chen intended to consume two water ginseng tonight, but just as he was about to swallow the second ginseng, he felt a movement in the trees not far from where he sat cross-legged. One. Two. Three. Three second class warriors. Zhao Chen's eyes could see quite well in the darkness. He could see three people wearing silver masks watching Liu Cheng's camp from the top of a tree. One of the three noticed the presence of Zhao Chen who was still in a cross-legged sitting position. He thought that Zhao Chen had not noticed their presence. After all, Zhao Chen and them were quite far apart. Even a first class warrior would not be able to detect the presence of the three at this distance. 
The three masked warriors still watched the camp for a while before leaving without a sound. From their movements, they weren't just spies but trained to kill. Zhao Chen sighed. He then remembered an assassination organization that matched the characteristics of the three people he saw. The Flower of Sin, the largest assassination organization in the Han Empire. They will kill anyone as long as they get paid properly. Its members are divided into several levels, namely bronze masks, silver masks, gold masks and purple masks. The assassin wearing the bronze mask had abilities on par with a third class warrior, the silver mask was on par with a second class warrior, the gold mask had the abilities of a first class warrior while the purple mask, the most elite members had the ability on par with an expert warrior. This organization was still relatively young, only around a hundred years old but their track record was long and the flower of sin was feared by many. As I recall the Sin Flower was destroyed because they killed the prime disciple of one of the strongest sects of the white sect several years before the chaos era began. Zhao Chen rubbed his chin as he tried to remember. The biggest mistake of the Sin Flower is that they feel they have the ability to face one of the strongest sects of the white sect because they almost never fail in carrying out their missions. Indeed, one of the strongest sects of the white sect had to pay quite a heavy price to eradicate the flower of sin from the martial world. Zhao Chen heard that there were at least 300 purple masked assassins joining the flower of sin, some of which were on par with titled warriors. They definitely don't know that this young master of the Liu family is being protected by an expert warrior, moreover this person is an illusionist who possesses great abilities. Zhao Chen slowly shook his head. If not for his refined perception and experience from his previous life, Zhao Chen would definitely not be able to detect Wu Ya's presence. Zhao Chen scratched his head, he chose not to think about it too much as he felt it was none of his business. Zhao Chen then returned to the tent and told Fang An about the incident. Silver Mask? Second class warrior? After hearing Zhao Chen's story, Fang An pondered for a bit, it's possible that they are from the Flower of Sin. Not necessarily that they are targeting young Master Liu. Master Mean? Zhao Chen furrowed his forehead. Fang and tells that while escorting Yin Song back to the palace, they were intercepted by assassins from the Flower of Sin. Fang and fights and manages to seriously injure a purple mask assassin and kill several gold mask assassins who tried to attack Yin Song. Fang and thought there was a possibility that the Flower of Sin was coming to seek revenge on him. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 35 Protector. Master, I feel like they don't even know you're here. Zhao Chen smiled faintly. Fang An's idea of the Flower of Sin wanting to seek revenge on him made sense but Zhao Chen knew that the Flower of Sin was not that kind of organization. Zhao Chen was actually quite surprised that the Sin Flower dared to try to kill the Crown Prince, their guts were really big. Considering all that had happened over a year ago, if the Flower of Sin wanted to seek revenge they would have done so when Fang An was traveling back from the capital to the Valley of the Hundred Swords. If the Flower of Sin wants to finish off Master, they should at least send three purple mask assassins and it's very likely that one or two of them will be killed. The Flower of Sin would not be willing to sacrifice such a large amount of resources without earning a penny. Zhao Chen thought. It's just that it wouldn't hurt if the two of them were more vigilant. Fang An and Zhao Chen then took a break after talking about the matter. Fang An planned to report this matter to Liu Cheng the next morning. At sunrise. Liu Cheng came to Fang An's tent and invited the two of them to enjoy the breakfast he had prepared. After eating breakfast, Fang An informed him about the whereabouts of the Flower of Sin that had inspected the camp last night. Flower of Sin? Liu Cheng's face turned slightly pale, he certainly knew the meaning behind the name. Elder Fang, can I beg you for help? Even though Liu Cheng had Wu Ya's relentless protection, the name Flower of Sin made him panic. Liu Cheng had heard that several people from noble families were wiped out by this organization. What made the Flower of Sin so famous recently was that they dared to attempt an assassination on Yin Song a year ago. This matter. Fang An looked hesitant to accept it. Elder Fang, please. Liu Cheng asked Fang An to escort him to the place of the girl he wanted to propose to. Elder Fang, 
We are walking in the same direction and of course I didn't ask Elder to do this voluntarily. Liu Cheng called his servant and whispered something. Before long the servant brought over a small wooden chest containing 50 gold coins. Elder Fang, I don't have much personal money with me, but I can pay more when I arrive at my destination. I understand Elder Fang is not one to desire treasures, but apart from money, I have nothing of value to give. Actually there were various items in this group but all of them were dowry for the proposal that Liu Cheng had promised to the family of the girl he adored. It was not appropriate for the noble under any circumstances to back down on the promise so he planned to hand over the dowry first before borrowing it back to pay Fang An. One gold coin was enough to support a simple family of four for half to one year. 50 gold coins seemed a lot but to a warrior this amount was absolutely nothing let alone a titled one like Fang An. To put it simply, a 10 year old ginseng water grade resource for example could be worth 50 to 70 gold pieces. If a warrior were to develop his ability to use resources then the amount of gold coins he would have to spend would be a monstrous amount. Even though a resource like the 10 year old water ginseng was of little use to a warrior of Fangan's level unless it was consumed regularly like Zhao Chen did, in the entire martial world only Zhao Chen could enjoy this style of practice. For a swordsman of Fangan's level, by clearing a mission from the Valley of the Hundred Swords, he could earn 3 to 500 gold pieces worth of rewards. Some dangerous tasks could earn Fang a thousand gold pieces in one mission. It was just that Fang hadn't carried out any missions for the past year or so, he could still clearly remember Zhao Chen seeing the better quality sword in the War Sword Pavilion but Fang couldn't afford one. Even though Fang didn't show it, he felt bad as a teacher. Fang and Zhao Chen had a long way to go to the capital while Fang supplies were not much. Fang An didn't want to be too frugal to the point of making this trip an unpleasant memory for Zhao Chen. Young Master Liu, I accept your request. Fang An decided. Thank you Elder Fang. I will always remember your kindness. Liu Cheng's expression brightened because Fang An was willing to escort him. Zhao Chen frowned. He didn't understand why Fang An had accepted this job. If Zhao Chen knew Fang An's thoughts. He would probably feel really guilty considering that master and disciple's life could be so much easier if Zhao Chen was willing to sell his water ginseng to the sect. Although feeling confused, Zhao Chen did not question Fang An's decision to his teacher. Liu Cheng ordered his entourage to leave immediately, even though Fang An was now guarding him, Liu Cheng only felt really safe when he was in the residence of his idol. Of course the Liu family's bodyguards received information about the flower of sin. The expressions on the guards' faces changed. Their movements became faster as well as prompting the maids to hurry up too. Fang An and Zhao Chen ride the same carriage as Liu Cheng, along the way Liu Cheng tries to strengthen his relationship with Fang An. Titled warrior were only one in a hundred expert warrior, being friends with a warrior of Fang An's level had never been a disadvantage. Liu Cheng's entourage was stopped by robbers who tried to take away his dowry but the robbers were no match for the guards. The three first class warriors who usually wouldn't move unless the other bodyguards were pressed immediately stepped in to face the robbers. They all wanted to get to their destination without further delay. The name Flower of Sunshore is a good motivation for them. Zhao Chen said with a chuckle as he peeked at the battle of the bodyguards and robbers. Liu Cheng raised his eyebrows when he realized that Zhao Chen could laugh while watching the killing even though Liu Cheng himself felt uncomfortable seeing the massacre that was happening outside his carriage especially when a fishy smell started to smell inside the train. Fang An already knew Zhao Chen's behavior like this so was not too surprised. There were no other obstacles after the group encountered the robbers. Liu Cheng's party could see their destination city when the sun was almost setting. Without delay. The group headed to a luxurious residence in the city. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 36 Masked Assassin. The girl Liu Cheng wanted to propose to turned out to be no ordinary girl. Coming from a wealthy merchant family and possessing a beauty that is not easy to find, the girl is also a master of literature and many other arts. Of course the Liu family wouldn't let him marry a random girl. Zhao Chen thought with a faint smile. Fang An intended to say goodbye after Liu Cheng's group arrived safely at the girl's residence, 
but Liu Cheng asked the two of them to stay longer. Elder Fang, the fee I gave before was far from enough for Elder's help. Give me some time so I can give what the elders should get, I will talk to my future father-in-law. Liu Cheng said. Young Master Liu, there is no need. After all, I didn't do anything. Fang and smiled faintly, he just sat accompanying Liu Cheng in the carriage. There was no chance for him to act so getting more than 50 gold pieces for Fang and was too much. Elder Fang, don't say that. It was already dark too, instead of looking for lodging again, it was better to stay at this residence. I guarantee that the quality will be better than any hotel elder can find. Liu Cheng was indeed good at making Fang and speechless, no wonder the Liu family was called the ministerial family because his descendants were very good at using their mouths. Zhao Chen understood the reason Liu Cheng had asked Fang An and himself to stay longer was actually because Liu Cheng discovered that there were no skilled swordsmen in this residence. This young master Liu seems to be sure that he is the one being targeted by the flower of sin. Does he have any big enemies? Zhao Chen thought while observing Liu Cheng's movements. Fang An was invited by Liu Cheng to meet his future in-laws and wife while Zhao Chen had no intention of joining them. Zhao Chen explained he wanted to spend his time alone. Liu Cheng asked one of the bodyguards who had first class warrior skills to guard Zhao Chen, even though Zhao Chen felt that it was unnecessary but he did not refuse it. Zhao Chen went to look for a quiet place in the residence, he found a quite large garden and then chose to sit on a large rock. I will meditate for a few hours, you don't have to wait for me. Zhao Chen said to the bodyguards following him. The guard frowned. He didn't answer but leaned against one of the trees while continuing to observe Zhao Chen. His pride did not allow Zhao Chen to rule over him after all if something happened to Zhao Chen then Liu Cheng would blame him. Zhao Chen didn't care about the bodyguard anymore, he turned his back to the bodyguard before starting to consume the water ginseng. It didn't take long before Zhao Chen's body emitted an aura that made the bodyguards nearby find it hard to breathe. This kid. He is also a warrior. The bodyguard initially thought Zhao Chen was joking when he said he wanted to meditate for a few hours. According to the bodyguard, Zhao Chen was still too young to learn internal strength arts. There were indeed some great sect disciples who were capable of cultivating profound energy at a young age, but they were all martial geniuses. Seeing the aura radiating from Zhao Chen's body, the bodyguard began to think that Zhao Chen was one of the geniuses in the stories he heard. An hour passed. Zhao Chen didn't budge from his position at all. When Zhao Chen managed to digest all of the water ginseng's nutrients, he let out a long breath and white smoke emerged from his mouth. Zhao Chen wanted to consume another ginseng but he felt a murderous intent towards him. The killing intent was faint, its owner must have been trying to hide it but Zhao Chen still managed to notice and locate the position of the person who was targeting him. He seems to be waiting for his comrades. Zhao Chen was pretty sure the hiding figure was one of the killers from the Flower of Sin, the reason he had not launched his attack was due to the presence of bodyguards near Zhao Chen. If they still want to attack in a residence that has many guardians like this, Flower of Sin will surely mobilize many of its members. It's not impossible that some purple mask assassins will appear. Zhao Chen scratched his head, he really didn't want to get involved in this matter. Zhao Chen didn't know Liu Cheng and maybe in his previous life this young master of the Liu family died at the hands of the Flower of Sin organization. Zhao Chen didn't want to change the history of people who weren't related to him, it could be that if Liu Cheng lived after this there would be many changes in the future that might not necessarily be in his favor. I must get master to leave this place immediately. Zhao Chen got up from his seat, he rushed to find Fang An. If the Flower of Sin really sent a few assassins in the purple masks here to kill Liu Cheng then the combination of Fang An and Liu Cheng's protector Wu Ya might not be enough to deal with them. The bodyguard who had almost fallen asleep from watching Zhao Chen sit motionless for an hour woke up from his reverie. Down. Shouted Zhao Chen suddenly. The bodyguard was a little surprised but he did as Zhao Chen said, right after he ducked a knife stuck into the tree exactly where his head had been previously. The guard quickly rolled over and took cover behind a tree as several more knives flew at him. Zhao Chen cursed in his heart, he didn't expect it to be so late. Zhao Chen could feel that there were 8 additional people near the figure he managed to detect earlier. Little did Zhao Chen notice, 
his order for the Liu family's bodyguards to bow down made the assassins of the Flower of Sin so shocked. They believed they had sneakily attacked the bodyguard while harboring their killing intent. These assassins also had the confidence in their knife-throwing abilities that had been trained through years. I'll take care of the guard, you take care of the little brat and don't let him escape. The assassin wearing the golden mask jumped up high after saying that. The other eight assassins, three were in silver masks while the rest were in bronze masks. They all obeyed the order and immediately rushed to surround Zhao Chen. Little brat, if you don't want to get hurt then obey us. Said one of the silver masked assassins. Zhao Chen glanced at the bodyguard guarding him. Now that bodyguard was having a fierce battle with the golden masked assassin. Even though both of them have the same abilities, namely first class warriors, it is clear that the golden masked assassin is superior. The assassin in the golden mask besides having strength also has a lot of combat experience compared to the bodyguard. The assassins from the flower of sin thought their plan was going well until Zhao Chen did something that shocked them. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 37 Zhao Chen's Abilities. Little brat, what do you want to do? One of the Flower of Sin assassins said in a cold tone. These assassins thought Zhao Chen would follow their wishes while crying in fear. In fact Zhao Chen was acting beyond their calculations. Not only did Zhao Chen not show any fear, he even smiled broadly. Not only that, Zhao Chen pulled out the short sword that was previously sheathed at his waist. Wanna catch me? It won't be that easy. Zhao Chen said with a chuckle. Before the eight flower of sin assassins could digest what was happening, Zhao Chen had already moved forward to attack one of the silver masked assassins. Zhao Chen's movements were agile and his sword swings were also without hesitation. The silver masked killer who was his target naturally would not expect someone as young as Zhao Chen to strike out with such confidence. Zhao Chen actually wanted to cut the assassin's neck but his stature and short blade made his attack range too limited. Zhao Chen thrust his short sword into the assassin's heart with all his might. Wah. The silver masked assassin was left speechless before starting to collapse to the ground lifelessly. Before the assassin's body even hit the ground, Zhao Chen had already pulled his sword back and attacked the bronze masked assassin closest to him. Zhao Chen's movements were too fast for third grade warrior's eyes to follow, even second grade warriors would find it hard to follow. Stop him. It had never crossed any of these flower of sin's minds that Zhao Chen was such a highly skilled warrior at such a young age. One thing Zhao Chen had learned from meeting Yin Zuhu a few years ago was that a trained human body could release deadly power even if it lacked internal energy. Thanks to the beast tiger bone as well as physical training and regularly consuming water ginseng, Zhao Chen's full punch power could match that of someone within 30 circles of internal strength. More than a year ago Zhao Chen's kick was already able to injure a first class warrior, now that he had progressed rapidly. It was not difficult for him to keep up with one or two first class warriors. The eight flower of sin killers who tried to take her hostage had chosen the wrong opponent. Those assassins were completely unprepared for a fight with someone as powerful as Zhao Chen. If they were alert and used attacks in formation then they would not lose without a fight like this. One by one the flower of sin assassins died at Zhao Chen's hands. The short sword he used was dull and slightly damaged after being used to kill five people. Zhao Chen then took one of the Flower of Sin's killing weapons and used it to finish off the remaining three. The Gold Masked Killer and the Liu family's bodyguard were too engrossed in their fight to notice what had happened. After all, it only took a few moments for Zhao Chen to finish off the eight assassins. Zhao Chen felt that the quality of the sword used by the Sin Flower Killers was average but the secret weapon they had in the form of a small knife was of a good quality. Zhao Chen gathered all the secret weapons from the bodies of his victims and stored them away, he felt that he could use them later. What happened? The Golden Masked Assassin and the Liu family's bodyguards both took their distance for breath, it was then that the Golden Masked Assassin noticed his comrades lying lifeless around Zhao Chen. The Liu family's bodyguard was equally astonished at the sight. Zhao Chen threw two knives at the dazed assassin in the Golden Mask, but the assassin used his sword to brush them away. The golden masked killer was a first class warrior, 
Even in the midst of his confusion it was not easy to attack him from such a distance. It was just that the golden masked killer didn't realize the attack was meant to distract him. Zhao Chen stepped forward, threw another knife, this time it flew faster than the previous two knives. The assassin in the golden mask again managed to ward off the knife but this time almost failed to do so. The golden masked assassin was breaking out in cold sweat. It was not that he had never seen a stronger warrior than Zhao Chen but this was the first time he had seen someone this young possess abilities above him. Zhao Chen threw a punch when he was close enough to the assassin. The assassin raised his sword, intending to use his weapon to block the blow. Trang. The Liu family bodyguard's eyes widened when he saw Zhao Chen's punch not only made the assassin he was facing back a few steps but also broke the sword he wielded in half. Zhao Chen smiled faintly. The golden masked assassin must not have been aware that the three knives he threw were of such immense power that even if they were parried they would leave cracks on the assassin's blade. Zhao Chen's attack didn't stop there. He unleashed a kick with all his might towards the assassin's stomach, sending his opponent's body flying several meters until it hit a tree behind him. Zhao Chen's kick managed to make the assassin vomit blood. The assassin could also feel several of his ribs breaking. Liu's family guard hurried to approach and drew his sword on the neck of the killer who was now sitting limp holding his stomach. There's no need to waste time trying to get information out of him. Those flower of sin killers will tightly shut their mouths. After all they have poison stored in their teeth to kill themselves if caught. Zhao Chen said coldly. The Liu family guard frowned while the gold masked assassin was shocked and looked at Zhao Chen as if he was seeing a ghost. About the poison in the teeth of the flower of sin assassins. No one knows except the members of the Flower of Sin. Had their members been forced to use it, outsiders wouldn't have realized it was caused by poison. Before the Golden Mask Assassin had time to digest the situation, a knife had already been lodged in his neck. The Assassin struggled for a few moments before breathing his last. Until he died, he couldn't believe that a first class warrior like him had died at the hands of a harmless looking little boy. The Liu family bodyguard couldn't breathe and now looked at Zhao Chen with a feeling of dread. This bodyguard had worked like this for 15 years and had seen a lot of blood so he knew that a person who could take another person's life without blinking like Zhao Chen just now could only be done by someone who had killed countless times. Why daydream? We have to go back to see my master and young master Liu immediately. Not caring about the bodyguard's reaction. Zhao Chen hurriedly left the garden and headed to where Fang An was. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more Fan 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4. Chapter 38 Purple Mask. Fang An felt a little awkward when Liu Cheng kept praising himself in front of his future in-laws and wife. The way Liu Cheng's wife-to-be looked at him also made Fang An uncomfortable. Even though Fang An wore a mask that left only his mouth and eyes visible, everyone could still judge that he was a handsome man. No wonder this morning I saw a rainbow even though it wasn't raining. It turns out that my residence has had a great hero come. We are really lucky. Liu Cheng's future father-in-law was also very excited after hearing about Fang An. For a rich merchant like him. Having a skilled warrior in his family was already an extraordinary fortune. Meanwhile being able to get in touch with a titled warrior like Fang An was a mere dream. Luckily this merchant had a beautiful as well as intelligent daughter who was able to attract one of the young masters Liu from the Liu family to have such an opportunity now. Fang An couldn't help but smile awkwardly in response to these words but his smile didn't last long as he felt a large amount of killing intent approaching the room they were in. At almost the same time Fang and felt that killing intent, a robed figure appeared from Liu Cheng's shadow. Wu Ya's appearance from the shadows shocked Liu Cheng's future in-laws and wife. Young master, take cover behind me. Wu Ya then looked at Fang and, warrior Fang, my name is Wu Ya from the Liu family. I need your help to deal with the upcoming problem in a moment. Senior Wu doesn't need to be shy. Fang An got up from his seat then his body released a fighting aura that made Wu Ya swallow his saliva. Liu Cheng wanted to ask what happened to Wu Ya, but before he could say anything, the door to their room opened. A dozen people in silver and gold masks entered the room, some of them were covered in blood and Fang An knew it wasn't the blood of the masked people. 
Fangan's gaze turned cold as he realized that outside this room there might have been heavy casualties. Fangan was also worried about Zhao Chen's safety. Liu Cheng, today is your death day. Apart from the dozens of silver and gold masked assassins, another three people entered the room. The aura that these three people gave off was far different from dozens of others, and both Fangan and Wu Ya realized that these three were expert warriors with high inner strength. The three of them wore purple masks, they were the highest class assassins in the Flower of Sin organization. Young Master Liu, exactly who is your enemy? Even when the Flower of Sin intended to kill the Crown Prince, they only sent one assassin of this level but three came to finish you off. Fang and asked Liu Cheng. Liu Cheng smiled bitterly. Elder Fang, this is not my personal problem but rather the Liu family as a whole. Some time ago the prince who intended to become Emperor of Han using the support of the Black Sect came to the Liu family for support. Of course the Liu family head flatly refused the request. They didn't even intend to support the crown prince let alone a prince who wanted to rebel. The prince then said that the head of the Liu family would regret having refused his request and the descendants of the Liu family would pay the price. Liu Cheng was pretty sure it was the prince who hired the services of the Flower of Sin organization, considering that there weren't many people who could afford to pay such a high price that made the Flower of Sin deploy this many members. The three purple masked assassins didn't move immediately, they seemed to be waiting for something. This made Fang an even more anxious. The existence of Fang and by Liu Cheng's side was indeed beyond the Flower of Sin's expectations. They had gotten information that an important Liu family descendant like Liu Cheng was always escorted by a skilled swordsman that's why the organization sent the three of them over. Now the situation was not going according to the Flower of Sin's plan. Fang and was a titled swordsman, his skills enough to draw against all three purple masked assassins at once. If Fang An was assisted by Wu Ya then the defeat of the three of them would be certain. That was why the three had suggested using Zhao Chen as a hostage. They knew a person of the white sect like Fang and placed the utmost importance on the safety of his comrades. They intend to buy time. Senior Wu, protect young master Liu and the others. I will charge forward. Fang An was increasingly convinced that Zhao Chen was in danger. Thus he intended to attack first. As long as Fang and could finish off the three purple masked assassins, the situation would become more manageable. Wu Ya nodded slowly, as long as Fang and could deal with the two purple masked assassins alone, Wu Ya would have no trouble protecting Liu Cheng from dozens of silver and gold masked assassins assisted by a purple masked assassin. Fang and drew his sword then channeled the energy inside, his sword became slightly glowing and without a doubt Fang and faced the three purple masked assassins at the same time. Good, I want to see what the Jade Face Swordsman is capable of today. One of the assassins in the purple mask drew his weapon which was a short sword and met Fang An's attack. The other two purple mask assassins also drew their weapons, preparing to face Fang An while the other dozen assassins had no intention of interfering in the fight after feeling the strength radiating from Fang An's body. Fang An's and the purple mask assassins attacks met, but the difference in strength between the two was obvious. The other two purple masked assassins rushed to their comrade's aid. Usually even a warrior like Fang would find it difficult to use all of his abilities in a narrow room like the one they were in now, but in fact Fang and selection of techniques and attack steps were so smooth and able to keep up with the three of them. The exchange of attacks occurred so quickly and Fang who used his internal strength without restraint allowed Fang to repel the three purple masked killers out of the room. The dozens of silver and gold masked assassins glanced at each other before simultaneously drawing their weapons. Wu Ya waved his hand and took out the long chain hanging from both of his hands. Want to kill the Liu family's young master? Do not dream. Wu Ya stepped forward slowly while glaring coldly at the Sin Flower assassins. Suddenly, there were two black shadows that came out of Wu Ya's body and immediately turned into a figure that was exactly like Wu Ya. Seeing Wu Ya now transforming into three people, the Flower of Sin assassins realized they were facing an illusion master. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more Thant 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 2. Chapter 39 Iron Eagle.
The expressions on Zhao Chen and the Liu family's bodyguards who were with him turned ugly when they saw the bodies of the servants and the guards of this residence lying on the ground covered in blood, some were even in a pathetic state. These flower of sin killers were more ruthless than rumored, killing not only their targets but also everyone who might have been eyewitnesses. Zhao Chen said annoyed. Zhao Chen could guess that the reason the flower of sin acted like this was because it wanted to increase their fame as well as make the assassination organization even more feared. No wonder one day this organization was destroyed because it was too big headed. If there is an opportunity and my ability is sufficient, there is nothing wrong with me destroying this organization before the time is right. Zhao Chen's inner heart was increasingly unable to bear the sight of so many innocent people's corpses. The residence that was previously immaculate and luxurious now smelled fishy and drenched in blood. One thing that amazed Zhao Chen was that the flower of sin assassins could kill quickly and regularly. Most of the victims did not have time to cry out for help, most died from heavy bleeding from neck wounds. When he found several assassins in bronze masks making their rounds to ensure that no one survived, Zhao Chen used a secret weapon he had obtained from the bodies of the assassins who had tried to take him hostage to finish them off. The bronze masked assassins only possessed the abilities of a third class warrior, compared to ordinary humans they were certainly strong but in front of Zhao Chen they were powerless. Before they could do anything, some of the assassins were killed by knives that went through their heads. The Liu family's bodyguards grew increasingly afraid of Zhao Chen even though the two of them were on the same side. The bodyguard felt that Zhao Chen was capable of killing without a second thought, as if he had no feelings. The bodyguard remembered when he was 12 years old, even the sight of chicken blood made him frown. When one kills another being, a murderous aura will emerge from their body. The more Zhao Chen killed, the thicker the aura enveloped his body. What's more, the people who died at Zhao Chen's hands also had a murderous aura, this caused the killing aura in Zhao Chen's body to form more quickly. If at this young age he already has murderous aura, what about when he grows up? The Liu family bodyguard muttered as he swallowed his saliva. Zhao Chen's actions made the other flower of sin killers realize what he was up to. Zhao Chen frowned when he saw the many assassins who had come to take Liu Cheng's life. It's not cheap to move this many assassins, who would be so eager to finish off young master Liu? Zhao Chen was confused, he thought that if it wasn't for Fangan's presence and himself. Liu Cheng would definitely have been killed in this attack. The flower of sin assassins began to gather at Zhao Chen's location. Now there were not only bronze mask assassins but also several silver mask assassins and two gold mask assassins. Zhao Chen looked around and found that there were at least 30 assassins surrounding him. This kid killed our comrades. One of the golden mask assassins commented, if not for the murderous aura emitting from Zhao Chen's body. He would also not be able to believe everything in front of him. Don't underestimate this brat. Attack him in formation. Another golden masked assassin orders. The Liu family's bodyguard fell into a panic while Zhao Chen also became a little doubtful. Even if Zhao Chen had strength above that of a first class warrior yet be attacked by this many assassins, he would not be able to escape either. Zhao Chen tightly gripped the knife in each hand. He had not expected that the number of enemies would be this many. Ha. Huh. Looks like I came late. A loud voice sounded and caught the attention of all the killers. Zhao Chen and the Liu family's bodyguards also looked at the direction the sound came from. On top of a wall not far from where Zhao Chen was surrounded, stood a black-robed person with a mask in the shape of an eagle's head. In the figure's right hand, a sword has been drawn from its scabbard and is ready to devour its victims. Even though the figure looked calm and its voice sounded old, Zhao Chen could feel an enormous power radiating from the figure. Elder Fairy. We're safe. Liu's bodyguard could recognize this figure, for him this figure was hope. Zhao Chen attempted to gauge the strength of the eagle masked figure, his strength was at least equal to or even stronger than Fang'an's. Liu family bodyguards call him Elder Fei. could he be the famous Fei Ying? Zhao Chen thought as he tried to remember that familiar name. In his previous life, Zhao Chen had also dealt with the five Han noble families though not profoundly. Zhao Chen knows that the Liu family has three guardian figures, one of which is a person named Fei Ying who is nicknamed the Iron Eagle. Flower of Sin Killers, how dare you try to take the life of a descendant of the Liu family. Fei Ying didn't want to mince words, 
He moved as fast as the wind and started attacking the flower of sin assassins. Zhao Chen also did not remain silent. The assassin's attention was now divided in two and Zhao Chen would not miss this golden opportunity. The flower of sin assassins tried to put up a fight but Fei Ying's strength was too far above theirs. Only the purple masked assassins could face off against Fei Ying. They tried to retreat but Fei Ying attacked them on one side while Zhao Chen was on the other. In a few breaths, several flower of sin killers fell to the ground. Fei Ying had indeed continued to attack relentlessly but he was actually extremely shocked in his heart when he saw Zhao Chen attack the assassins with him. Fei Ying had never met a boy with such high level of martial ability. Moreover every attack Zhao Chen was extremely lethal, almost all of his opponents lost their lives in a single strike. This way of fighting was normally only possessed by someone who had gone through a thousand battles or killed over ten thousand people. Who is this child? Why does he have this kind of killing ability? Fei Ying was completely confused but he still realized his priority. The Liu family bodyguard finally took action, although he wasn't sure he could deal with the assassin in the golden mask but with his abilities he was sure he could finish off the assassin in the bronze and silver masks. The cooperation of the three made the flower of sin assassins overwhelmed, especially after Fei Ying finished off the two golden masked killers. The other assassins couldn't hold out much longer. In the end all the killers lay on the ground lifeless like their previous victims. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon.com Miraclebringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 48 Years. Elder, we still have to save the others. As Fei Ying cleaned the blood off his sword, Zhao Chen came up to him. Upon learning that Liu Cheng and Wu Ya might still be alive, Fei Ying asks Zhao Chen to show him the way. Together with the Liu family's bodyguards, the three of them rushed towards the living room where Fang An and the others should have been when the attack happened. Sure enough, not long after entering the courtyard of the main building, Zhao Chen and the others could hear the sound of a battle going on not far away. Elder. The youth who is currently fighting the three assassins is my master, please help him. When Zhao Chen and the others went further, they found Fang An in a drawer with three purple masked assassins. Zhao Chen became worried so asked Fei Ying to help Fang An. Fei Ying did not refuse the request, he drew his sword and joined the fight. Fei Ying's sudden arrival naturally shocked the flower of some assassins. Fang An was also a little surprised but he recognized Fei Ying. Elder Fei, I didn't expect to meet you in this place. I was more surprised to see your disciple. We can talk after we finish off these three people. Fang An was confused, he thought it was Fei Ying who had saved Zhao Chen but these words made Fang An reconsider. The combination of Fang An and Fei Ying made the three flower of some assassins push. Fang An's presence had already exceeded their calculations and now a figure like Fei Ying appeared. The three purple masked killers try to escape but are unsuccessful. Fang An and Fei Ying managed to finish off one purple masked assassin each, while the remaining one chose suicide. Zhao Chen could see Liu Cheng with Wu Ya as well as the owner of this residence with Liu Cheng's future wife watching everything from a distance. You could say the situation had gotten under control. As long as Fang An and Fei Ying were here. Unless the Flower of Sin organization dispatched 10 to 15 purple masked assassins then Zhao Chen would be fine. Senior Fei, thank you for coming to help. Wu Ya paid his respects, among the warriors working for the Liu family, Fei Ying held a high position. Elder Fei, I'm grateful that you came here but how did you know we were going to be attacked? Liu Cheng felt relieved because he knew very well about Fei Ying who was one of the strongest warriors of the Liu family. Fei Ying took a deep breath, he was actually quite exhausted from the long journey and having to deal with several expert swordsmen. If it wasn't for Fang An's help, he would also be having a hard time facing the killer from the Flower of Sin. Old Master sent me after first young master was attacked. Fei Ying also said Liu family's first young master, Liu Cheng's biological brother was in critical condition and might be difficult to save. Fei Ying said they could continue the conversation later. The most important thing was to clear up everything that happened in this residence. Many of the victims needed proper burials. Liu Cheng's future father-in-law didn't complain that so many victims fell on his side, 
He was even grateful that he was still able to keep himself and his daughter alive. Chenna, don't stay away from master for the time being. Fang and wasn't sure that the situation was safe, he asked Zhao Chen to stay close to him. To be honest Fang and didn't want to get involved any further, if it wasn't for Fei Ying asking him to stay longer because he had something to talk about then Fang and would have already left this residence after the fight was over. Fei Ying asked Liu Cheng to prepare a room so he could talk to Fang and. Fei Ying asked Zhao Chen to wait outside the room. Brother Fang, I admit that you have a really interesting student. I don't understand Elder Fei's meaning. Fang and still didn't have the chance to ask what happened to Zhao Chen, so he didn't have any idea yet. Fei Ying then told him everything he witnessed. Fang and looked so surprised when he found out. Brother Fang doesn't know the ability of your own disciple. Fei Ying noticed Fang and's surprise. It was obvious that Fang and did not know Zhao Chen was above a first class warrior at such a young age. I realize my disciple is talented, but I don't know his limit yet. His development speed is also beyond reason. Fang and smiled awkwardly. I see what you mean, still around 12 or 13 years old right? This kind of ability even in big sex is hard to find, but brother Fang also has a similar ability at your disciple's age so this can be more acceptable. Fei Ying nodded slowly. Um. Chenna is still 8 years old now. Fei Ying coughed as he choked on his own breath. He couldn't believe what he had heard but Fei Ying realized there was no advantage for Fang and to lie to him. 8 years. The Valley of the Hundred Sword seems to have continuously spawned geniuses these past few years. Fei Ying's tone changed slightly, there was all within it. Fang and's emergence as a great genius in the Valley of the Hundred Swords could be said to be a coincidence, now that Fang and had a disciple that was even more genius than himself. Fei Yin could see the future of the Valley of the Hundred Swords even brighter than many people thought. Fei Yin then did not elaborate on Zhao Chen but thanked Fang and for saving Liu Cheng's life. Fei Yin promised to pay a fair price for this service. If there is anything that brother Fang wants to ask for as long as the Liu family is able to do it, we will oblige. Fei Yin said confidently. Fang and actually wanted to refuse but he suddenly thought of something, if the Liu family doesn't mind. I would like to request a sword that my disciple can use. If his abilities are like what Elder Fei described, Chenna needs a good sword to be able to use his abilities to their fullest. Ah, that doesn't matter. I did intend to give a separate gift to Brother Fang's apprentice since he also played a part in overcoming the attack this time. Without your disciple's help, I won't be able to finish off all the Flower of Sin assassins that have infiltrated here. The two of them then continued chatting in smaller talk about the current state of the martial world and also the politics of the Han Empire. Zhao Chen who was waiting outside the room could hear everything without difficulty, he was racking his brains to find a good explanation for his strength. Zhao Chen had not expected Fei Yin to reveal everything that happened to Fang and without hiding a bit. Zhao Chen could only curse inwardly that Fei Ying had gotten him into trouble. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 15 chapter. Patreon com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 41 Secret Weapon. To Zhao Chen's surprise, Fang and did not go into the slightest bit about everything Fei Ying had told him. After conversing with Fei Ying, Fang and led Zhao Chen to the room that had been prepared for them and rested. Master, you don't want to ask about what happened between this disciple and the flower of sin killers? Zhao Chen finally chose to speak first. Elder Fei of the Liu family has already told me everything. Fang An answered briefly. Zhao Chen smiled awkwardly, confused by the situation he was in. Fang An did not question Zhao Chen's higher level of ability nor the reason he killed so many people so easily and seemed unbothered by it all. Actually, what caught Fang An's attention even more was that Zhao Chen's clothes were so clean, there were barely any traces of blood. This meant that all of Zhao Chen's opponents were killed in a single strike by his hands, as per Fei Ying's story. Fang An could faintly feel the killing aura on Zhao Chen's body, what actually interested him more was where did Zhao Chen learn to hide this kind of killing aura from. Master has always believed that Chen is a gifted disciple. So master is not surprised that you have such high abilities. Fang and smiled as he stroked Zhao Chen's head. Master is sure that Chen's heart is actually gentle. 
Zhao Chen couldn't hold himself back, he hugged Fang and tightly. In this life and in his previous life, only Fang and could accept it wholeheartedly. Disciple will not let master down, disciple will become someone master can be proud of. Whispered Zhao Chen. Chenna, master has always been proud of you. Fang and felt warm in his chest seeing his disciple so filial. Fang and didn't care if Zhao Chen was able to kill like a cold blooded killer as long as his reason was to protect himself and the people precious to him. Returning from the capital, Master wants you to take the exam at the Tower of the Hundred Swords. With your skills you will become the best student of your generation and also the youngest sword elder in history in the future. Fang and reminded. Zhao Chen scratched his cheek, not knowing how to answer Fang and but in the end Zhao Chen nodded slowly. The Tower of the Hundred Swords was one of the most important buildings in the Valley of the Hundred Swords. The tower has four floors and is a test for all sect disciples. If one could clear the first floor then he already had a third class warrior, clearing the second meant he was equal to a second class warrior while being able to pass the third floor meant equaling a first class warrior. Those who cleared the first floor of the Tower of the Hundred Swords would be called outer disciples. Those who cleared the second floor were called inner disciples, while those who cleared the third floor were elite disciples. If one could clear the fourth floor of the Hundred Swords Tower it meant they were an expert warrior. Those who complete this are no longer students but teachers or administrators of sects and hold other important positions. Those who cleared the fourth floor before the age of 30 could have the chance to become one of the sword elders. Fang and saw that as long as Zhao Chen's development speed remained the same then by the time the two returned to the Valley of the Hundred Swords, Zhao Chen should be able to clear the fourth floor of the Tower of the Hundred Swords. At that time, Zhao Chen was the youngest teacher in history. Fang and was sure that Jiang Kun would pay attention to Zhao Chen and provide him with valuable resources. The position of Sword Elder had definitely gone to Zhao Chen and it was not impossible that Jiang Kun would choose Zhao Chen to be his successor as Sec Master. Little did Fang and know that Zhao Chen was disinterested in all that, becoming the Sec Leader was not something that Zhao Chen wanted. Zhao Chen knew that in the martial world, a position was indeed important but what was more important was possessing high abilities. Zhao Chen's current focus was on himself becoming so much stronger that he was able to protect the Valley of the Hundred Swords and the people precious to him from anyone who tried to harm him. Fang and felt quite exhausted, fighting three skilled swordsmen at his condition was indeed not an easy matter. Both of them then chose to rest and restore their body condition. At the same time, news of the massacre at the residence had spread throughout the small town. The mayor as well as the security guards came to investigate. Liu Cheng used his family's influence to quell all the trouble, after all neither the leader nor the local officials had the strength to take on the Flower of Sin organization even if they wanted to. The Flower of Sin organization not only failed the mission but also lost three skilled warriors. At their peak, they only had 300 skilled warriors, losing three such powerful members would be a heavy blow to them. Zhao Chen thought as he digested the situation again. According to Zhao Chen, after this incident, the Flower of Sin would be even more careful in operating and improving the abilities of their members. The development of this organization was also definitely slower compared to his previous life. When night fell, Liu Chen came to Fang En and Zhao Chen's room to invite the two of them to have dinner. Elder Fang, we truly owe you a great debt. Liu Chen raised his glass and paid tribute to Fang En. Zhao Chen glanced at Fei Ying and Wu Ya who were also at the dining table. After being discovered, Wu Ya was no longer hiding in Liu Cheng's shadow. Liu Cheng then handed a box containing 30 secret weapons to Zhao Chen. Previously, Zhao Chen had indeed asked Liu Cheng to collect the secret weapons owned by the assassins of the Flower of Sin and the Gold and Purple Masks. Zhao Chen discovered that the quality of the secret weapons used by the Flower of Sin assassin was different for each of their levels. Fang and narrowed his eyes when he realized the contents of the box. Moreover Zhao Chen immediately kept the six small knives around his waist before storing the rest. Brother Fang's disciple is really different from his age. Fei Ying chuckled at Zhao Chen's actions. Fei Ying signaled one of the maids. Not long after, the maid brought out a larger wooden box and handed it to Zhao Chen. Zhao Chen frowned. When he opened the box he found a short sword that matched his size. The sword has a light blue scabbard is decorated with several precious stones and on the hilt is a white eagle head carving. 
Everyone could see Zhao Chen being enthusiastic because of the sword. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more fan 20 chapter. Patreon com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 42 White Eagle Sword. Zhao Chen withdrew the short sword from its scabbard. He could feel the sharpness of the blade far above that of ordinary swords. Other than that this sword looks brand new. This short sword is a named weapon known as the White Eagle Sword. Even though it can't be called an heirloom, its sharpness is close to that of an heirloom sword. Fei Ying explained to Zhao Chen, I used this sword when I was young, I think it is better in your hands. Thank you elder, I will take good care of this sword. Zhao Chen showed his gratitude. In his previous life Zhao Chen was nicknamed Holy Swordsman. He attained such high mastery in swordsmanship that Zhao Chen could judge the quality of a sword at a glance. What interested Zhao Chen most was that even though it was not an heirloom, this white eagle sword was capable of carrying quite a large amount of internal energy. Not all weapons can be powered by internal energy because the material used is not strong enough. If you force it, the weapon that is powered by internal energy will be destroyed unless someone is very skilled at using internal energy. If one practices internal energy to a very high level and is able to control it well, one can even turn a leaf or a hair into a deadly weapon by imbuing a large amount of internal energy with it. It is good that you are satisfied with this gift of mine. Fei Ying laughed heartily. Liu Cheng smiled awkwardly. He didn't understand why Fei Ying would give his personal belongings to Zhao Chen even though it was the Liu family who were indebted to Fang An and Zhao Chen. It's just that because Fei Ying's position is so high in the Liu family, Liu Cheng has nothing to say. Liu Cheng gave Fang An more gold coins. Fang An didn't count them but knew there were at least a thousand gold pieces in them. This amount of money will not be enough to repay the Liu family's favor to Elder Fang. One day the Liu family will assist Elder Fang when needed. Liu Cheng still felt that the gift he gave was too little. Zhao Chen smiled faintly when he heard that while Fang An said there was no debt between the Liu family and him. Zhao Chen knew that Liu Cheng was not being generous here, but Liu Cheng felt that his life was far more valuable than even a thousand or ten thousand gold pieces. The debt of life can only be repaid with another life. Indeed this was a tray of those from a noble family so Zhao Chen was not too surprised. The next morning Fang An and Zhao Chen said goodbye. Liu Cheng still tried to hold the two of them a little longer but Fang An explained he had an important task in the capital. Hearing that Fei Ying asked the two to leave and asked Liu Cheng not to try to restrain the two anymore. When Fang An and Zhao Chen were out of the city, Fang An said they should move faster because they had delayed their trip for a while. The two of them ran fast using the art of lightening the body, the speed of the two of them was not inferior to riding a galloping horse. The two continued on towards the Han Imperial capital. Several days had passed since Fang An and Zhao Chen parted ways with Liu Cheng. The two of them passed several towns and villages but did not stop because they continued to move at high speed. Fang An could see that during the past few days Zhao Chen's lightning skill had been improving again, besides that his apprentice's stamina seemed to exceed his own. The two would run from sunrise to sunset and only stop for a quick meal. At night, Zhao Chen would consume water ginseng and train hard. Zhao Chen even consumed 2 to 3 ginseng every day. Zhao Chen realizes that his way of practicing risks injuring himself but after the experience with Liu Cheng, he feels that he is not strong enough to help Fang An. If Fei Ying had not appeared and helped them, Fang An would not have been fine as he was now. I have to get stronger as soon as possible. That was how Zhao Chen determined that every time he started his practice, he wanted to quickly upgrade his bones to iron tiger bone before he was 10 years old. Fang An could feel the speed at which Zhao Chen's strength was growing and he couldn't help but be stunned. Fang An only reminded Zhao Chen not to forget to practice his martial arts and not just increase his physical strength. There's no rush, you're still so young. As long as you practice well, you will become a great swordsman in the future. Fang An ordered. Zhao Chen understood. Fang An was worried that he would be like the old Fang An. Because Fang An wanted to become strong as soon as possible, he was injured by someone and received serious internal injuries which affected his future as a warrior. 
It was just that Fang and didn't know that the reason Zhao Chen was trying to become strong as fast as possible also had to do with him. Zhao Chen needed a high degree of skill if he wanted to treat Fang into a full recovery. Master is glad that you are training so hard but warriors must remember that the body also needs rest. Fang was obviously worried, during his run every morning until sunset, Zhao Chen often ran while reading a book. Fang only then found out that it was one of Zhao Chen's belongings which made the size of his provisions much larger because there were books in it. Indeed Zhao Chen felt that just running would waste time so he did it while reading books on medicine. In his new life, Zhao Chen was indeed interested in many new knowledges that he had never learned in his previous life. Among all of them, Zhao Chen was most interested in medicine. You could say that there was also influence from his desire to treat Fang An. One afternoon on their way, Zhao Chen could see a large river in front of them. The previous day Fang An had indeed said the two of them had to cross several rivers on their way to the capital. We will go to that small village, there will be residents who rent boats to cross the river. Fang An pointed to a small village that the two could see from where they were standing. On the other hand, Zhao Chen frowned. Master, don't you feel something wrong? Fang An was slightly surprised by Zhao Chen's question but when he looked at the river in front of them once again, Fang An caught Zhao Chen's point. Strange, there should be a lot of boats cruising the river. Fang An muttered under his breath. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 20 chapter. Patreon com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 43 Demon. Fang An and Zhao Chen entered the village, both of them found that it was bustling with residents, most of them were merchants carrying freight carts. Master, it looks like something really happened. Whispered Zhao Chen. Fang An nodded slowly, he could see these merchants. Usually merchants like them wouldn't stay in one place long. Other than that the two of them could listen to the merchants complain because they had been stuck in this village for a long time. We'll find out what happened by coming to the port. Fang An took Zhao Chen straight to the port. Fang An could see many boats and boats that were usually rented out were now neatly parked at the harbor. Sad expressions adorned the faces of the ship owners, they looked lethargic and lost enthusiasm. Who is master looking for? Asked Zhao Chen when he noticed Fang An was constantly turning his head as if looking for someone. An old friend. Fang An replied curtly. This wasn't the first time Fang An had visited this village. Every time he went to the capital, people would definitely stop by this village, including even the crown prince. That's why Fang An knows a boat owner who is a regular customer. Fang An planned to get the information the two needed especially about the reasons for the boat and ship owners refusing to set sail. Oh. Swordsman. Long time no see you. An old man greeted Fang An from a distance. Uncle seems still healthy. Fang An smiled at the grandpa. Every time he wanted to cross this river, Fang An always used this grandpa's services. Even though the grandfather wore simple clothes, he was one of the biggest ship owners in this village. Besides owning several ships and boats, he was also a respected man in the harbor. Swordsman. You came at the wrong time to cross the river. Grandpa said when he saw Fang An's intention of going to the capital, you saw the merchants coming here, right? Everyone wants to cross but can't. What really happened? Maybe I can help. Fang An asked. Hey, actually this is because a week ago a demon suddenly appeared in these waters. Grandpa replied languidly. Zhao Chen raised his eyebrows. He was naturally a little surprised to hear the word demon. Fang An noticed his disciples' reaction, Chenna, don't worry, the demon in question isn't like in the fairy tales. Fang An said as he patted Zhao Chen's shoulder. Zhao Chen smiled faintly, in his previous life he had traveled to many places naturally he understood Fang An's meaning. If demons in fairy tales are animals or plants that can transform into humans and have high supernatural powers, demons in the real world are slightly different. Stealth is a term for creatures that have lived long enough and have absorbed natural energy. Their bodies will undergo changes, usually becoming bigger or having a higher intelligence and often have magical abilities such as spitting fire or hardening their bodies like steel. From his past life experience, Zhao Chen knew that demons were divided into at least two types. The first was beasts, 
namely creatures that had not yet fully become demons but had powers far above ordinary wild creatures. When beings become demons, they will have something within their body which is called the demon gems. The stronger and older the demon, the bigger the demon gems inside his body. Even the weakest demon as long as he had the demon jewel in his body would have strength that rivaled that of a master warrior. Usually demons are hunted because their body parts are good materials for making tools and heirlooms, and demon gems besides being used to make heirlooms can also help increase one's inner strength like magic medicine. The problem was that not everyone was able to use demonic gems to increase internal strength without side effects. If not careful, a human who absorbs the demon gem's power for internal energy, his body parts can change shape and make him look less human. In his previous life thanks to hunting many demons and absorbing their demon gems with the heavenly dragon god scripture, Zhao Chen was able to possess powerful internal energy in a short period of time. This demon is in the form of a giant white catfish and has sunk several ships. We have asked the local governments to take care of it but there has been no response. Grandfather told everything. Fang'an pondered after hearing the story. Zhao Chen understood Fang'an's reason for acting this way. Basically the Han Empire was a region with the least demon population compared to other empires and countries in the central continent. Besides that demons usually live in certain places, in the Han Empire usually demons can be found in the forest of death and mountain of beasts. If this was the Tang Empire then this incident wouldn't be too surprising because there were so many demons there that the martial world sects there were able to nurture stealth and have stealth as their fighting force. The only reason the Tang Empire, which was so powerful, couldn't rule over the entire central mainland continent was because they were preoccupied with stealth problems endlessly. There's no way a demon would suddenly appear for no reason. Fang'an muttered under his breath. Zhao Chen agreed with Fang'an. But on the other hand there shouldn't be any group in the Han Empire capable of controlling demons and them releasing them in this river also had no advantage unless there was someone they wanted to hinder. HM. If there was a group with this kind of ability it would be more effective to send out a few people to stop the person they were targeting than to attract attention like this. Zhao Chen joined in contemplating the possibility of that happening. Fang and finally decided to check this catfish demon in person. Uncle. I want to buy a small boat to inspect these waters. When Fang'an took out the gold coins, Grandpa refused the money. Swordsman, you want to help us and just inspecting that creature is taking a big risk. I dare not accept your money. Zhao Chen nodded slowly, he was glad that at least this Grandpa had a good understanding so it wouldn't be a waste for Fang'an to help them. Master, let me help you. Zhao Chen was excited but of course Fang'an rejected the idea. Chenna. Master will go alone. Fang and gently stroked Zhao Chen's head. If this creature in the form of a giant catfish was really stealth, it's not certain that Fang and would be able to face it in the middle of the river but Fang and was sure that he would still want to run away if the situation got dangerous, it's just that it would be difficult for him if Zhao Chen went with him. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 20 chapter. Patreon.com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 2. Chapter 44 River Problem. The harbor was bustling when news spread about Fang and going to set sail to find the catfish demon. The merchants became enthusiastic when they found out that Fang and was a titled swordsman. The jade faced swordsman of the Valley of the Hundred Swords, to think I could see him in this place. I have long heard of swordsman Fang, he is so young yet so talented. Look at his courage, he is a true warrior. Zhao Chen's ears were a little itchy because all these merchants were praising his teacher but he understood the reason they were all saying that was hoping Fang and could solve their problems. Fang and got on a small boat and started rowing. Zhao Chen along with everyone else looked at him with all kinds of feelings. Zhao Chen felt quite worried. I believe master has the ability to deal with demons but water creatures like this are hard to deal with in his realm. Zhao Chen could only hope that everything would be fine. Fang and kept rowing, he had crossed half of the river but nothing happened. Fang and stopped his boat in the middle of the river and started looking around with sword in hand. Fang and waited for a while but nothing happened. Could it be that the demon has left? Could be, this river is so long, there's no reason for him to continue living around here. Several people started discussing when they saw the river in front of them was so calm. 
Zhao Chen could hear that there was a ship owner intending to start crossing passengers. Luckily as no. Zhao Chen was just about to breathe a sigh of relief when suddenly the river in front of him shook violently and created waves. Many people became hysterical and moved away from the riverbank but Zhao Chen remained where he was. Zhao Chen's gaze was fixated on Fang En's boat. Even though the river was suddenly filled with waves, Fang En's boat remained steady and did not move from its original position because Fang En used his inner strength to do so. Suddenly something jumped out of the river, everyone could see a white catfish that was about 4 meters long. This catfish is really a stealth. Zhao Chen's expression became serious, he had killed many demons in his previous life so he could recognize them at a glance, what worried him was that the catfish was a 100 year demon. As far as Zhao Chen knew, the demons were divided into several categories namely ordinary demons who had less than 100 circles of internal strength and then followed by 100 year old demons who had at least 100 circles of internal strength. Higher demons are 500 year demon, 1000 year demon, then demon king and queen. Master has the ability to slay a 100 year demon but his range of maneuvers is so limited that his position is at a disadvantage. Zhao Chen became more and more anxious and started to think of ways to deal with it. In fact, Fang An is not afraid of a demon trying to sink his boat. Fang An poured internal energy into his blade, causing the sword in his hand to glow blue. Fang An's sword light was even visible to those in the harbor. Zhao Chen frowned because he recognized the sword technique Fang An used was blue lightning swordsmanship, Fang An's strongest move. The situation is more serious than I thought if master directly uses the strongest sword technique that drained so much of his inner strength. Zhao Chen then approached grandpa who was passing the boat to Fang An. Grandfather, can you please prepare a large number of spears? Besides that I need another boat. Zhao Chen took out the few gold coins that Fang An had given him. Do it quickly. The old man looked at Zhao Chen in confusion. He didn't want to put Zhao Chen in danger but he knew Fang and needed help. The old man didn't accept the money that Zhao Chen offered but he called his men to prepare Zhao Chen's request. Prepare the spring sun to set sail. Cried grandpa loudly. The grandfather's workers looked at him in disbelief. Later, Zhao Chen only found out that the spring sun was the name of the largest ship owned by his grandfather. I can't let you go alone. I and my people will also come with you. The grandfather patted Zhao Chen's shoulder. Grandfather need not worry, I will ensure that you and your people are not in any danger. Zhao Chen said with a faint smile. The other boat owner's gazes fell on Zhao Chen and the old man, and they also looked at Fang An who was facing the giant catfish. When the catfish tried to attack the boat, Fang An would jump up and give the big fish a slash. It's just that each of Fang An's slashes didn't cause any deep wounds even though he used his inner strength and higher level sword skills. We will not stay silent either. Prepare the ship. Hep, outsiders are fighting alone. Maybe we can just watch. Prepare the ship. If you look around again, this catfish isn't scary. It even looks delicious. Today we are going to eat catfish. Prepare a boat. One by one the big ship owners started preparing their ships for sailing. Previously they were both frightened by the fish demon but when they realized that as long as they were united they could fight back, their courage emerged after all this time they were accompanied by a high level warrior, Fang An. The merchants looked at each other, they felt that it was best not to remain silent. If the stealth is not overcome then their losses will also continue to grow. All of you, help them deal with this demon. A merchant commanded his guards. You guys too. The past week you've only eaten and slept, it's time to move your bodies. Another merchant said to his bodyguard. One by one the merchants ordered their escorts to join the battle. Some of the bodyguards gulped, not expecting them to get involved while others looked excited, they had been enthusiastic since just now to see Fang and take on the demon alone. Young warrior, come aboard my ship. My men have loaded the spears you requested. The ship owner's grandfather took Zhao Chen on board with him. While on the boat, Zhao Chen could see around 200 spears lined up neatly. The quality is not good because this spear is used to catch fish, not defend yourself. Zhao Chen saw that most of the crew of this grandfather's ship had little martial knowledge. In my youth, the waters here weren't safe and there were lots of pirates. 
We learned a bit of self-defense to protect our efforts, even though we can't deal with this low ability stealth but I hope it means something. Grandpa said with a big smile. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more fan 20 chapter. Patreon com miracle bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 3. Chapter 45 Blue Lightning Sword. Next. This demon is stronger than I expected. Fangen realized that he could actually finish off the demon in front of him but his position was completely at a disadvantage. Fangen had to spend a lot of internal energy to get his stance steady, every single attack he unleashed also drained internal energy. After Fangen slashed his mouth, this white catfish demon started to dive knowing that it would be difficult to attack Fangen head on. Fangen watched his surroundings cautiously, waiting for the ghost to reappear. Suddenly Fangen felt a strong vibration from the bottom of his boat. This demon. Fangen didn't have time to think. He jumped off the boat with all his might using lightning. At almost the same time that Fangen jumped in, a water tower appeared where his boat was floating. The pressure from the water tower was so strong, it shattered the wooden boat into pieces. Fangen landed on one of the boat wreckages floating above the river. Even if he used lightning skills it was still difficult to stand stably on a small piece of rubble. I didn't expect this stealth to be smarter than I thought, it seems I have to retreat first. Fangen felt that he was at a disadvantage so he intended to return to the harbor and reconstruct a plan. Just as Fangen was contemplating how to return to the harbor, he saw the catfish demon appear again. Fangen frowned as he saw that demon was deliberately blocking his path to escape. Fangen started to think about running to the other side, but he understood that no matter how fast he moved, he would not be able to beat the speed of the demon fish in front of him. This demon knows he's no match for me so wants to put me at a further disadvantage and waits for me to tire before attacking. Fangen continued to rack his brains to find a way out of this situation. In the midst of this situation suddenly a spear launched at high speed and stuck into the white catfish demon's body, although it didn't stab too deep but was enough to make the demon in pain. Master. We've come to help. Zhao Chen shouted loudly. Fangen's eyes widened when he saw several ships approaching towards him. The foremost ship in the group is Sunshine Spring. Zhao Chen picked up another spear then threw it with all his might at the catfish demon, this time it dug deeper. The ship owner's grandpa and his crew gulped as they stared at Zhao Chen dumbfoundedly. They couldn't believe his small body was capable of releasing such great power. The spear thrown by the boy was able to go faster than an arrow released from a bow. We must not lose to this young swordsman. The ship owner's grandfather got excited and picked up his bow. Boss, we are still too far from the stealth. The arrows we release won't reach. Answered one of the crew members. The wind was blowing hard, using the low quality bows they had, they should at least be less than a hundred meters away from the demon if they wanted to shoot it. The old man coughed lightly. He had forgotten that they were still quite far away because Zhao Chen was able to throw the spear to hit the target. Fangen was just as shocked because he found out that Zhao Chen didn't have any inner strength yet. In fact, Fangen had already judged Zhao Chen's physical ability from the way Zhao Chen was able to keep up with Fangen's movement speed during the trip relying solely on wind steps. Wind step is the most basic lightning technique that doesn't require any internal strength to do it. Wind steps can be considered a moving technique that makes the body feel lighter. Fangen thought Zhao Chen didn't realize that for Fangen to keep up with his disciples' movement speed he had to use inner strength. If both of them relied on physical strength alone, Fangen doubted that he would be able to keep up with Zhao Chen's speed. Now that Fangen was witnessing it himself, Zhao Chen was able to throw the spear from that distance and hit its target. Even a first class swordsman could hardly imitate what Zhao Chen did. I can't miss this opportunity. Despite all that, Fangen realized that this was his chance to counter attack now that Demon Fish's attention was now divided. The demons that were being attacked from both sides realized that they were at a disadvantage, and chose to dive into the river. Even so the demon had received serious injuries, the river water around which the creature swam had turned red with blood. Fangen used lightening his body to move towards the spring sun ship. Without any trouble Fangen got on the boat. Chenna, your actions put a lot of people in danger. Fangen shook his head slowly, 
He was grateful that Zhao Chen had come to help him but still didn't agree with his attitude. Master may punish students after we finish off this demon. Zhao Chen smiled broadly. You saved master, what needs to be punished? Fang and chuckled. All the ships then formed a formation to protect themselves from each other, this situation was quite dangerous because they could be attacked from the bottom of the river. Pay attention to the water under the ship, the demon is seriously injured, the place where he will appear must be red. Fang and reminded grandpa the owner of the ship. The message was immediately relayed to the other ships. The demon had taken many sword wounds from Fang and Zhao Chen had also thrown more than 10 spears. If the demon did not stop the bleeding from the injuries, the creature could bleed to death. The river water below one of the ships suddenly turned red, those on board panicked and jumped overboard, while crews from the other ships immediately aimed their bows at the ship. Sure enough, a few moments later, the demon catfish turned the ship over while jumping into the air. Shoot. The catfish demon didn't expect that when he appeared he would be greeted by hundreds of arrows that landed all over his body. Zhao Chen quickly threw several spears with all his might. The spears dug deeper than before because they were so close. When the demon was about to enter the water again, Fang and jumped from one boat to another to approach the creature. Just before the demon touched the water, Fang and gave out a sword slash filled with profound energy. Blue lightning sword. Lightning slash. That one slash managed to create a sword wound so wide that it spurted out a large amount of blood. If you want to support me and get early access of the update schedule, feel free to visit my Patreon and get more than 20 chapter. Patreon.com Miracle Bringer. Your support will really help me to be more passionate. 4.